Welcome to the deciding Sunday. This is the GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals. This covers players from Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. We started with 16, and today our bracket is going to take it down to just a few. We've got our players who have qualified through Group A, B, C, and D through grueling, but very brief games. And we've got our players in the bracket now and we're gonna start progressing. I've been your host, Seltzer, all weekend, and I have been so reliant on my excellent desk here at the regional finals. Woo, and I'm very excited and emotional, guys. The day is ending, but we still have much GeoGuessr to get through. And I have been calling you my geniuses, talking about how I rely on you all the time, but I don't think the people at home should have to take my word for it for how smart you are. So, gentlemen, as I bring you in today, I would love for you to talk about what you have been providing for the GeoGuessr community and where our lovely audience at home can find more of it. Chicago Geographer, would you start us off? Absolutely, yeah. I've been making content about GeoGuessr for about five years now on YouTube. I stream on Twitch all the time as well. Uh, I try to provide content that appeals to a wide range of skill levels in the community. And if you're looking for more GeoGuessr tournaments, I also host those uh, of my own every other Saturday, too. Nice. Absolutely. I'm also on YouTube. I started off as a CG fan, now I'm making my own videos as well. It's Zigzag on YouTube with an 8 between the I and the G. And uh, yeah, you can find all kinds of uh, yeah, GeoGuessr videos of uh, kind of more competitive nature. Yeah. Absolutely. Funny content, good stuff. Stuff that I relied on to study and uh, stuff that serves the community well because we have some of the highest level play in GeoGuessr here at our event. But GeoGuessr is available to anyone who wants to play, and so you too can get started and potentially see yourself at a challenge, at a tournament, just like this one. And if you're going to find yourself at one of these, well, you're going to want to familiar familiarize yourself with our game modes. I'm so raring to go this morning. I like ran down here and I'm ready. And now I am moving and that is a perfect setup for you, Chicago Geographer, to take it away and explain our fine game modes. Yes, absolutely. So as we see here, moving is our first game mode. As it suggests, you can move up and down the road that you're dropped on with no restrictions. Take a look at any signs that you would like to see. Uh, and no moving, you're just dropped into one spot. You can do a 360 pan around, take in everything you can. But of course, you cannot move up and down the street. And then in no move, pan and zooming and MPZ. This, of course, you just get one image and that's all you get to guess with. That's the most difficult game mode uh, and the one where we see some uh, tricky toss-ups. Absolutely, and we haven't seen enough of it, so I'm really hoping we get to see more NMPZ and go the distance in our best of threes and best of fives today. Of course, those best of threes, best of fives are going to get us some results, Zigzag. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So as you can see in kind of the grand scheme of things in over this year, we already had the Americas tournament where we had five of our eight competitors qualifying for the World Cup in very exciting fashion. One of those was Chicago Drofer. Then we moved on now we're in the Europe, uh, Middle East and Africa tournament, uh, where we already have eight of our 10 qualified players. And as you can see right here, the third players from each group, A, B, C, and D, move on to a last chance qualification. So two of those four will enter the World Cup, leaving us with 10 from the EMEA finals going to the World Cup in September. So super exciting stuff. Those two games today, in some ways, hold, hold the most weight because really the, the uh, $50,000 prize at the end of the year is in some way the big goal, but let's not forget about $21,200, which is up for grabs uh, for those uh, top, well, every player, but specifically for the top eight today. Yeah, we talked a lot about the qualifying, getting to the World Cup, how important that is, but let's not talk, uh, let's not miss the prize pool that's available. That's a nice take home for a week of GeoGuessr. Now we have our qualified players already from each region. Hi, that's a familiar name down there, CG. <laughs> Glad to see you be at our Stockholm event in September. And uh, we've got some guaranteed players already heading there from our Europe qualifier. 
Yeah, we certainly do. Looking like an amazing lineup so far for our Europe qualified players. Constance, Tepotic, Debre, Finbar, Blinky, Kratzu, Mata, and Kodiak. And then two more players, as we've said, we'll join them from those last chance matches. And then five more from Asia in June. And yesterday we saw some pretty expected results, Blinky and Consus and Debre making really strong performances. The big story of the day from yesterday was Marta, who managed to go flawless in his group, only losing one game, but winning every series. That was not something anyone predicted, so it's going to be really interesting to see him play today, and can he make it to the Grand Finals? Can he win the thing? Seems unlikely, but his play yesterday proved that it's possible. Absolutely. It is attainable for any one of our players still in that full bracket to be the one to carve their name onto our EMEA regional finals plate. We've already had one with Jinji's name on it from the America's regionals, but this plate will stay with GeoGuessr. It will continue on in GeoGuessr history. I'm going to hold that up right. Ooh, there we go. Beautiful. It's but it's quiet. nice to have a real solid uh, piece for, for a game that exists online. You know, we're bringing it into the real world here in a lot of ways. And I think that's a beautiful tribute at the beginning of the eSport of GeoGuessr. May it have a long, long future. And speaking of future, if you're looking ahead to September, now would be a great time to head on over to geoguessercom slash world cup. Grab yourself some tickets for that World Cup event. We've discounted them 25%. We've only got a couple left this weekend, but grab those and guarantee that you'll be there. And the rest of the players that are playing today, sure hope they'll be joining you there. Now, gentlemen, we have had some exceptional play throughout this weekend. I have been very proud of these players, but you who both have personal relationships in the scene, in the industry, tell me a little bit more about what it has meant to you to see the players that you've seen succeed this far. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing to see these players uh, from the Europe, Middle East, Africa region thriving. Uh, we've seen some of the greatest matchups of the entire event so far. And yeah, I'm just really looking forward to the, the upcoming matches today in the, in the bracket. Yeah, absolutely. A bunch of personal friends going pretty far in this tournament, which is super exciting to see. People I've been playing with for years, some of my very first year, I guess, of friends playing in this event. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really great to see just the level of play here as well. I think it's been a real step up. It, just talking to other people, since the World Cup, the level of play has, I wouldn't say exponentially risen, but it is it is, it is is far higher. Basically, most of the players here would have gone much further than they did in the World Cup um, if they had the current skills that they have now then. So, I don't know, like, I, I think, like, the, the introduction of LAN tournaments has really, like, picked up the pace of GeoGuessr improvement. Well, we've been talking about how great it's been. Why don't we take a look back at the games that got us here to today? opposite end of the country and Wolf Trekker has made the journey. Is it enough? It's not. Oh, oh my God, 267 points remain. <laughs> oh, this could be game, places. Trevor. Kirk's confident. This is game for someone. Oh, Kirk! He absolutely is. No sense. Or oh, the late game moves, the late game moves to one. It's far out towards the east, and Mana brings it home just 10 kilometers out. Two oh. in Brazil. He's saying, Cole, cool. which one is it? This is going to be right down the wire. Who is going to get it? Crook almost perfectly on point. Four times multiplied. And when you're on the right road, is the question. He is. <laughs> We're almost seeing a 5k with little to nothing to go by 19,000 damage. I told you it was good, and if you're wondering, you missed it, you want to go back and check, the VODs are incredible, but today it's going to be all about the brackets, all about the future. But how we got here cannot be ignored. Looking back at Group A, Kansa sitting at the top of it, undefeated. Tell me what that story means to the greater GGS or community, Zigzag. I mean, this is, you know, just continuing on a legacy of extremely strong performances in tournaments for Consus. It happened online before we went into real life and then at the World Cup, you know, he earned the nickname Dutch Destroyer and that is that is no exaggeration. He came here to do the exact same thing and that's what we saw yesterday. Dominant performances, several players kept up with him, but it's all about the consistency with Consus. You know, the guesses are not too flashy. He just always makes the right choice, which is like a crazy thing to witness. Like, it really is like true talent on display. 
And uh, you were mentioning Zalek uh, yesterday, the day before, how he's been a standout player. What has impressed you about his play? And uh, of course, a -Lock at the bottom, not indicative of a -Lock skill, just indicative of how tough this tournament has been. Absolutely, yeah. These players have both played so well, I think, in their group and just had to face such tough competition in Consus and Finbar. But yeah, we saw Alok with some of the best moving gameplay, I think, of the entire tournament. And Salak, of course, such a well-rounded player as well. So looking forward to see how he does in his last chance match. But yeah, Group A, such a strong one in the last few days. Alok pretty strong in the trivia department, too, was crushing it on our <laughs> quizzes. Of course, we moved on to Group B yesterday. Uh, or sorry, Group B uh, also on Friday there. And uh, Debra, standout talent, not just in the group, also on the desk yesterday, did a great job. But this whole list here, surprising to see Ricky Beast at the bottom for you? I mean, for me, it wasn't an entire surprise. Ricky Beast probably was the underdog of this group going in. I think some unfortunate circumstances kind of caused his mental after a first loss to be a little bit weaker. And then like he he wasn't playing up to his normal standard where he had a really good first series, just the, the subsequent ones weren't quite as good. Uh, but the whole, the whole group kind of followed the pattern of the rest of them where there was just one player dominating above the rest and then you know, Topotic actually put up a really good fight against Debray, but it was kind of that story of one flawless player and the rest of them trying to fight for that second guaranteed World Cup spot. Absolutely. Moving on to yesterday, Group C started off a little bit teased as the group of death. The games in it, were they as scary as we were expecting? Honestly, I would say so, yeah. We saw some of the most fiery matches of them all. I think Wolf Trucker versus Crookst was one of the most exciting games of all time in competitive GeoGuessr. Uh, so yeah, everyone was just playing out of their minds in that group and definitely lives up to the Group of Death name. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see more Blinky play today. We got a lot of greats coming in today and rounding out Group D, our unexpected champion of that group. You teased it a little bit before, but tell us about Mata. Yeah, Marta just uh, brought a level of moving. I mean, we expected Marta to be good at moving. He brought a level of moving where people were comparing him to Blinky, which is no small compliment. He was just using his, in his information super well, calmly moving around the map, picking up the information faster than his opponent. He really put Kratzu to shame in the first one. Fortunately, Kratzu bounced back and actually ended up second in the group. But uh, it just goes to show that kind of the gap between those two in the first one really makes Marta such a strong competitor here. The This was one where the experience kind of didn't win out, where Lenly and Jolotris ended up in the bottom of the group, sadly. Uh, Lenly still has a chance to fight for a World Cup spot. Unfortunately, Jolotris departs uh, without a ticket. That's a tough one for Jolotris. A tough for everyone who landed at the bottom of their group, because that means they don't make it to today. But taking a look at the bracket, we do see how the rest of our players have fallen in. If you finish top one, top two, you're heading to the quarterfinals there. And as we said, everyone finishing third in their group heads to those last chance matches, which of course are taking place right before the grand final. Big deal, those two matches down there. Tell me, Chicago Geographer, the potential stress they might be facing here. Yeah, this is a really critical match. Uh, having played in a last chance match myself during the America's finals, uh, these guys are gonna be stressed, but I know they're just gonna try to keep their heads strong, play their best. But yeah, some of the greatest players, honestly, in the tournament right now competing in those. So gonna be really excited to keep an eye on those matches later in the day. Any advice for them? Uh, guys, do your best. I, I was in your <laughs> shoes, it's, it's stressful, but you're gonna play well. And uh, I hope to see the best players come out on top. It absolutely can be done. It's a great way to qualify. Exciting matches here as you take a look at the overall schedule for the day. Yeah, yeah, you have no breaks, so make sure you've got a snack now and you're settled in because you're not leaving until we crown our champion here in Stockholm, and it's going to be a fantastic match. Now, if you're looking to get involved, you're feeling the itch of competition, and you're not quite here in the studio as one of our top players, doesn't matter. Pinned at the top of chat, we've got a challenge for you, and it's a special one today, guys, because we picked all the spots. Do you want to give any hints for your spots, guys? Mine is, uh, mm, without giving too much away, mine is uh, rather close to home. Oh, interesting. Mine is of very important significance to my community, my, my fans watching. So you guys will enjoy it, I think. <laughs> mine, I tried to be a little bit tricky. So don't run with your first, second, or third assumption. But I'm looking forward to seeing which one you think is mine later on, I too. I like that. Yeah, and don't forget to follow uh, GeoGuessr on social media. That's a great place to let them know how good we did in our choosing. But other than that, I think it's time, guys, that we got into our matches for the day. How are we feeling about that? Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we get to see Consus play right away. Uh, talk about talk about content to start the day off with. I mean, like, yeah, best player, but essentially some of the best players, if not the best players in the world today. You picked the right day to watch. Um, let's get it.
Good choice, everyone. You picked the right day to watch. So let's meet our first two players in their head-to-head -head interview. Pitbot is one of the most experienced players out here. He learned probably a lot over the time that he's been playing and map making. I think he knows a lot about the world and doesn't go the wrong place very often, so it's probably quite close. But I think I can beat him, yeah. Consos I know for a long time. He's definitely the strongest no moving and NPZ player that there is. It's gonna be like the hardest matchup I've had ever, I think. At least at this high stakes. So it's going to be quite an experience. Consos and Topotic. It's a beautiful Sunday breakfast. Breakfast has been a big factor here in our players' uh, execution, of course, in game. And now we're serving one up for you, a complete meal. Consus, uh, staple food, if you will, of the GeoGuessr community. Topotic, uh, lovely topping, I think, by the name, but how would you rate these two in a bit of a head-to-head -head here? Looking at Consus's stats, he seems untoppable. Yeah, well, I mean, Consus is the world reigning World Cup champion. That is uh, untoppable. It would seem to be an accurate description so far in his uh, in his LAN experience. So, I mean, look at that. <laughs> Wins percentage 70. Wow. That's not, that's not normal. That's not normal. Normally, you know, there's so many rounds where it's just a toss up. And it should, even at around 50, 70 is rather absurd, if you ask me. Taking a long time, 49.1 seconds. He takes his time, perhaps. Uh, someone would put the pressure on him today. I think Topotic is also quite a measured, quite a considered player. Um, so I probably wouldn't expect it in this best of three, but yeah, it should be interesting. And do you think that's a, a level of respect that we might see between the players here, more focused on their own game, a little less on the PvP aspect of being in person, being on land, being feet away from the person that you're playing against here, as you know, Topotic. Yeah, I think these guys are going to, at this stage in the tournament, really be just focused on themselves, making the best guesses that they can. Uh, in Topotic's case, I think really his path forward to victory here is possibly the moving game. If he can do well here, he can maybe stand a chance in the no moving NPZ. Uh, but again, Consus, we've seen he's such a balanced player here. So Topotic has to be at the absolute top of his game, staying focused on what he's deciding to click. Uh, you can see his stats are pretty impressive. 57% win ratio is not anything to scoff at. So yeah, we're going to see some great gameplay between these two here. And yeah. Uh, Kant is definitely a little bit favored in this stage, in this uh, matchup here. Well, and CJ, I want to ask you, as someone who enjoys playing moving rounds, tell me a little bit about, can you compare the way they approach uh, a moving round between these two players? Do you find they scan for the same things or they have a slightly different... Yeah, you know, it's it's tough to say, honestly. I think uh, Topotica said he maybe has a little bit of issues with, like, scanning for information, uh, which is definitely something that I, I struggle with as well. When you have so many place names on the map, it's hard to look for stuff like that. Uh, but I think they have similar styles in, like, getting to information as fast as they can uh, and using that to the best of their advantage. All right. Well, we've got a lot to look forward to with these players, especially accompanied by the commentary of Rainbolt and Paula. Let's hand it over to the boys. Rachel, thank you so much. Trevor, I think I speak for everyone when I say the hype is real. We're starting off our finals day with Consus versus Topotic. I mean, what more do you want and start a day with Consus and Topotic? I mean, we saw both these players last year. We saw Consus win. Can he do it again in the European regionals? We'll see. Yeah, we're about to find out. Yeah, everybody at home, if you've not watched a GeoGuessr finals day before you're in for a treat. The action is electric. The tension is higher than ever. And everything, Trevor, is on the line. Everything is on the line. And we and what, and we get a conscious game one and it's a public stare game one. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're being treated. Everyone is being treated very well here. All right, everybody. This I mean, is it. GeoGuessr World Cup Europe, Middle East and Africa regional finals and we've got our first quarter final Consus versus Topotic. We're still in best of three. Yep. We will later move into best of five. Today is going to be an amazing day, Paul. Oh, it is. They I always mean, are. I was about to say this is going to be one of the best games of the day, but look, there's not a bad game. There's not like sure anything is. that's like, wow, that's kind of boring. Let me go get lunch. It's every single game is like, I can't, I, I want to be here, you know? I Everyone flew. is a banger. And has become, and as has become tradition, Trevor, you are the man with the power. So when you are ready, our players are as well. Kick it off. Constance versus the pilot. Game one, moving. And what better way than to start an Indo? Indo. Nisha, Constance versus the pilot. This is moving. 
Indomie Ramen, one of my favorite brands. Which of our players is going to be eating good on the server today? We've Consus, seen. I would never doubt him. Topodic, I think he's the one that and needs Consus to rise to the occasion. He's, he's, in he's zooming in. He's going into West Cali. And Topodic did not find the same information. He's down the road looking for something that can help him. And if you're Consus, you're looking. And he's going to find the exact road here, it looks like. He knows the cabby pod in. A little furrow of Consus's brow, but I do agree, Probably Trevor. Sign. It looks like he is lining he up know, a row. He, he locks it in. Well. And he's zooming in to West Cali too. It's a thing we see again where maybe if Consus locks in a little bit quicker there and doesn't go for the exact road, maybe he could have caught the Polygon off guard, but he's not. Round one, both players relatively oh, close south. to each other. And to Podic getting the right road there, as Consus thought that was a yellow road. Round two. This is an interesting round. It immediately looks to me like uh, like Gaborone, I guess in South Africa or in Botswana, but it looks urban, like urban uh, Botswana. And I'm not sure where else is this urban besides Gaborone, but we, we'll see what the players do. And it should be bots. Let's see though. Getting to main road, looking for info. Both players probably thinking the same thing here. Consus in warp speed right now, looking for any sort of section or perhaps intersection with information for him to dissect. Looks to the sky briefly. The Ponic not moving quite as much. Getting there though. There we go. Consus has found something he wants to stop and take a look at. But then he's off on the move again. The speed with which these players assimilate information is something to ever be admired, Trevor. Yes. I mean, and these are probably two of the best players in the world to do that same thing. So, and 10 seconds left, no player. We have a hill in the distance south, which would further indicate Gabaron here. You don't get many hills in Botswana. That is where you do. And you'll see One some capital guesses here. Good job by both players once again. 60. Minimal points there as moving around three. And as I look into round three, what a beautiful location. Stunning. Look at that water. This is a very interesting round here. Not an interesting round if you are looking for information because I doubt this road leads to anywhere anytime soon. Or might the coverage might even end. So we could just see players guessing off. And I think this is just Chile. All roads lead to greatness on GeoGuessr Finals Day, Trevor. This is something that if you've seen before, obviously you get it. Looks like a pretty popular thing that someone has definitely sent. as like, oh, look how pretty this is. And we see Constance going east and we see the Pollock following suit. Both players will know. Look at the focus on both players. Not a beat being missed There's by either. There's a world where we could see a wrong country, but we do see Kansas zooming in the northern Chile there, which will be right. And he's lining roads up, looking for that body of that lake. What lake is he zooming in here? And we see Topolic going more south near Santiago. Is there much of a distance here between them, Trevor? Should be. Could be some big yeah, points there's, then. There's, there's some distance here. If Kansas Locked locks, in by look how big first. the difference is. We have a Santiago oh, it's a huge difference. It's a huge. This is actually massive points, Paul, if someone's right here and someone's wrong. Seven seconds left, Trevor. We're going to find out very, very soon. You, when you get this car like this with the antenna, you have to be near a national park, I think. And It's oh, too. It's in the middle. Split down the middle. Wow. But 288. That's uh, Constance not happy with that. But Topodic also flustered. Chance for points there missed by both players, but it means that things stay tight, things stay close. Constance is locked. Round four, what is this? Kikuts or something? Let's see. 2.5x. Should be Russia. And I'm I'm standing up. What am I even doing? <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've been standing, Trevor. Facts. Standing on business. 50 seconds. Yep. Round four now. Barely anything between our two players. Quartz is taking a moment to scan his surroundings. To put it going further into into the unknown. What we are getting right here, when we see Constance zooming on the Montana Sea, trying to get a region here, what we, are, what we are seeing here is big countries time and time again. And we see Topotic go on. Wow. Topotic, that was an easy send, Trevor. I really like this guess here by Topotic. And I think actually Constance will probably end up there too. We'll see with eight, eight seconds left, as he always takes last second to open up his map. And he's going even more east. We'll see who's right. This is a big point. Oh, he's, big point. he's pushing back. Oh, he's thinking it could be there. And he knew oh. it was there. Toponic on the money there. I'm trying to see. It's game. 3x damage. It's suddenly game. Toponic takes the fast away from the reigning champ. And we saw Constance. He knew it was a 
He didn't know where it would be. He knew it was there or there. But listen, taking two game, taking one game from Constance is one thing. Taking two games is another thing. Taking no move, especially. Spotic stare. He's locked in. Locked and locked. Wow, that one but, just crept up on us out of nowhere, Trevor. Round four, Russia. I mean, we got we kept getting big countries, and that's the thing. And you know, Constance is probably not happy with you know, missing that Chile and the Russia back to back. But we'll see. A rare stumble. We will see. Let's just keep it moving into the next game here in a second. But this is um yeah, we're going to the moving. Or sorry, no move where you don't move. You get one three sixty panorama. And this is where you maybe see Constance thrive more, but Topolik is no is also familiar with this game in the move. So without further ado, let's do it. Ghana. Ghana to start. Who's gonna do a better job, Trevor? Conscious wow. or topotic. I'm not gonna lie, Paula, your puns or your play on words are getting better and better. <laughs> I don't know who made you the authority on it, Trevor, but thank you. I, I made myself it. the authority. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, round one, I assume it's gonna be a slower start. Yeah, it should be. Probably not much to separate our two players. We went from a blistering finish in game number one. Let's see if things now regulate in game two. No move. We'll probably see, like we keep saying, uh, similar points here, but yeah, this is a, uh, we'll see. Yeah, look how close they are. And it's just north of Kamasi, but again, 32. Small points, small hype, big points, big hype. I've been around there, Kamasi, the one time I, I went to Ghana, I think, if should, I'm remembering the name. <laughs> Thanks, Trev. All right, round two, everybody. Small multis, not yet building too much. There's a, a sign open there that the map first. One that will show it's Sri Lanka, and both players will get it with the language. Yeah. Without that sign, maybe that would have been more difficult there. But both players are getting that, and Kant is making reaching us there in Sri Lanka. You know, Kant is one gate, one game from being eliminated from the the whole uh, tournament. So, so say that again, sorry. Constance is one game from being eliminated. Yeah, but let's not forget, right? So these guys They're in, in the that. quarterfinals, yeah. not in the last chance, but in the quarterfinals, um, all of these players, they're through to the World Cup. What they're fighting for right now is the EMEA regional finals crown. And so, so much on the line. And yeah, if, if you are to lose your quarterfinal, that means uh, you're not going to be wearing that crown when it's all said and done. Yeah, he still has a chance, obviously to one, win this next two games and also, you know, win the World Cup again. Yeah. But going for that back-to-back -back trophy. Shout out to Drake. Big on shout-outs over here today again. I love the Trevor shout-outs. It's one of my favorite things. And shout-out to Drake. So shout-out to this location. No move. This is interesting. I mean, it's America's. It's a... Uh... Topodic first to open. Together. First to zoom. Yeah, I mean, I like I like to zoom in there. Kons is taking he's in Sask a lot right now. more time. And Kons is when you're going to line for road in Sask, he's going a little bit more south. Looks to, And he looks to <laughs> line. I mean, when you zoom in to that level. I feel like Kons only opens his map when he's got the strongest inkling of where he is. With 10 seconds left, we're going to find out if what he feels is right. Should be minimal points unless someone gets really close. Like a quite lower 5k. And zoom out. Zoom see, out, zoom out. Oh, max out. Once again. The marker away from both of our players. Let's move into round four. Round four is where it ended. In the last game. Don't think it'll end here in Norway. Beautiful. You know, the thing about Norway I keep saying, I'm not going to say it again, but there are a few mountains and bodies of water. I said it again. I'm just kidding. It's just a low quality bait. <laughs> we have two players going north here, usually with the more desolate trees, lower trees, to get more northern vibes. Corns is lining up the road, perhaps aiming for the 5k here. The Podic potentially also, maybe they've seen this body of water before. Maybe they've seen these mountains before. Time being because. spent here to get closer and closer, to hone in, to refine. 20 seconds now, Trevor. 
Onto this locked in. They're still pretty close. And it's oh wow, oh, wow. That could have been some decent points there. You know, no worries. One of those things where that happens a lot, a lot more than you probably think. A lot more than you would probably think. Where you go north and it's south, and go south and it's north. Round five of ten. Round five of ten, and we are in the north, Trevor. No, no. We're in oh. Germany. We're in Germany. It was close. Kind of, yeah. So this is going to be an obvious. We see, yeah, maybe both players are going to know it's Germany, obviously, with bollards, the German people on bikes, and the 2023 copyright, most importantly, here. We're zooming in to see where can we get in Germany. See a Hamburg guess here by Topotic, or at least Hover. We'll see if he, and we see two Northern Germany guesses here. Consus also opening his map. Yeah, this is uh, gonna be close again. Yeah, right now, round six. both hovering outside That's Hamburg. It's the Podic, so close. And with the triple damage multi, it's close to 800 points of damage going the way of Consus. Still a close game. Very close. Quite literally anyone's game. As moving to round six, and no move. As soon as we zoom into the sign here, we'll see the language and be able to tell if this is Slovenian forest or an Austrian forest, and that's German. Therefore, this will probably be an Austrian forest here. You presume, like Southern Austria, maybe. Not well, sure where else it could be without the low, obviously without the low cam, and we do see Consus doing that. And then that's a fast lock by Consus. That implies confidence. The product now has to respond with under 10 seconds left. They are pretty close to each other. And it's Consus. And it's Consus that's closer. It's a great region us there in Austria. And it's a thousand points in Austria. Let's keep it going. Round seven. And we're getting closer to that round 10, Paula, which every single point does matter here. Round seven in the UK. But where, Trevor? Not the guy to ask. Somewhere. This is the UK, though. You don't go in, I don't think. You could, maybe. It's very tough with the UK. Maybe you go Wells. I, I'm actually not entirely sure. These sort of plains, uh, uh, these these rolling hills, these types of um, bushes that make sort of walls in the countryside, they can be found, to my knowledge, and I have spent time across the UK, uh, they can be found in a lot of places. Depotic thinks it's close to the southeast coast, around Devon, Cornwall area. Like Consus yet inside in the UK right now. Does that give him an advantage? Yeah, he's just a bit beyond Plymouth, and he's locking it in. Consus uh, to follow Sue, and Consus he's going to go well. Wales. Could be some points here with a 4x, Trevor. Could be. Someone is probably right, and it's Topodic. <laughs> just north of Topodic, and funny enough, sort of cutting in half the area between the two. Still, it's a solid swing. Is move into the next round. And saw. Yellow outer lines, Gen 4, driving left to South Africa. This is a pretty east-west road, pretty dry, no mountains in the distance. You guessed similar areas here for both players. How far north do you go is a question. Three rounds left, including this one, Trevor. Remember, everybody, if Consus was to lose, were to lose this, he would be out. He would still be going to the World Cup, but he would be out of contention for the EMEA GeoGuessr crown. And that's both players know the stakes right here. And you're also competing to win the 5,000 buckaroos. Let's see how close we have the guesses here. We have a lock in here, and they're pretty close. They're very close. Round nine. Wow. Constance getting the right road. To like not making it easy. Going to the penultimate round, Trevor. Moving to round nine. And the advantage. It's in favor of Consus. Where are we, Trevor, in round nine? That's a good question, Paula. Let's take a look. You, one would presume Brazil. I guess you could see a Mexico. You could see maybe something else. Let's see what the players seem to agree with. Zooming in the car. Not the easiest round for me. Quick copyright checks by both players. Consus now. Looking at the horizon, looking for that elevation. The front of the, this the front. That's the front of the car we see. So we see a southern Brazil. We see two players going Brazil. 
in the same state here in MGDS. And both players, we're going to round 10. Aren't we, Paula? I think we are, with 10 seconds left, both players very close to each but, other. I mean, if Pollock is looking for big points here, and it's not going to oh, be big they're points. Oh, so close. What a region guess. And both quite players. literally, Constance's fate comes down to this last round here. Yeah, it does. Uh, these round 10s, it's such a generic phrase, but it's true, anything can happen. That being said, Constance with the lead. Um, Oh Conscious wants goodness. a small country, to put it wants a bigger one. What, what's going on here, Trevor? Oh if, my goodness, why? If I don't sound hyped, it's because I'm I'm not it's because I'm nervous for both players here, because this is actually gonna be and I don't want to get them to wait any longer. It's not a small country. So there's a chance here. Any player can win here. For Topodic, where? Argentina. Oh, Arge. Big Arge. Lock in both players. Conscious a deep inhale. Conscious going into this with quite the advantage, but that advantage means nothing on 5.5x multi. Oh my. It's on fire. We just need Conscious if he wants to advance to the NMPZ for the first game of the day. He needs to get slightly closer here. It's going to be west with how dry it is, you would presume. But where? Do you play safe? Do you play confident? What do you do as the puck zooms in to Arge? My heart. Is beating so fast. Sam Juan. Conscious. He's in between two. Pretty big zoom there. We saw what happened last time when he was in between two. He's scanning, taking his time. Time, Trevor. 20 seconds left. Pollock needs one good guess to seal the deal. Oh my. Comes down to this. We will know within 10 seconds. That's right. It's 10 seconds left. Anyone's game. And we have one in Salta, one south. It's someone, Paula. Who is it? Trevor, it's time to find out. Has the Ponic done it? No, oh, Constance. Constance! In the PZ, here we come. Constance stays alive. And we get to see game number three of NM, PZ. Don't count him out. I mean. I never would. You never can. The consensus is Constance should be seeing NM, PZ. <coughs> and that is what we've had unfold just now, Trevor. I mean, first game of the day. I was going to take it easy for my voice. It's not going to be the case, Paul. We're going to. I got you, bro. I'll give you some breathing exercises. Uh, yawn a lot as well. That's the base foundation. Yawn a lot. It's the most relaxing thing you can do for your vocal cords. Don't read me. No. <laughs> I, I don't do that one. Okay. Anyway. Okay, no, no, no. Enough, enough, enough musicality from us. You know, the tune that we should be watching and listening to is the one of NMPZ. Constance versus Topodic going down to the final game. Comes down to this. Whoever wins this does it advance to the next round. And Constance. Let's, sort of get, an let's just get it. This is just in and PZ. Let's do it, Trevor. Constance. Iceland. Sort of an android when it comes to NMPZ. Inhumane skills. Can Topodic hold on? Topodic is also one of the better NMPZ players in the community. Oh. Everyone hold your horses for these next couple of rounds. This will be interesting. I mean, both players are going to know it's Iceland. Some people know most roads in Iceland. Is Constance one of them? Both players zooming in to similar, or separate regions. And Topolik is in between east right now. It looks like I see he's zooming in east. We have a northwest zoom in. He's trying to line. So basically, what they're looking for is we have water north, and you know the roads in Iceland are very scarcely covered. So you can, yeah, you, know, you can scan when you have the time to find something that lines up for yourself. And, you know, with guests like this, if he's probably gonna stay there. If he's gonna stay there, we might stay. Is he gonna switch last second? Five seconds left. He's staying. Both players similar region. Nope. East. It's Constance. It's a strong start, but just round one. If that was later, the Open. multi would have pushed that 800 points and of damage. Visibly frustrated because he was much higher the east. Round two, South Africa. We saw Constance getting the right road in that no move game in Za. Can he do it in an NPZ? He's zooming in immediately to Cape. You have to just assume Constance knows things that you don't. That's just the that's just the assumption. But Topolic, you can assume the same thing. And he's zooming in 
to cape as well. Or we'll see. Contest has found a north-south road that he likes. Will he commit it? We can see the compass is going north south of, on this road, and Topak is going slightly more north here. Looking. Time winding down, but it's just round two. Consist to lock in first. Potic follows suit, and it is Topotic that is Potic. a bit closer. With a 1.5x, that'll be a healthy first jab thrown by Topotic towards Consist. A very even game. This next round should be a nothing burger, I think. We'll see. It looks like it looks pretty Dutch. Is it for Belgium or something? Probably not. Probably just Netherlands. We'll see. We have a guy on the bike. What does that mean? That is just a Dutchman. Both players so close to their screens, trying to Could read be... between the lines between Actually, the is pixels. Denmark. Now I'm kind of second guessing myself. Looks weird. Um. What was that baller right there that by the guy on the bike? I'm trying to see what that looks like. Looks stone to me. It does look stone. I'm not sure what that is. Um, yeah, 25 seconds. This is an interesting location, actually. Neither More player have op has opened their map yet, Trevor. Yeah, I was confident first, but now I'm not. And we do see a Netherlands guess by Topotic, hedging On the Germany. border. And he's saying, hovering it, saying it could be Denmark. Where's Constance going to go? He's in between. He's going Denmark, Copenhagen, Sweden. Oh, there's, there's quite a difference here, and it's a 2x damage. Who's right? <laughs> it's oh, Netherlands. Topotic. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. 2,400. Yeah, almost 2.5k there in round three. That's a great start, especially in NMPZ. Exactly. Against the Dutchman himself. But, yeah, you know, of course. Every time I see Constance on low points, I think back to that. Sir Goot round versus Foul, I think, where he had like 100 points his name. And his clutch is sometimes his middle name. Looks like we have an Ireland here. You can see on the right side of the, on the hedgerows here, we have that triangle or that diamond shaped sign on the, on, that would be that yellow no passing sign or that yellow sign there that Topolik is hovering over his cursor there. That means you're going to be in Ireland. And maybe. Wow. You can, uh, I yeah. can barely see that Trevor. I'm like straining my eyes and we have a massive TV in here. Yeah, I mean, you can look at Topak's cursor. He sees it. Conscious goes quick, and I he like, does go on. I like his guess there, and just outside Dublin. Not going to be many points here. Got Conscious a bit closer. We're moving into round number five now, Trevor. You know, we had a couple of trends of small countries, but even when you're getting small country, you can still get round country. But this will be somewhat interesting here in Brazil. Looks southern, like a. Pretty south, actually, but you can still pick up big points. You can still pick up big points. Topotic studying. Just briefly opens his map, doesn't zoom anywhere. Quantus has already zoomed in. On see, Brazil. MGDS. Yes. Wait, let me see. He's going. He's in between. He's in between Goyas, Mato Grosso, MGDS. Topotic is in Goyas. Both players in Goyas. Yeah. Both in roughly the same region, with 30 seconds left on the clock. If there aren't any huge, drastic changes here, we might not see many points, Trevor. Kant is hedging more southern Goyas. He's even thinking it could be Piranha. Maybe, if that's what his cursor meant there. And we see Topolic locking in Goyas, and Kant is in southern Goyas. Who's closer? Could be some points, and it's Kant is. Kant is closer with a 3x. It's going to be some healthy damage, actually. 1.4k. Look at this next round here, Paula. Depot is still in the lead, though, Trevor. Still in the lead. And the thing about NMPZ is you, you get very little information. I'm just looking at this next round here. It doesn't look the easiest to me. I'm Why is that, nice Trevor? What are the issues here? What are you seeing on screen? It looks, just, it looks like something that I haven't seen quite before. I guess I go Sun North, Southern Hemisphere, Brazil, my best guess. Maybe Arge. But I think, I can't tell those poles are in the dis distance. Maybe Could you go this Brazil. be the round, Trevor? It looks, it looks like, like a weird Brazil, but I'm not sure what those, it could be ours. It's never, and we see, and we see Topotic zooming into Argentina. We could see blunders here. 
We could see a big we difference could see two between different our players here. here. And we could see one person taking this away. Comes down to this guess, I think. And, and Topolik is zooming into Argentina. And he's going to... He's... This Northern Arch does make sense. It's oh, going South Africa. wait a second. Wait a second, Constance. With 10 seconds left. Are you going Zar? Is eight seconds. He doesn't know. Oh, pain. Oh, he is. Oh, that's the game that's is going to end here, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone at home, who's it going to be? Oh, Topolik, you've done it. You've knocked out the reigning champ, Trevor. Look at the smile on his face. What a game. Topolik, of course, an absolute beast, one of the best. But to take the scalp of the reigning champ to send Constance home. In the quarterfinals, this, that is a huge result. You, the smile, the smile says on. And on a round like that, Trevor, you said this looks like a Brazil or an, it, or an Arge, but I, I'm not sure. And then I mean, you, you had some um, reservations, and then we saw that reflected with Consus. The NMPZ is uh, that's that's the beauty of NMPZ. You get those wrong continent, you have to really Oy. use your noggin. Yeah. And Topolik did such, and you know, wrong country, but doesn't matter when you get that many points on NPZ. It's well, what, a, what a performance by, by Topolik there. Trevor, what a way to start the day. Topolik takes down the Titan. Rachel and the desk, back to you. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. Thank you, Topodic, for kicking off the day in an exciting way. We got to go the distance. You went several times to regions that you claimed to not be too comfortable with. And then Argentina, one of your tough spots, where you picked up the win. Tell me, uh, you feeling pretty confident in your preparation for this? Yeah, I'm so happy about this. Like, this is what I was dreaming for for so long, for like almost like seven years. And last round was I was in the wrong country. It was in Brazil, but like it did look South American, and I thought that it looked like those mountains around Cordoba. But fortunately, it was still enough to get the win against the world champion, which is something really big. And in the moving, the moving game was also quite big that I found a sign for Neri Ungri in Russia and that decided everything because my no moving game, was, my no, no moving guess was the same as Consus. I think this is a really interesting series because from my perspective, you looked like you were guessing with more confidence than Consus was. Do you think going into the game as the underdog gave you the confidence to make those more ballsy guesses? Uh, to be honest, I think so, because uh, the pressure for me was off. Like, even in the start of the tournament, I didn't feel um, too much pressure. And I think that uh, being the world champion gives you a lot of, like, expectations. And maybe, like, Consus um, made a couple of mistakes due to that pressure, which is quite unfortunate. But fortunately, I won. Yeah, uh, congratulations to Podic. And I'm, I'm curious about the Netherlands round in the NPZ. A lot of us upstairs were thinking that it looked more Nordic, perhaps. So, like, what was going through your mind on that one? Well, I was confused a bit at first because, like, the window looked like more Danish. That's why I zoomed at Denmark for a second. But also, like, uh, my first guess was Germany, but we didn't have a black back of the sign. And I thought I saw a blue sign or something, but so I switched to Netherlands and I thought it fitted and I did hedge a bit for Germany that's why I guess so far east but it fortunately worked out well you went into this match feeling a little bit of pressure but ultimately like it wasn't so bad is the pressure rising as you continue in this tournament now or are you just cruising I don't feel the pressure at all at the moment love to hear it can't wait to see you play later on today let's take a look at what that's going to look like and thank you so much for coming on the desk to share your insights uh, we have Topodic moving forward in the bracket. A lot of confidence, no pressure. I love Sunday because you see the players play in such a different way in these different situations. Any thoughts on that matchup before we go to break? I mean, you really can't, like, like that is such a huge result. I mean, Consus was probably my pick to win the whole thing, honestly. Uh, narrowly, but uh, he probably was my pick to win the whole thing. Obviously, reigning world champion, you know he's done it before. I, yeah, yeah, like, Consus is going to be so annoyed about this one because Topotic played with more confidence. He made the more, like, uh, the guesses that made more sense, but also a bit more risky. And, you know, as he was saying, he was in the position to do that. He didn't feel the stress in the same way that maybe the reigning world champion would. But, it, all in all, I was much more happy with how he was playing. I, the guesses I was seeing, for example, the really close guess on Germany in game two, and then, like, a really nice guess. Uh, what, what was the other one? He made a really nice guess in. I forget what it was. There was, there was, or oh, the really nice guess 
guess in southwestern England, another another one where he just made like a more confident, more interesting, but like kind of just like a better guess than Consus. Absolutely. Big shakeups for the tournament with the favorite out. We're going to be coming back and Deborah and Finbar are going to be fighting. So let's stay seated and we'll see you in just a second. Last year, history was written and a champion was crowned. But every story has an end, and every champion must once again rise to the top. In the halls of royalty and where innovation is praised, a new master will ascend the throne. Welcome to the City Hall of Stockholm and the finals of the GeoGuessr World Cup 2024. Secure your tickets now and be part of this historic event. See you in Stockholm.
of the biggest things I did to like prepare was reading Finbar's like 122 page Russia doc. He's done a lot of cool things though. I don't really want to win against Finbar. I feel like I, I want him to win. I like him and I don't want to dash his dreams in any sense. So I just want him and Finbar to be happy. I want him to be happy. So, but I will nevertheless do my best. I think Depre is a very strong player, definitely not someone I would have liked to see in the quarterfinals. He has a lot of interesting knowledge. He also likes pavements a lot. <laughs> so if there's any rounds that are landscape and there's good pavement for him, then he might beat me there. <laughs> Two players who have made a study of each other in preparation for this tournament. I think it's beautiful that Debray wants so badly for Finbar to win, but will not in any way. Just step out of the way for that to happen. But with all we know about these two players, all their involvement in the community, we're seeing Debray size up against Finbar here in the second quarter final. How is he looking to you, CG? Yeah, he's looking really strong. As we saw yesterday in the groups, or on uh, Friday, I should say, he went 3-0 and didn't let a single game through at all. So he's a strong player, 58% win ratio. He's guessing pretty fast as well, less than 30 seconds. So he's a strong player. And what he was telling me upstairs before all this started today, he just does not want to see Russia, of course. Finbar, <laughs> the greatest Russia player in the world. Uh, he has been studying it. He read it, the, his document over on the plane ride here. But as he says, he, he doesn't want to see that. Uh, if Russia doesn't come up, I think Debra has a really, really so solid chance at this match. Yeah, solid chance, a great background of information and great attitude just coming into this tournament. We saw time after time the interviews on the desk when he was winning. Uh, love to see it, but Finbar's attitude also excellent. What do we do with that, Zigzag? Absolutely. I mean, Finn, like, he's very pleased to have qualified for the World Cup. I know that, and that was one of his big goals getting here. Everything else is a bonus, and obviously I'm really hoping to see Finbar go further. I think uh, Russia is uh, very much a huge advantage for Finbar, but it's not a win condition. There's certainly worlds in which he just beats Debray without any rushes at all. Um, and I think I think it's very important for him to win the moving game because I think Debray and him probably stack up pretty evenly there. Um, and then as the best of three goes on, I think Debre probably builds momentum. As we, as Debre said, uh, as uh, Finbar said, Debre good at reading the pavement, good at reading the vegetation, that, that kind of minutiae detail, which is more involved in the NMPZ game mode and not so involved when you can run down the road, check for the signs, check for the phone codes. Yeah, I saw Finbar there with one of the highest uh, turn timers, taking about 50 seconds on average. So it's going to be interesting to see if he has to cut that down, what is going to hit the cutting room floor. But we get to watch it live and in person, commentated by two of the best. I'm going to hand it on over to Rainbolt and Paula. Thank you so much, Rachel. Yeah, Finbar, Finbar versus Debre next. You've got a big smile on your face, Trevor. I mean, if the way this is going already today, we're in for a treat. And we have Debre versus Finbar. Anytime you get to watch Debre play, it's a treat. Anytime you get to watch Finbar play, it's a treat. Then together, it's a double treat. It's a double treat, extra sweet. And very soon, we will be on that server and letting both players go at it head to head. Our second quarterfinal of the day here at the GeoGuessr World Cup Europe, Middle East, Africa regional finals. The loser of this goes out, but they still have their World Cup ticket. The winner moves on to the semis. Both players. It's interesting now with uh, the Zapolic win there, whereas maybe maybe players almost feel like there's an opening. Not to discredit you know, Zapolic, because he's gonna be taking down Costas is insane, but it, going into these games, maybe with a like a better attitude almost in the future. Well, of the I mean, tournament. the reigning world champ is out, you know? He will still be at the next world champ, the, our world cup. Course, yeah. But yes, of course, that the, changes the overall tournament meta and landscape. Absolutely, Trevor, you're right. Yep. All right, game one, move. Let's get right into it. What better way to start than what looks like India? We have poop cam. So I guess Sri Lanka has poop cam, but this is probably just India. Let's see what these players do. And I actually remember, who was I talking to? Was it Finn, actually? What he was saying he hopes he doesn't get India? We'll see. And it's, uh, yeah, we have Debray zooming in and locking it in. Language Debray pushing the pace. Language here does help very south of India. Oh, Finbar going further north. Three seconds left. Both could be Where close. is the location? It's oh, Debray that's closer. That'll be a strong round one. Nothing insignificant. Not here points. Debray locked in Finn. You know, we know Finbar as the best player at Russia. And so, basically, if he can keep making consistent 
And we see a zoom. I don't know, this is France or Belgium, but we see both players, or we see Finn if he just can make consistent guesses in these countries and gets to like a late round. What is this? Not, uh, yeah, Belgium. So if we keep seeing him make just consistently good guesses, we can see him hopefully get like late multi. Russia, that would be what he's looking for more than likely. It's gonna be hard to beat him, unless you're Salik and you can make a great version guess when he knows the road. Under 30 seconds left now. Neither player wanting to lock just yet. Both players finding the same sign here. So they're playing with the same information. Now it's just a matter of scanning. Usually looking for the one furthest away, because it's probably bigger. Under 10 seconds. Round two. Small points though. Small, Small points. Oh, nice Is guess that there by uh, Debra. A 5k? Nope, just one point shy. Debra's locked in. Debra like, is locked in. Like he almost has it. To be, to be going into round three with a 1.2k lead, it's big. Yeah, I, can, I almost feel like Debra's... He looks more collected today than normal. I don't know. We'll see. This is going to be South Africa. It's some hills. It's Gen 4. Maybe you would... If it was Gen 3, you could maybe have to think about the country for a second with the others, but... Or Eswa. Debra scoffing saw. for a moment there. Maybe losing his footing, losing his direction. And, uh, yeah, we see a couple of players being kind of frustrated with their moving games here, with the movement. And we see Ocean's, Ocean's private, private School. Register now. Yeah, probably, it's a private, yeah, it's, I would love to. It's, yeah, education, always. Pretoria, I guess, here. Bye. Locked in. When in doubt, Pretoria it out. Been by, you've got less than 10 seconds to respond. It's going Durban. This is big point. Yeah, this Unless is big. Unless it's in big. the middle. Debra does not like his guess. Oh, but you are closer, Debra. Congratulations. Really solid performance so far. I mean, yes, yeah, slow and steady wins the race, I guess. And he's... But that's, we're only going into round four and Finbar's almost on half HP. Debra's doing a fantastic job so far. Yeah, it's not like the NPC games where you can count on that one guess. You keep getting these thousand points, it, it really... It adds up and it adds up fast. If you can do it back to back to back like Debre has done. What is this? Oh, it's Kenya. Gen 3 Kenya. Then you would presume with the... You would probably just presume this is a national park somewhere in Kenya. Because most Gen... Most is just Gen 4. I guess it could not be, but it probably is. Don't know, though. And we see Debre zooming in. You get the Kenya snorkel. That's a... Uh, we see a National Park guest here, just southeast of Nairobi. The this, this snorkel is probably one of the first things you learn in the game of Jugesser, next to the Ghana tape. Thanks to Jugesser's uh, tweets. If you guys didn't know about that, you now you do. 30 seconds left. Both players on the move, in move. Heading down this road, looking for any information they can possibly find. 20 seconds now, Trevor. Both players are going to guess the National Park here in Kenya. But it could still be points because Deborah's going a little more west. He's choosing to stay there, and Finn seems to stay east. Five seconds. Is Finn going to move last second to west? Nope, he's staying. Max oh, West. Deborah again. No one on the money, but just being closer with a 2.5x multi means even more damage going the way of Finbar. He's yet to lose any points in a moving game. That's a hard thing to do. It's round five, and Finbar is now under 2k HP. This is new Gen 4 coverage. We see Finn going uphill. Maybe to get high ground advantage. We'll see. Oh, little family there. What's, what? what a great photo to take, though. That is a great little place to take a photo. This should be, yeah, this is Argentina with the Gen 4. Locked in. And, and I think both players can get Northwest. Or like, I, I feel like that was quite confident by Finbar, moving quite fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty distinct region. They're very close Argentina. to each other. Now oh, Finbar oh. finally responds. He's going to do his first points of damage towards Debre. It, it's not nothing. Especially when you get into these, you know, the rounds mean more with the higher multis here. And I'm not sure in NPC what this looks like. Um, Spain, Portugal. Let's see. Uh, maybe not. Oh, Finn. 
Debra likes Debra's, that sign. They're zooming into Boss and he Lona. Knows, and he knows. Locks it in Burns. hard and fast. Um, it's not Illy Finn. It's just a pizzeria. <laughs> Finn. Okay. I mean, Debra is. He found a, a, a map which gave, gave him the outline. He's going to make a guess. And we have a France guess. What a difference. With oh, 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 geez. Yeah. <laughs> he's marker for a second there. I thought Finn had suddenly hit an insane 5K. <laughs> no, he's just in the wrong country. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Another round win for Debre. Not too many points, but still, with Finn Bar on such low HP, any points of damage towards him are healthy. Yeah. On round seven, let's see if he can do it here. In uh, Brazil? Ever token teens? Grass? Anyone? Token teens? We'll see. Quadruple in round seven. Quadruple damage. They're zooming in. Both players obviously know it's Brazil. We have poles, Brazilian soil, all of the like. They're really looking for information. And we see North Guess here by Mato Grosso. Mato Grosso lock in here by Finn. He seems confident. Time now, Debre. Pressure on under the studio lights. Debre is in Tokenine's border right now. Monte Grosso. Four Three seconds. damage. Big points for someone here. Where is the location? It's closer to Debre again. Mayor now. Oh, could that be it? Yes. yes, it is. Debre, what a way to start your finals journey. First game, very impressive, taking barely any points of damage. And you know what, Trevor? He remains locked in. <laughs> This is not the Debra we know. Where's well, Yap where's Yapray? Well, Debra's clearly multifaceted guy on that desk and on camera. He's an entertainment factor. He's a bit of a superstar. But on the server, yeah, yeah he's, he's a locked. different side of yeah. him. He's locked in. He knows he knows. He's where got the skills. He wouldn't be here otherwise. That's and he's facts. showing us why he deserves to be in this quarterfinals and perhaps deserves to move forward. But for now, he's not allowed to move. Because what's up next, Trevor? No move. No move. This is where things get fun. If that that was fun too, don't get me wrong, but this that is where things fun. get maybe right. more fun. Let's see how fun it is for both players. In Japan. No move. You get one 360 panorama, no going down the road. This is all you get. Do either of our players recognize this coastline? That's the question. Anything across the water, above the hill? A little bit more difficult here because there's no poles or anything like that to give you an advantage. So you have to kind of go off of Landscape, coastline. See if you can see any other islands in the distance to make an educated guess. Can't quite tell if there's coasts out there or if it's uh, just the clouds. Debray wishing he could climb that hill right now, scale it, get to the top, get some height advantage, but no move. That's not an option. Debray smiling. First emotion we've seen here from Debray. And he's. Oh. Is he going to water hedge? Is that what he's indicating here? That he wants to hedge an island or. And Would you recommend he's just that? Soccer here. He's going to lock it in. And we see an island, southern, southern island guess here by Finn with eight seconds left. This could be a big point. It's quite a distance this here. This could be a big point. Yeah, round one. <laughs> oh, Debra. Yeah, I mean, that could have been like a lot more points. Those, that's two brilliant round one starts. And once again, it shows, you know, uh, sometimes the metrics, you don't have to be on the money, but if you are closer to it, you're going to get paid. That was a great one-liner there. I'm, I, I'm just the, not to be the bearer of... I'm I appreciate impressed. it, brother. I yeah. appreciate it, man. It's finals day. It's We've got finals. to hype it, it up, final you know. Form. <laughs> My final well, Okay, let's Round lock two. in. What let's is lock this? In. Is this Bulgaria or Hungary? That's what you're <laughs> 2023 copyright. There's, for those viewers at home, that's what Finn saw. And we see... I, mean, I go hungry. They're probably going over Romania here. I don't think it ends up going row with this winter coverage. We'll see if that's the case, though. Was this, this Gen 3 or Gen 4? It's Gen 4. If it was hungry, Debre perhaps with a bit of hometown advantage, but he doesn't think He's it is. He's in Bulgaria road border here. And he locks it in. Maybe that's maybe that is the case. Hedging between Romania and Bulgaria. Let's see where Finn goes. He's going to Oh, wow. Okay. 1.5x. He's going to Italy. Oh, this could be big. Three seconds, Trevor. Hungry. Oh, Debre, the best. again. It's his house. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily... <laughs> For both players, location that's, split them in half, but it was Debray closer again. It's just, uh, wow. Quite literally, Debray has probably. So you were right, Trevor. 
You uh, were on the money, brother. I called like three countries, so. No, I, I, I feel like you were more swinging towards Hungary. Nonetheless, round three now, double damage. Debre in the lead. Can he do it in two? He's looking really good, Trevor. He is. Shelton's corner. So we have the the yellow signpost there, which would indicate uh, usually WA, but it's not always the case that that's always, you know, 100%, but you can probably trust it here. Debra's gonna lock it. I knew it. it! Wasn't a full AZ, but it was fast Both pace. players in the same town, finding the same information, and this will be zero points. Yeah, they are. On the, and Finn just found the roundabout, and he 5K. Sitting on the beach together. Oh. And Finn bar, that is a 5K. If you're gonna win a round, oh, he didn't, it didn't even end up um, giving him any points, but always great to hear that 5k. Yeah, that, that, that's a great sound. Keep going. Fastest Dustin. Um, yeah, don't know. Spain, Italy. Mediterranean vibes here. Greece ever? Probably not. 2023 copyright. We don't see any car color visible. Do we actually? They're very looking down at the road, very specifically zooming in. I mean, it's definitely Could that Europe. imply that he's been in this general location before? Looking towards the electrical box, and now a big zoom. Where is he zoomed in on? Uh, towards Turkost. Yeah. Rainbow, the mm -hmm. name. Where does it come from? Really, Paula? What have you told me before? It's my last name. Are you serious? Yeah. Rainbow's like your real life last name. True. I just don't believe that for a That's second. That's okay, bro. Like, for real, for real. FR, FR. Uh, I wouldn't lie to you, to your face. <laughs> bro, that's insane. That's such a unique... Where'd you get Paul from? Well, Paul is a, a name from Sanskrit, uh, an old sort of um, South Asian uh, language. Uh, anyway, that being said, enough about our names. We are ready to come back in. Can I get some clarity about what's happening? Oh, no, we're in back on camera. We're going to a break. Actually, that's just been clarified to me. Um, Trevor, anything else you'd like to say before we do go to a break? I'm interested to see where that location was. Yeah. Probably um, restart, but yeah, let's just keep it going. Yeah, everybody at home, we are going to go. We, we don't have to go to, if our producer would like us to stand here and chat, I'm sure everyone would podcast love to. The is on well, it, episode two. It's not so much about me, but definitely I'm sure everyone would love to hear from you. And yeah, that's, that was a fantastic matchup that was shaping up. Of course, little tech issue there. That happens in esports. Um, but Debris is looking on fire, brother. Yeah, he's what, 1-0 right now? And I can see now that was Turkey looking at the screen here, but we'll see what ends up happening. Oh yeah, we can actually see that with our preview monitors. But okay. yeah, wow, Ben, so ben Barr was probably trying to get, maybe his, he couldn't load his map though, so maybe he was switching to Turkey last second. Wow, yeah. But no, that's yeah, it's, it's, it's what happens in these games, you know? Could that, could that have been game? Maps. Well, with Finbar, Finbar was on like 4.7. It would have been game. That would have been game. But you can't, you, you, I mean like, under the circumstances that like, both players stay there, you can't maybe. Spicy scenes here. In the yep. second quarter final. And then the yeah. That's just the luck of the luck of the game sometimes, round four yeah. ten. Are there any matches over the rest of the day that you are most looking forward to, Trevor? I think it's like the easy answer is uh, let's get Debra Cam. No one wants to see me and Paula, let's be honest. Debra Cam smiling. I think smiling. Uh, for me, like the most exciting with the gold hidden gold chain as well. That's a man of real class. He's, he's got the swagger, Drip but he's not, he's, he's not, not got drowning. It. Yeah, exactly. He's not, he's not showing enough. It's just they're peeking out a little bit, you know? Real G's being in silence like lasagna. Hey, Lil Wayne is shout out to Lil Wayne. <laughs> Slight delay there in computation from uh, the Rain Bolt uh, Back to your question, server. though, about the games I'm excited for. For me, I like games with high stakes. And we're talking about high stakes. I mean, the last chance games we have right before the finals tonight, I mean, that's about as high as a stake as you're going to get. Yep. I mean, I mean it's win or go home, quite literally. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we saw Constance lose, but it's not like that really means much in the grand scheme of things for his like World Cup, you know. So, but these games, you lose those, you lose that best of five, and you're not coming to Stockholm in September. Yeah, and that's. I mean, we don't want to remove weight right from being the regional champ. That's a huge deal fair. to have. Yes, but I completely agree with you. Look, th these regional finals are. Primarily, I see it the same way as you. It's a pathway to be at the World Cup and to have the chance to potentially be the world champion, not just the regional champion. Exactly. And yeah, if you're and in that last chance, it is your last chance. I didn't know if you were going to pass that to me. Or I was. I was pointing at you for like two seconds. Just saying. <laughs> 
All right, everybody at home, little update. It should be about two to three minutes before we're back in. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to go back into, but we'll find out soon. We will. Little conversation happening get, between. Maybe we just get Debra back on the cast down there. That would be. I'm just kidding. Oh, we do not want that. that. that that's <laughs> integrity, man. We've got to keep him locked in. No, obviously. But yeah, they were talking there, Finn and, and Debra. Perhaps deciding on a solution. That was a crazy location, though. With our admin. That was a great, great location. Sometimes. Just, I wish we could even hear. We're just up here. And... Yeah. Well, what game are you excited for today? Or what players are you excited to? Honestly, that first match of the day, I was really looking forward to seeing how Consus comes into the finals, the quarter final. And um, yeah, Topodic just got it done, you know? He did. Um, all, no, all the games over the rest of today, uh, there's some, there's an element to every single one to be excited about, you know? I'm no, also, really. I'm, I'm also um, just excited to see who's going to rise to the occasion and make it to that finals. Now, the the, the field is blown wide open, Trevor. That's true. I mean, you have, if you're Blinky, you're Blinky, somewhere... Blinky, you know? Surely this you is could, a, a bigger opportunity than ever. Yeah, you could see it as like a, oh, it's an opening, or like, oh, if Costa's going to lose, so can I. Yeah. Oh, that, I mean, yeah. If you flip it like that... It's, you know, is it, is it a glass half full or half empty? And yeah, for all the other competitors still in the competition, they see... I mean, everyone here is operating at the, at the highest level, but going by what these players say as well, they worry about Blinky. They, they, also, they, they know Conch is the world champ. That Blinky game is Blinky versus Krat 2, which is like France on France, which will be a, quite the content game. Content. Finbar locking eyes once again with the camera. He's been a master at that. Perfecting his art. I think we are going to be getting back in very soon. Yep. I will confirm that's, that's or deny that as soon as I can. We can, of course, see there are still some discussion happening on the floor. Let's see what ends up happening here. Yeah, admin. Uh, Checking him PC. <laughs> Both PCs. So it looks like no players guessed did register in that last game, which didn't result in anyone losing points. Yeah. But let's see when when we get word here of what the next steps are for now this. Finball putting the headphones back on. Locked in. When the headphones are on. Was it Finn that was really into Taylor Swift? Um I'd need to check our player sheets. The T Swifty, any Swifties? Let me grab it. Are you a T Swifter? How could you not be? You know? <laughs> That's a Travis Kelsey. Tra Wait, what? It's American sports moment, probably. It, uh, American sports moment, yeah. Okay, fair play. All right, I'm gonna check here. Is is Blinky better than Wimby? The basket? No. There's another American sports mode. Blink uh, well, I know who Wemby is because he's the French basketball yeah, player. Yeah, like who's the go to France? Is it Blinky or Wemby? <laughs> well, that's tough. You're comparing it across two completely different sports here, you know? I guarantee you if Wemby tried playing Geogaster, he would probably get flawless. Oh, I was just about to um, read off about Finbar. Uh, All right, and yeah, he enjoys apparently uh, uh, self-described sad girl music. So I don't know if that includes Taylor Swift. But probably. Regardless, right, let's get in the game. Yeah, everybody at home, we are back in. Get hype in the chat. It's our second quarter final. Debre is up 1 0. He won the move. It's no move now. We had a little tech issue, and we're back into round five with Finbar slightly lagging. Zooming behind. into the cars here. You know, Finn, this isn't, this should be, was this Ukraine? Should be. As Debre zooms into Ukraine there, you know, Finn is known for Russia. We'll see. We'll see, though, where he ends up guessing here, because this is even region guessing here is not the easiest. Let me see a key of guess here. Yeah, Debre plonking down in Kiev, but will he stick there? Yeah, he's just going to lock it in. Sometimes clicking capital is the best thing you can do for yourself. Ten seconds left. Finbar to respond, and he is going in to Serbia. Serbia with five seconds left. 3x damage. We can multi. see the Ukraine plates north. <laughs> Oh, that's still big points. Debre, huge guess there, and it's almost 2k damage. I mean, Finn's guess there is validating by the fact that he didn't see any antenna on the car and it looked kind of like Eastern Europe. Okay. Not a bad guess. 
Fair play, fair play, but it's pretty solid damage. We're going into round six, and Finbar yet to land a blow on Debre. Yeah, this is going to be interesting here as we look into the next round. Oh, um, uh, one moment, everybody. Guys, we don't have the... Uh, Let's see, as we wait for the next round here, we'll see... Uh, what can happen here? Yeah, guys, a little pause here just as we are looking for a button to um, start the next round and it's being looked into. Um, but no, I mean, 6,000 health. Yeah, 6 k He hasn't lost any yet, points. Like, yet to be touched. As we, I mean, these high multis are only getting higher. Yeah. And Debra is probably thinking, what is Rainbow doing up there? This guy. Yeah. It's really not that big of a game. Oh, we've got it now, Trevor. Oh, it's back go. up. There we go. Can... All right, back into the action. Having our players sweat it out for a bit. The tension mounting. Trevor, where are we at, brother? Looks like Peru. North Peru, potentially. One would presume. We have white car. But every time I say North Peru ends up being max south, so I'm done region guessing Peru, if I'm being honest. Oh, Chile. That's also is probably the case. Is it? Yeah, actually, it makes sense. Debray looking to the sun. You see some tires. Perhaps it can light a fire What's in his pole? brain. That's interesting. Pointing in the right direction. Under 30 seconds left now, Trevor. Wait, is he moving to UAE? Whoa. Wait, we have black on the... I, I, Finn yet to open his map, so we don't know what he's thinking, Trevor. No, nah, I mean, it's Peru or Chile. I, it's not UAE. And we see... Oh, is this game? We see Finn going Peru here. This is... And oh, no, Debra Debra's back. Debra's back. But it's still massive diff... Uh, they're, they're, uh, it's, it's Peru versus oh Chile. Oh my god. Why is he going UAE? Debra. Double UAE! Locked in! It's Peru! Oh. Debra, you've absolutely missed the mark. Finbar, thanks to the multi, taking Debra off the server in a ruthless, violent fashion. That... I mean, Debra... And we have the, the stare down. And That's the stare. The death there. It was pre previously death there, Debre, but Finbar, I think, is earning that title. Yeah, I want. I, I would love to know what made Debre go UAE. Obviously, UAE, they're deserty. You also get the white car, but he's not happy with that, and I hope that doesn't you know, bleed into his next game here. As we are, we, we're so far, we're two for two on the NMPZ. Finbar's focus, coupled with the luck of the Irish, paying Ooh. dividends. It's NMPZ, everybody. Whoever wins this progresses to the semis. Whoever loses is out. All right, lock in. We've already wasted enough time here. Let's keep it going. This is the only still shot they get. Let's analyze image. I'm two pixels away from the monitor. I go Botswana, probably. Maybe another Gabarone, and we see Debra doing that. Instant Andy locks it in. Instant Andy. Instant Andy, AZ King. Finbar with 10 seconds to respond. Yet to open his map. Now he's doing it. He's going Francis Town. Game one goes to Francis Town. Oh, Finbar. What a guess. That's a great guess. It's around 1 1K. Getting Francis Town there is a great, great region guess there. Round two in NPC. This is what we're working with. Allow me a second. Analyze. We have a blue strip on the plate. Definitely going to be Europe. Question then, is it ever like a, like a Serbia? Yep, Debra going Serbia here. Belgrade. And he's locking he's it in. He's locking it in. I like the way that Debre is pushing the pace. Forcing Finn to act. Forcing his okay. hand. Going further east. He's in Bulgaria here, Sofia. 1.5x. And just Debre, great job, my friend. Yep, and that's 1,100 points. Taking Back and forth. The lead. Back and forth, Trevor. Debris, take a deep breath. Finn, listen to some T-Swift as we move into Turkey. Another Turkey round here. We've had a lot of Turkey. Call it Thanksgiving the way we'd be having Turkey. Hey, I like that. Shout out. And it's a walk in, just That's center. my guy. 
No. This is definitely a meta strategy being played by Debre here. He's pushing the pace. He wants to be fast to act, and he's done it three times in a row. Five seconds left. And we see, we see more Southern guess here to respond. It's quite a distance. I actually almost like Finn's guess better. Yeah. Yeah. Solid guess. There'll be some good points as well. Interesting strategy by Debre here by locking in just center, where I feel like for him that maybe was gettable Southern, but what's not gettable instantly is this. As I'm looking at it, I'm not sure. I mean, you have a couple options here, Paula. You go. What are the options, Trevor? Ireland, UK, I think. Maybe just UK. Maybe a weird France, but I probably just go UK here. Go UK. We have a Scotland guest here by Finn or Scotland hover. It's interesting. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it off the rip. We see Nonetheless, going Finbar UK. going Scotland, and yeah, I trust these guys. Czechia. It's Czechia. Well, you called it, Paula. It was a very vague call, but I mean, yeah, UK, where I'm from, I don't know, it just didn't look British. True. Wow, it, big, that, big points missed there by you, our you players, they have saw, They should have saw the blue skies, and they're like, yeah, this is... <laughs> why is this it's not so grey nice? and gloomy, it yeah. can't be the UK. All right, let's keep it going. Round five in NPC, and we're back in South Africa. Yeah, that was a very difficult check, yeah. Now, I'd be interested to see if anyone in the other room called that. Debre over Gabaron sure. again, but now going further yeah. south, okay. west of Kimberley, locking it in. What's the difference in distance here? Not too much, I don't think. But with 3x, oof. Finbar a bit closer. Further chip going to be going the way of Debre. Let's move in to the next round. Let's keep the pace And NMPZ, though. This is the most thought. unpredictable game mode, Trevor. Quite literally, yeah, it is. And this is New Zealand with the ballers. Both players know that. Debra zooming in, AZ style, to South Island. Finn follows suit, and Debra locking in again. Very similar. And look how close they are. The region. We're gonna go to around seven, Trevor. Four that rounds we are. left. That we are. But great oh, guess oh, by Finn. Mark. very close with 3.5x. Could be quite healthy. Yeah. Mega health, healthy. 600. 600 points. That's. Great guess. What an interesting location. Um, Australia? We can see a slight dark blue tint to the card there in the bottom too, which if you see the slight blue tint on the very bottom of your screen there on both players that we see. This 100% Australia, Trevor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, both yeah, both players tent. going fast. One outside, uh, outside Adelaide, Adelaide. Two, South Australia. It's two, super close. Four A kangaroo damage. island guess here. Debra does not know. It's big. I think Finn is a bit closer there, but even with 4x, nothing to write home about. And Paula, as I look into this next round here, you're probably going to say, oh, Trevor, where are we? I will not be answering that at this time. Trevor, taking a bit of time now. No, I'm just letting the players here just figure this out for me, if I'm being honest. Um, I'll call Spain Turkey. Debra is going fast. And Debra, Almost the full AZ. Debra looking for his redemption arc here in Turkey. Yeah. Can he run it back? Is it Turkey this time? He's locking it in, Trevor. Finn, unsure. He's going to oh! freeze. Trevor. Debra down 2,000 points. Needs oh. one good guess. It's Turkey. Oh! Debra, is it enough? It's sort of in the middle with 4.5x. It's 1.7k damage. Even going into round number nine. NMPZ. <sighs> You gift us such brilliant, tight games. And this... South Africa? A max of two rounds separates one of these players. I think Debra's last guess in Pretoria is what you might do here. And maybe both players go Pretoria here and you get no points and we see it around 10. Is that the case that we might see? Call my shot, but we'll see. 50 seconds left. And we see Pretoria guess here by Debra. And he locks it in. And we follow suit, and that's what you do in this urban round. That looks We're like going Victoria. to round ten, Trevor. To this. All the rounds. Oh, that was winnable. That was winnable. No one willing to take the risk, though. And here we are. I mean, I don't even know what to say. All the rounds of NMPZ will be played. What do you usually out. want in round ten? Big countries. A lot of the time, both players' points are close to each other. 
It could technically be decided anywhere, even if we were in a small country. But Trevor, I get the impression you're implying what's up next is a big one. Indonesia. It's going to end in Indo. Debray. Gamer posture as he zooms in. Even the smallest difference here. Is he going for a water hedge? Could win the match for either of our players. It's a 5.5x multi. He's going Jakarta. He's locked in. To Jakarta. Barely 300 if points. If he goes to go Jakarta, Finn wins because he's... No! Oh, it's going to be Finn! Loses. He's done it. He holds on to the lead. And it's the Irishman, not the Hungarian. Finn showing us what he's made of Let's... and that he deserves that semi-final spot. Wow. I mean, back-to-back -back games where you could say upsets or not, but both are incredibly very great games. And it's what we're going to see for the rest of the day here, Paulo. Yeah, two incredible matches to start things off here on finals day. Um, Debre was close at times, but it was Finbar edging it out at the end. And both those last rounds, you know, if you, if you just commit something less safe, maybe would have gotten you the win, but not the case. Not the case today. All right, Trevor, enough from us for now. Time to head back to Rachel and the desk. No, you're fault, bro. Thank you so much for calling all the way to the end of NMPZ, all 10 rounds, and even a little extra because of the hiccup there in the middle but you kept your focus and Finbar, you are standing here victorious. Tell me a little bit about rallying your mentality after that moving round. Uh, yeah, I lost the moving. I uh, just kind of messed up a lot of the moving rounds, but I dropped a little bit better by the NMPZ, I guess, so. <laughs> I would say so. You absolutely performed so well. Uh, even the times when you were off base, uh, equivalently with Debre, uh, the mistakes were, were shared and the genius was singular. So congratulations on moving forward here. I know you got some breakdown questions though. Absolutely. It was an interesting series. I feel like both players in this series did not exactly play how they wanted to. Do you think that was more a result of nerves or more a result of very difficult rounds? Uh, I think the disconnect kind of ruined our mentals. Like, it was just like the break, like in the middle of a game, will always, like, you know, and then. We have seen that throughout this tournament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think I kept it together in the NMPZ somewhat. Uh, I mean, we were very close in the NMPZ. It definitely could have went either way. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, after the reset, you guys both had some rounds that maybe didn't go the way you would like to see, uh, and then NMPZ was close. Uh, how are you feeling about going forward to face Depotic now? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, no disrespect to Topotic, but I was expecting Consist, the world champion, uh, if I was to get through this game. Uh, but Topotic's playing incredibly well, as we all saw. So, yeah, looking forward to that game. Absolutely, yeah. Should be a really fun one to watch. I think, uh, like, you know, maybe the two underdogs going against each other in a way. So, I yep. mean, it, one of we two going to the grand finals. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, Finbar, well, I'm going to give you the uh, last word here. Friends and family, fans at home, anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, thanks everyone uh, for the support. Uh, yeah, hope you're all enjoying the show. Oh, we're definitely enjoying it. Thanks for the entertainment, Finbar. We'll see more from you in just a little bit. But for now, let's take a look at that bracket. More shakeups mean more excitement down the line here. Love to see that Finbar will be advancing against Topotic. It's different from everything I've heard everyone predict. But we've got more exciting matches and potentially more shakeups coming to you right after this break.
Yeah, so Blinky is definitely one of the best players in the world. And I know that he's the strongest out of all the players in moving, so it will be very hard to beat him on my main game mode. But I hope I do well. Kretsu has similar has a similar skill set to mine. I just think I have yeah, more experience. But other than that, I don't think like there's gonna be a huge difference in any of the game modes. Maybe NPZ favors me, I'm not sure, because yeah, he said he was scared of that, but I think he's not bad at it. <laughs> so I think he'll do well. Welcome back to the GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals. I'm on the desk here with Chicago Geographer and ZigZag, and we have had two very exciting upset matches in our quarterfinals. Now we're heading into a match with Blinky and Kratzo, and we're wondering, I'm wondering at least, do we have the potential for another upset here? We've got incredible players, Blinky with so much experience, but evenly matched in the skill set department, as he said, against Kratzo. What do you think, CG? Yeah, not only are these players both from France, of course, but as Blinky said, he he thinks to, that they have some similar desk abilities here. Uh, they're both strong moving players. Uh, we can see Blinky's stats here, another 70% win ratio here. Uh, he is another one of these players who went 3-0, not letting a single game through. Uh, but as we've seen, Constance and Debray both had that happen, and they are not moving forward. So Kratzo looking to pull another upset here in what could be a pretty close matchup. And knowing these players as well as we do, I know Blinky loves preparation. He had time to prepare for Kratzo. How would Kratzo be preparing for Blinky? And do you think it was enough zigzag? I don't think uh, Kratzo would be specifically preparing for Blinky. As Blinky, I don't think Blinky's one to pay false compliments. Blinky does actually definitely consider Kratzo a threat, I think. And despite the you know less uh, lower level of experience, I think Kratzo definitely can win this one. Also worth noting, this is the French Derby. Like we we will see you know one French going through to the semi-finals. Um, I think for Kratzo to win this, it just needs to be like probably bigger country region guesses. And uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. If, I don't think there's any specific tactics. I think we saw Kratzo reach another level of gameplay yesterday after his nervous start. And we've seen the nerves go crazy here. I think Blinky holds his nerve, um, maybe more so than the uh, four other competitors we've seen so far. But uh, you know, I was expecting Kratzo to be able to hold his nerve more and that didn't happen. So we'll see. Yeah, there's a lot of factors at play here when you're playing on land. Fortunately, we got two very experienced competitors coming up in this next match. And to take us through the action, two very experienced commentators. Take it away, boys. It is the showdown of the Soufflés, the clash of the Crème Brûlée, the battle of the baguettes. It's Blinky versus Kratz. So Trevor, we are in for an absolutely amazing French showdown here in the quarterfinals. That was good. I like it, battle of baguettes. I didn't practice at all, totally improv. You didn't tell me that you're gonna, you had a great one line. Uh, 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 Kratzu versus Blinky. <laughs> I mean, it quite literally is, though. It is. It's, it's going to be an absolutely France, amazing game. France on France. We saw Kratzu yesterday lose in rounds in French territory, both in France and French Canada. Canada, that's now a country. Um, I'm curious to see if we do get France in this, who of Blinky and Kratzu is going to log it first? They, they both send at the exact same millisecond in solidarity. <laughs> exactly. That has to be a double 5k instantly if we get that blinky. Seems ready. Kratzo wondering, hmm, pondering, what am I going to get? How am I going to prepare myself most? Yeah. I mean, the way this day is going, you can't really, you never know what to expect in this matchup. Obviously, the game is, fa this game is favored towards Blinky as one of the best players in the world. But Kratzo, you know? So much going on in the minds of these players. I mean, now we've seen two insane matches right down to the wire to kick things off. An upset in Zapotic taking out Kunzis. Could Kratzu potentially take it down? The second place world championship player of last year in Blinky here as well. Yeah, and Kratzu, the thing about Kratzu is that he's really good at moving. You know, the French players, they're all very good. That's what they're known for. Yeah, French yeah, players yeah. are known for being good at moving. It's kind of what they main. And so if you want to beat Blinky, you're going to have to be able it helps if you can take down a moving game. And, and, that, and that would be insane, because, I mean, you've said it before, many say it too, Blinky is considered, if not the best, He's the best. but one of the very, the best. very best, best moving players. So, Kratz, so this one is going to be tough, but let's see if you have it in you. Here we go, round number one. Everyone, get some hype in the chat, get some baguettes in the chat for these two amazing French GeoGuessr players. Blinky, both players, looks like, what is this, like South Oz? Let's see what both players do end up doing here as they both find the highway fairly quickly or a main road here. 
and we see some moving. Rural terrain, a lot of landscape, a lot of foliage to play on, but not a whole lot of science. As I say that, though, Blinky, early on, finds the right route down. I think Kratz, so two now realize, well, this is a very, a very long open road, but now finally some, uh, some housing, some signs starting to pop up in the distance. Yes, and this is going to be a Blinky moment, I think. Sure could be. And when you see Blinky just lock in like that, you just don't even, you just have to just assume he just found the exact road. Casual 5k, the flick of the wrist. We'll see if he locks it down. If it's on point, if it's perfect, time comes down to zero. And he has. Oh, <laughs> starts out with a 4999, as close as can be. 1600 damage in round one. That is brutal. Absolutely, especially moving. Round two. Absolutely. Off 10, what do we have here? We have an area code 304. 304 will be West Virginia. Learn your area Mount codes. Mama. Great song. I think 304 is West Virginia. Should be. Does it's, any players know their area codes? It's amazing how you can have just the name of a state and all of a sudden everyone just instantly starts singing in their minds. Kind of does look like West Virginia. Yeah. I hope it is, just for the sake of the amazing John Demba song. Shout out to all the John Demba fans in the chat. I mean, that should be everyone, though. I'm sure Chad is starting to sing now. Can we just sing in chat together? And we have an, an amazing zoom song. instant lock here by Kratzu. West Virginia is the initial lock. Let's see if Blinky follows suit. Looking, 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 and he zooms in too. Whoa. West Virginia. Yeah, he's going down in that direction. A little further oh, north. towards Wait, he, he's, north he's, side, though, and yeah, in between wasn't. them both. For such an urban round, maybe Kratzu putting the pressure on him pays off. A little bit of damage coming in return again with how much damage he took in the very first round. Catstro needs these small kind of hits back in order to even things out, potentially to come into the final couple of rounds. Exactly. Exactly. We have a white car here. What is this, Peru? We'll see. Plenty of shops to go by, but rarely that these shops give you a lot of intel on where exactly we are. So they'll hop out of the marketplace and back into the main streets for more kind of useful information. And we see, and that's a great guess by Kratzu, it's a great information, and confidently. Quickly locked on in, Blinky, haven't seemingly found the info he wants to exactly pinpoint the position now, though. Doing more goes in, up towards the northern he side here. Sign? Who found the sign? I mean, Kratzu seems confident Kratzu. before, and he finds it, indeed he does. Blinky tries to follow suit, but not to be, and that's a lot of damage, 2,000 of that. Going on to the world's best moving player in Blinky. He had extra seconds as well. Had one or two more seconds, could have maybe spent looking for additional info, but he felt confident up towards the north. Sometimes moving is finding info better. True. Kratzu, that True. round, found the info better, and he used it, and it paid off with 2,000 points. As we move into Guatemala, we have the Guat car. We see Blinky immediately going to line the road up in North Guat. Blinky is up there already, locked on in. 5K potentially in the making. Let's see if Kratzu can get the info needed to get up there as well. What does he go by? Seven seconds, five seconds. Has he's, going, close, he's, has he's going outside in. Squat City. If Blinky's on it, he could pick up a couple hundred points here. Yep, it's nearby. Let's see who he finds does. it first. And indeed, he does right on point in the city itself. Two kilometers off, but he'll take it any day of the week. Plenty of damage come through now. Kratzo hitting under 3,000 health. Blinky just does things. He didn't move that game, Toby. No. He just knew the city. It's instantly knew. And he could have if he wanted to spend a bit more time to find the exact position. But as we've heard him say in interviews as well, why spend three extra seconds to get a 5k when I can just insta-log it and that's hopefully what, have him like there's even further away. a difference between playing comp with multis and going for 25k speedruns. Exactly. Let's see who has advantage here in Australia. Blinky zooming into Wah, Red Soil, Wah, both players over there in Wah. W-A. Three times multiplier. The green on the bottom of the post there, I think that's a good sign for Western Australia too for those that they're playing. That could be a fake meta that I just spread for no reason at all, but that's okay. <laughs> Again, fake info, better than no info. That's facts. Yeah, sure is. Let's see. Both of them kind of hovering around the same street here. Not expecting to be able to maybe find a whole lot more info to go off of if they go down the street. Westonia, Cowlin Street, Center, Caravan Park to the left. Can you find the specific Caravan crowd? So. Oh, and... Uh he found Kratzu something. Found Westonia. Yep. He's on it in the city. Blinky just saw it as well, but I'm not sure he has the info in the city. He hovered his mouse right, on, he's top, right of on top of it. Blinky. But he's going away. He does. He hasn't found the name yeah, of the he, city. He's covering right over it. He does not see it. 
potential 5k here for Kratzer. Would hope to get it. Let's see if he finds it. 300 meters off. Great, great bounce back here for Kratzer. Again, 1,000 damage hitch being bounced back and forth every single round. Taking a moving game off of Blinky would be huge. Not only would it be huge, it would be a fitting way for this three-game series that we started. Oh, yeah. Game. Oh, yeah. Blinky said in the pre-game interview as well that he it, it sees himself as a bit of a favorite in the no move. So if we were to go yep. all the way in NPC in this, that would be amazing. And this right, next round looks like something that either player can just, like, find within 20 seconds, if I'm being honest. It's New Zealand with distinct bridge. Yeah. Plenty of ocean side, plenty of bay line to line up your position with. Let's see if they pin it down. Instantly, Kratz already down on the yeah, southern side, locks it in. Blinky is there as well. The bridge. This might be a couple of points for Blinky if he takes his time to get the 5k proper. I think he might have. You can see Kratzo out in the water there, just kind of uh, quick plonking it down. Is Blinky moving the Chrysler? He's staying. <laughs> he was just, for a second. He was oh. just looking for anything that lined up, just yeah, make he sure. He didn't like the bridge in the city because there wasn't enough buildings on the backside. Couldn't see this uh, bridge on the southern side. Those are points once again in the favor of Kratzo. And this is where things get interesting, Toby. Sure is. Full times multiplier. Because we're in Kazakhstan. I'm not sure. Have we seen any player in Kazakhstan? I keep wanting to shorten the country names for no reason. And any of these moving? Kunz is 5k. Any of these two players, I wonder. I would assume. And then Kratzo said, yeah. That's a quick lock. That's. Wait, oh, is, look at his face. He doesn't want to look at does the Does he screen. know he's right or does he... What's his... Either... Either that was like, either that was full knowledge pick or he was right. praying. praying. He is praying. So maybe there's a chance that he could and be wrong. And separate region. Blinky is foul for this oh one. Oh my team. god. He didn't get it in. He didn't get it. He didn't lock it. He wins it. 17,000 damage. Blinky. Too slow on the trigger. And Kratz to take what moving. What is happening today? What? Come on, he says. That was insane. Taking a moving round in the quarterfinals of the European Championship off of the best moving player in the world. Mistakes you never see at this level of play. Oh, my. You can see it on his face, too. That is frustration. But that is... If we're going to look at the four, the next couple of games here, Kratzu, obviously a very, very talented GSR player. Definitely, definitely. Very, very talented. It's... You're not, you're not one of the best players in the world taking down Blinky. But now it's mental games. Maybe Blinky thought he had that one in the books prior to even coming into the game. Right now, all of a sudden, you're playing from behind. Can Blinky turn this around? Or can Kratzel somehow write off the momentum he just got off of that win? And, you know, you mentioned earlier in, this, in, this, in that game, does Blinky have the advantage and no move? But the question is, Toby... Let's find out. Let's let the plane talk for itself as does, we head into the first round. Does Kratzu? Run it back. That would be insane. In Kazakhstan. Both Blinky and Kunsis out in the quarterfinals. Imagine. I don't want to imagine that. Imagine. Well, I mean, That's you might have to. Live in. You might have to reel to Camel Meta. Is it a thing? Probably. No, it is. Blinky going in. A thing about Kazakhstan is a lot of time it's a lot easier to learn roads than it is to learn urban cities. Up there again. So something like this. It just won around this exact area. Might as well go back to where it was just before. I mean, yeah, this is just next level here. I'm not sure what, I'm sure not, I, I, yeah, this is. Blinky, locks it in, took a little extra time, maybe the 5k is lined up, Kratz are now taking all 10 seconds he has remaining to try and find the exact position he's finding himself on. Five more seconds to go, is he gonna change it up last minute? No, no more changes coming through here. And that's that's Blinky. the round, that's the round Blinky was hoping for before. Not to be though, 2500 damage round one. These big countries, they can hurt like hell. Yeah, and he's Kratz who's lucky that wasn't on the next round. Exactly, because that's without multipliers too. Huge damage to start things off. So next, this is an interesting round. 2023 copyright. Looks like it could be either like a Germany or Austria or something of the like. Let's see what the players end up agreeing with here. That's signs in the we, have, we do have a sign there. Is that like ever a Czechoslovakia sign with a yeah. black border? I can't tell. 2023 copyright. I still lean towards that house being Austrian or Germany. Yellow sign on the right side. A truck sign on the we left. Another yellow here. sign there. Checkia. Checkia. Double Czechia maybe? Blinky to... doesn't like his guess. No, not Well, at least if he doesn't like his guess. He doesn't like both of their guesses. I feel like that might be... And he's going to Belgium. It could be Belgium. It's a scary. Already down to half HP. Germany. It was up towards the north. Germany is where we're just south of Hamburg. But with both of them being off by the same margin, a little damage extra goes on to Kratzu. Let's keep the pace high. Blinky still at 6,000 points. And no move. This looks like... 
National Day or something. Let's see. Yeah, yeah towards the, Southeast Asia, Asia we go. I guess here. He's gonna lock it in. Let's do the pole. Can't tell. Yes. Yeah, to uh, go and seal so yeah, go it for presumably it. is just a north or a Sulawesi pole. He has max HP currently, Blinky, trying to put the pressure onto Kratzlo, not wanting to give him too many chances here, but of course, in this set of games, at this level of play, 15 seconds, sometimes it's plenty more than what you need, and because he had that extra time, he's going to find the damage. 800 done to Blinky. Blinky, looking for a continuation of good guesses. Definitely is. But so is. And is, is this what we wanted here? Is this what we're, is this what we it looks like we might have this is the, the france on france mm-hmm kratzer lost in france yesterday twice we'll see if we can get it this time blinky. around blinky locking in early on towards the west side of paris up towards normandy we'll see if kratzer follows suit or if it goes elsewhere they're in the very same vicinity Let's see, can one of them 5k it? Can they find it? Picture perfect. I don't think that's going to be the case. This time around, it was all the way up towards the north. The Havre is where we were headed. And uh, with that, just 80 damage done. They'll take that. France, both close enough. Yep, both getting a great reason us there. They'll both be happy with that. Dog meta? Dog. Woof. Woof. I like it. This should be Malaysia. The question then is, uh, Borneo or mainland? And... With three times multiplier. It almost uh, feels like, oh, that is isn't sign that would lead people both to Terra. <laughs> Instantly going towards it. Yep, knowing place names is helpful. It does help quite a bit when you get a city name right in the point. Six damage will take those any day of the week as we continue on into round six. We've reached the halfway mark, 3.5 times multipliers now as we head to Brazil. Okay. We have lighter poles. Okay, this is, so this will be interesting because there's not immediate information. The two things that you probably go here are Acri or like a weird like MGDS or something. I don't know. It feels Acri to me. That could be back call out. We'll see. 3.5 times multipliers. Kratzo sat at just over 3,000 health. Now this could be game. Even like if they're in the Acri. same country, even if they're in the same region, this could be game over potentially for Blinky or a uh, oh sorry for for Blinky or it could be Blinky taking and it into an NPC. Blinky going Southern Acri. I think is that what he was zooming in on. Not locked in just yet, though. I feel like at this point, Blinky would have locked in already if he wanted to stress Kratzu on the pick. He's, I think Blinky's literally on the 5k. And, you know, in rounds like this with less information, you, Kratzu has to... Up, and he's... I don't like that. That is far off to these. This I could be like game. That. Kratzu on low HP already. Is he this going to take like us either. in? Is this going to take us in? It might just take us all the way to the third round. Let's see. Yes, indeed, it will. 10,000 damage done. Kratzu down. We are headed to NMPC. Three for three, Toby. <laughs> The group stages kept us excited, but we got there so rarely. Once on the first day, twice on the second day, and now back to back to back, and then NPC we go here in the quarterfinals. Called a, instead of a hat trick, you can call it a beanie trick. Yeah, true. Oh, the excitement, the excitement. Many thought that after that moving round, that would be Blinky out, but he kept his composure. He kept smart, kept his head cool, and survives into an NPC. We're really at this level of play, and you have to agree with me, this could be anyone's game. Yes, an NPC is always anyone's game. We've saw, we've, I mean, we've seen today that anything can happen. It really is. And I'm it's, not just saying that. Quite literally, anything can happen It's here. overtime. We are headed into overtime here as Blinky and Kratzer takes the field once more. Round one. An NPC basically means you only get this one single still shot here. One frame is all you get. You can't even zoom in, so that's why you're seeing now rip, like yeah, magnets exactly. their heads are drawn exactly. to the monitors. You just get as close as you can to figure out what you can. I mean, it's going to be the US. We have we can see the front of the car. I guess it could be a weird Canada, but it should just be... Big enough For country. those that don't know, when you can see the front of the car, you're going to be in the US or Canada. And is it and always going to be like that this. blue hue then, or is, could it be it any could be different colors? colors? But if it's on the back of the car, it's in Europe usually. That's Roger. just a good rule of thumb. If you're Take gonna, notes, kids. Take notes. So if obviously, you there's be, other clues here to... If you want to be you. competing against the best in the world, you have to have such a big brain that it can barely even fit in your skull. The noggin. And no one, that's the most amazing thing to me. No one brings notes to the, like, to, to the game, having, like, their a, a small pre-written notes on the table next to them. It's all just memory, which is absolutely insane. Some yep. of the biggest brains in the world playing these games. And we see, uh, we see both players. We see Blinky, Minnesota, and, uh, Michigan guess here. Center, Wisconsin, on the Wisconsin. side of Kratzo. Locks it in, tries to even get it. We are actually all the way down towards Cincinnati. So it uh, could have been big damage, but 500. Still a decent chunk in round one. But uh, Blinky, I think, for both of them, really living with the scare of exactly. being far off. And kind of the name of the game for NPC is, 
As long as you have any points, you're still in the game. Yeah, true. Sure. Very rare you see a death by a couple thousand points here. It's usually 10,000 plus in these elite round multis. Play consistent, play good. This looks like Spain. Ooh, does it though? To me. Linky looking towards Italy. I guess it could be Italy. Yeah, I like Italy. Yeah, Italy's a good guess. North side, north of the boot, we'll see who locks it down. Kratzer Croatia. looking further towards Croatia. Nearby facility still, of course, and with only 1.5 multiplier. Locked it in Italy. Hurt too much, but still. There, we have distance. We got some distance to it. It's gonna hurt. It's not gonna be game most likely, but still, it's gonna take a decent chunk out of one of these two pistols. But especially if Kratzer goes further Serbia. away. He keeps going Who's further closer? east. He wants to go He's looking Istanbul. Spain. And we're all the way in. Oh my, that could have been. Oh, 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 that could have been way more dangerous. I mean, he's lucky he got away with both players confused. He was looking to go fight. Look at Kratzo's face. He knew. Oh my lord, I almost threw it there. Yeah. Even Next. Blinky was a bit, uh, bit shook by that one. I. Yeah. This is. I don't know what this is. Got to give it to the map makers, man. They keep it difficult. They keep it as difficult as can be. What better than seeing some of the very best players in the world tested to the limit of their ability? I can't tell if this was... Quick login. Brunei, you like the pick? Yeah, Brunei was a good pick. Same between the two. Oh. 98. Little, little, little slap on the wrist there. We'll be fine with it, but of course, as you all know, that's just a good chance for us to stack up the multipliers and keep moving forward. And that's exactly what we're doing. Round four. This is what we got. See, we have a short plate there on the plate or on the car in front of us. Short plate plus that. Maybe you go max, but then you also get short plates in Ecuador. And that's yep. what we see here. You make sure of short and long plates in Ecuador. And Please. I think that will be the case. Ecuador, small enough country that if you just send up, it shouldn't hurt either player too much. But with a 2.5 times multiplier, of course, even the small damages can turn out to be pretty big in the end. But here, not too much going to happen. 300 at that towards Blinky. Oh, the deep size from Grasso as well. The pressure is on. The pressure is on. Germany. Will they go Czechia again? No, because we have bothered. Germany, again, big enough country that it can do a lot of damage if they do we go see to him the going Lux, regions. Both going in some regions over there by Lux. Do they think it could potentially be Lux? Or are they hedging? Still northeast of Frankfurt here, and Is Blinky he? Lux in on the western side. Bit of distance okay. in between them still. Is he going further east? <sighs> Winky is Lux. And it is over in Luxembourg. Neither of them found it perfectly, but still damaged on 1700. As you see now, these multipliers are starting to put the hurt into any single guess just to sliver off. And looking in round six here, we will see no points, I presume, unless you have a massive blunder from either player here, because this should just be one of those roads outside Santa Cruz, Bolivia, based off of. What it looks like, I guess, unless I'm tripping. And we do see. They find it instantly. It's one of those on roads that is extremely recognizable. And you can see it's going east west, and both players looking on the four here to find the east west road that lines up, and we are on the same road. Is this 10k in the making? No. Um, Why do you not have a name for double 5k's? Did Blinky just. He did. 45 meters off, almost had it but to like, a but like, But like. But. That's the like, issue of these the, long, the, longs, the, even roads. I mean. The, I don't even know what to say. Because how did he just find the 5k without any... Just uh, casual zoom yeah. in, notes the dent up towards the west. There wasn't even there. an intersection. Am I missing something here? Big brain, bro. Big, big brain. He's been up and down that street. He's walked it. He's walked the entire thing for days on end. And has it completely printed in his mind. 1,700 health for Kratz. So this could be him falling out. Losing unless if he turns it around. Yeah, this is Sweden. Very red road. If you know, you know. Zigzag. Shout out. This is interesting. I mean, it would be hard to see game here. But I say that, but four times multiply and Kratz down at 1700. He has been the one to kind of alleviate off of certain guesses getting further away from them. And if Blinky 5k is yet another time here, that might be Kratz in trouble. He is sitting up on the northern side. Both kind of in that same region. Maybe it's considered the, the Red Road region. Yeah. But it's central Spain or central Sweden, I should say. See where Blinky opts to head on in. They are very close to one another, at least for now. It could still change, of course. Neither of one of them locking in just yet. They might just play this one all the way till the end. They know they're not going to grant that a whole lot. For Blinky to lose here. Sure would. On sure this would. round, I should say, because it's not the most points. 
Kratzu can lose, Blinky cannot, is what kind of these rounds are right here. Yep, exactly. And for Kratzu, he just wants to keep chunking into that health of Blinky. Oh, wow. And this time he will be able to bring it just on the border of Sweden and Norway, further up towards the north. And again, not max damage there, but still, you don't want him at 5k plus coming into the final rounds. And let's look in the round eight, where I'm immediately zooming into the... Cl Let me look closely, Toby. Mm -hmm. Look. What is this? For those of you guys who can't see us right now, effectively we are seeing uh, Trevor do exactly what the players are going to be doing in a second. Look at their heads. They're so, going to be magnetized to the screens in 3, 2, 1. There we yep, go. Yep, there goes Mikey. I guess, <laughs> okay, so Indonesia. I can't tell what these houses are in the distance there. I could see like a, even a color Ecuador. So tell me, so tell me, is this game? I 4.5 multiplier, even you're unsure? They both make bad guesses, I think. He, I, even you're unsure? I, like, I, like, I love a Sumatra guess. I think he's right. Oh, oh dude, he's I going think South America. Sumatra. This could be game. Stand up. This could be game. They're in each their continent. I think if it, anyone commits here. I think it's Indo. That was my first instinct. Blinky maybe gets there in the end. This is not easy, though. 24 it seconds. Could neither one dares like that. That's my other call out. Neither South one dares. They're like you. They're unsure. And when you're talking two continents, not just neighboring countries, they don't Ten dare locking it in. Ten seconds. Kratzo is still yet to get away. Blinky is still yet to even put well, down Blinky the marker. Be right he here. hasn't put it down, but he's going to commit. Eliminated. He's going to commit. This is going to be game regardless. Is, of it who has is it Ecuador? Which continent are we on? Come on, game. Tell us. It it's is. Kratzu. It's Kratzu to bring it home. Tons of damage. Make it almost 14,000. And Blinky what is happening? eliminated. Tons of spell. What is happening? Blinky falls. And here we we have it, Kratzu moving on in the French fight for the ages. <laughs> A semi-final with neither Blinky or Consus. Who put that on their bingo cards this week? I don't know what to tell you. Toby. Never have I seen Trevor being unable to speak, but we are completely mind blown by what just happened. Again, the pressure, the NMPC, we called it, it's anyone's game. You said it, it could be both continents. They went each their way and Consus brings it home. I mean, it's kind of like you play the game for a reason. They had so you wake much up, time to You eat your Wheaties and you play these games for a reason because and if this for the next player is coming up, this is what GeoGuessr is all about. This is the passion we love to see from players, from ourselves, from all of you guys, viewers as well. Let's hop back now to the desk, because I'm sure Kratzo has a lot to say after that match right there. Wow, the script writers for this one have been cooking. Kratzo, congratulations. We got to go all the way in an NMPZ again, and a brilliant choice to decisively finish it off. What went through your mind as soon as that locked in? Like what, with the last round? Yeah, the last choice. The last one, I was kind of sure it was Indo. I had a slight doubt for Bhutan, but like the architecture looked Indo. I was ducting now Sumatra for all the pines, but I was not too sure. And I was very afraid of other like Sulawesi maybe and stuff like that. I never fought Kolo. I don't know why he went there. Maybe like he, I don't know what happened in his head. Um, but like, I saw, I saw, I tried to put pressure on the rounds in the middle of the game, and I saw that it didn't work at all. <laughs> so I decided to play how I play usually, like taking my time and think and make a guess that makes sense actually. So that's what I made, and uh, I mean, I think I think I'm. It's lucky that he didn't send Indo here because like, I don't know. Like it's it's a miracle for me, like <laughs> crazy. Well, congratulations, Kratzo. I don't Thank think, you. as we said, like everyone knew you were capable, but few believe um, that it would actually happen. Uh, I want to run you back to the first game, though, which is a really interesting one. Blinky was constantly struggling to get to the good info. Do you think you like kept a level head and were able to get to info like that? Or what do you think really happened in that moving duel? I don't have his POV, so I can't know what happened. Um, I mean, like, he, had, he got the info on some rounds I didn't. And uh, maybe I got lucky to get the info first. I mean, I wanted to go as fast as possible to find the first info and put pressure as much as possible because I know that if I let him the time, uh, he will cook. So, yeah, I'm very happy with uh, what I did uh, in the moving game. And uh, I'm very happy I had the confidence also to guess uh, quickly on the two last rounds where uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, make like Topotic uh, and go and just plonk and yeah, win. <laughs>
Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, looking forward to the rest of the tournament now that some really tough opponents have been knocked out of the running. How are you um, liking your odds? I lost 2-0 to Mad. I hope he, he loses here against Kodak. Uh, this guy is too correct. I'm, I think he, if he wins against Kodak, he's going to win the whole tournament. So, yeah, um, Kodak is very good too. I was very impressed by his performance on, on like when he played the, in Group C. Um, no, nothing to say about this. Like these are two very strong opponents, and uh, that's already crazy that I, that I, I bit Blinky. I bit Blinky. Like uh, that, that that sounds so weird. Like I mean, I don't know. Well, Congratulations for doing so. Like <laughs> the the tournament is busted wide open <laughs> now. <laughs> Any single person left can win I mean, and has a good chance. Like before the tournament with Finbar, we said like uh, the script was like the grand final is Finbar versus Kratu, and like uh, it seems like the script is going on. Like the, it's the script writers are hard at work. Really, <laughs> the, the script was like very really good actually. Like it's it's gonna happen maybe. Yeah. Wow. We. Yeah. There's five thousand dollars for the winner at the end of today, but yeah, I have to ask you: Do you value that, or do you value this win over Blinky more? I mean, uh, if I can go, if, can, if I can have both, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Solid answer, Crosso. Fortunately, we get to see more from you in this tournament. So thanks so much for coming Thank on you. the desk, sharing your insights. Good luck as we continue and looking ahead as we continue. As we just discussed, Mata Kodiak coming up next. The winner of that will go against Crosso. So stay in your seats. More exciting GeoGuessr to come.
I thought I had everything All the things life could bring But now I do anything Just to be together now Yes, it's a new situation Triggered by physical vibrations So many fields in circulation And the past is history now And I believe I was made for you You were meant for me Now's the time so I've got to tell you now Playing against Mada will be an interesting match, I think. I remember him from Paris two years ago, uh, where we first met, and like the jump in his skill set uh, until now is like very impressive, especially moving. So I think it will be a great matchup. He's a strong opponent, so everything can happen. Kodiak is a fantastic player. He knows really well how to play uh, with these stakes. He has a huge amount of experience and uh, I can't underestimate him. This would be a super tough match, but uh, it would be a really, really good fight, I hope. Very excited to head into our last quarterfinal match here as the day moves forward. Very excited also to welcome Jalotris to the desk. Hey, how are you enjoying the event? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm having a lot of fun. I mean, um, of course, yesterday evening, <laughs> It wasn't uh, that great for me, but uh, I'm still loving the vibes. We have great people around us. Uh, they cheer me up and that's all that matters. <laughs> it seems like everyone in the GeoGuessr community has so much fun when you all get together. CG, can you speak to the vibes in the room upstairs? Do you have much time to hang with the players during the matches? Yeah, I always try to rush up there as fast as possible, just like hang out and watch the games with you guys. Um, yeah, it's really good vibes up there. Glad you're having a good time and great to have you on the desk, Jolotris. Yeah, and it's been a really exciting week and a really exciting day in particular of matches. Let's check out that bracket as we talk through it because we have Topodic Finbar and Kratzo moving on to the semifinals. One last decider match here. And Jalotra, since we got you on the desk, I want to know what's your take kind of on how things are shaping up? I mean, uh, so far we had like very interesting games, uh, especially one upset on uh, the last game, France, game, uh, France against France. Uh, everyone was, of course, thinking Blinky's gonna lock this in. But hey, it's GeoGuessr, uh, it's especially with this format, anything can happen. Um, I don't think too many people expected that, but that's the game. And now we have um, Mad against Kodiak. I think, I mean, Kodiak also has some uh, Italian roots. So it's kind of, again, maybe Italy against Italy, same country, same blood. Um, really excited to see what's happening. Yeah, this might be more of an even matchup than we're even kind of expecting here. I love that Kodiak was able to speak to some of the history they have together. A lot of people talking about Mata as kind of a new or unexpected player, but he has history even on land, even in competitive. And I just love how much you guys all seem to know each other. So as we take a closer look right now at Mata, maybe we can speak to a little bit more of that history, how he has set himself apart over the course of this weekend and leading up to it. CG. Yeah, we've seen Mata really make a name for himself here this weekend, winning three of his games, all three, I should say. Uh, he's really proving himself as a moving player. I think that's some of the strongest gameplay I've seen from anyone in GeoGuessr. So he is definitely a force to be reckoned with here. Uh, Kodiak as well, though, he's a strong moving player. So should be in for a really good first game between the two. Uh, but yeah, Mata, uh, let's, let's see if he can keep proving himself. Yeah, great focus on Mata there, and we definitely got a chance to talk to him a couple times on the desk. Kodiak, though, going up against him, bringing a lot to the table as well, including his long history and his studying of Mata. How else do you think he's prepared, and do you think this is a fair matchup? Uh, definitely. I think there's no matchup where you have as equal skill set as on this one. I think both prefer uh, moving over no move. Um, but still, I don't think you can make a prediction on this one. It's, I would say they are like very equally skilled. All right, we're not going to make any predictions on this one, but uh, you know, you talked about 
long history with these players. You have a friend in the in the competition. You cheer for a little harder than another. I mean, Kodiak was the very first person I've met uh, in person out of the Geo Guesser community. So I, I'm almost forced to root for him. You know, I really hope he's. Uh, going far this um, event. That is a very valid reason to cheer for one over the other. Here though, we're just cheering for good games from old Seltzer. CG, any thoughts? I'm really looking forward to this game. As Jolter said, no clear favorite. So I think it should be a really good one to end the quarterfinals here. Well, let's leave it up to the players to decide. I think our casters are ready, so I'll throw it on over to them. Thank you so, so much, Celsa. What a phenomenal breakdown. Great job there, Gilotus as well, stepping in on the desk and giving us some extra insights to this match. I'm joined now by Six. Like he ran up the stairs and joined me here for a cast of what is going to be an amazing game once more. Absolutely. I'm definitely agreeing with Gilotus' take here yeah. that this one is really hard to pick. Both players very evenly matched. Kodiak slightly more experienced, but not that much more than, uh, than Mata, I would say. So it should be a really, really fun game here, I think. And I'm very, very sure that it will indeed be. If any of the previous three are anything to go by, we are in for a phenomenal final quarterfinal match here. And honestly, I mean, keep in mind, the winner of this match is going up against Kratzu next. He just played a blinder of a game, taking out Blinky. I mean, what are they thinking coming into that? I mean, uh, I'm sure both players are definitely scared of Kratzu, but the big challenge comes right here, of yeah. course. And uh, maybe maybe Marta is slightly the favorite, given how strongly he performed in the group stage. He definitely uh, showed off with a good flick over towards Turkey that gave him his final win, but we'll see if he can take down Kodiak as we head in to match number one of Move. Absolutely. And we are looking at a country which is very difficult for most players, but which I think these two players know quite a bit about. So let's get straight into the round here and see how they both perform. Well, right off the bat again, we've seen some pretty heavy hits, actually 1,000, 2,000 damages even on the very first round. I feel like the early in the game we are with the multipliers being low, people there a little more to yeah. go with some wild guesses. But then we've also seen that come to bite them in the behind because they dare early, because they lose X amount of points in the very beginning. When they then do make round 10, there's just too big of a margin to catch up. That's definitely true. And okay, so we can see here, Kodiak is locking in uh, Thailand. Thailand is a country with very few English script around the place. Mm -hmm. uh, so lots of Thai script instead, of course. I think both players can read it, but I don't know if Marta actually came across any useful information here. So yep, and that is exactly what I thought. Kodiak coming out with the more uh, useful information and dealing 500 points. Solid start there for Kodiak as he uh, gets on the board first. Let's hop on in to round two right away. Where, oh, where is this one going to take us? Absolutely. Well, I'm seeing an Argentine Argentina. flag here. And uh, yeah, but this one, I mean, Argentina in urban uh, circumstances can be a very different difficult country. Um, I'm noticing that we have like a concrete road here. I'm noticing the vegetation, uh, but really these players may know area codes and they may uh, be able to pick up uh, on some kind of town name if they get to a main road here as well. Remember though, chat, everyone new out there, just because you see a flag of a country and you know what the flag of the country is, doesn't mean you're necessarily in that country. That's a trap that I've fallen into multiple times. Once again, Kodiak with the fast block. He did that yesterday as well. Tried to be fast, try to kind of keep the pace up high, as this time around, they're both very much on point, right next wow. to one another. Ba-ding! A tight game on this one. <laughs> I love it when that happens, but that was actually a remarkably quick round. Both of them got to info before I could even process what happened, and that is a testament to the quality of the definitely, play. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Both good on move. We'll see now here who gets the better of what... Can I guess that this yeah. is maybe... Oh, Come on, Toby. No, 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 no Toby. You, you dug your hole. Is yeah. it a very big country? Because I was initially going Russia. Yeah, it's Russia. It's <laughs> Russia. And we're learning. We're learning. Given the fact that it's Russia, two times multis is enough to end the game. So let's get into it here and see if it could end after just three rounds. Initially, you know, initially. you know, Russia is another one of these countries where the info on a moving round is fairly sparse. That being said, you know, Finbar, he's the one who researched these Russian antennas, yeah, yeah. which can be very useful for getting the region. I imagine Kodiak has Ooh, done he's a bit quick. of... Oh, right away locks in Kursk. That's such an interesting guess. Did he see something on the antenna? I assume he so. Might have. 
And Marta, does he know his Russian antennas? He could go Asian Russia here. Okay, very good. He knew the antenna. He's going to be in the right vicinity, I imagine. Nearby yeah, vicinity. Oh, they're they're actually both off by a bit, but I can see Marta. Wait, what? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that is a difficult round. It, it, it couldn't have ended there, but it could have been thousands of points of damage. And, and it's wow. one of those weird ones where you're happy that you actually won the round, but you're also <laughs> upset because had it been in any other case, that could have potentially been you down and out, right? Yeah, I definitely think that's the case there. That's exactly what Marta's feeling, and you can always I see it on his face as well. True, 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 okay, true. Okay, next one here. Looking like Southeast Asia. White road lines may indicate that we're going to be in Malaysia here. Let's find out as we head into the round. I think Malaysia, we're probably on Borneo Island where there is a bit less information, but the poles in this, in this, in uh, in the two provinces on Borneo Island are very useful. Uh, so we should be able to, we should see both players getting the right island here. Is what we I'm are saying. out in the open foliage landscape. Knowledge is the majority of what you have to go by. Kodak, you can see, trying to go back and forth a bit. <laughs> Trying to figure out exactly where to go dance around the street as he tries to line up some more info but can't quite make his way to what I think he wants. Now he sees really fast straight road, no signs to go by, oh, and Marta just locks Marta. it in quickly. I don't mind that. I think I might be a bit further north in Borneo, but these uh, these pole tops do kind of indicate the uh, the general region, and they're both going the same here, so maybe Small they are damage. right. I don't want to doubt two pros like that. Kodiak did see the road be very, very straight ahead, and oh, it is going to go a little bit further again. Once again, Marta, not too happy with his guess that despite the fact that once again it does come up victorious again, these guys, yes, they play to beat one another, but they also play to play the perfect game. They want to come out here, be proud of their results, and it doesn't matter that, uh, that that you win the game if you felt like you were off on half your guesses. 100%. And where they clicked did also look like that region, so it's a reasonable mistake. Beautiful. Next one here, we're on a really cool bridge. Oh, oh. Um, both players that. will know the continent for sure, but there is still a question about the country here. So let's jump in and uh, see if uh, both players get it right. I mean, when they're moving in an urban circumstance like this, or at least where there's some buildings and signs, they should be able to get to it. Three times multiplier, else even else can be just six points separating Marta and Kodiak. We Let's got bollards here. Kilometer indicator. Shout outs to Gio Peter. We got some bollards. Okay, what do we got here? Keto. Okay. Yeah, so this one should indeed be in Ecuador. And I wonder if uh, Marta found any of those places. Wow. It's a crossing. <gasps> Is it a 5K no shot. lined up? No shot. <gasps> it lines up. Just have it. He's right it on lines point. Up. What a Perfect 5K. On point. 56, 56 meters. Solid, solid, solid 5K for Kodiak. And he's vibing it. He's enjoying it. He appreciates it. We saw him yesterday a little quickly, I think. Get the, like the, let the temper run away with him. He got frustrated in situations. Some of it obviously out of his control. But good to see him now in a good mood, trying to get the game going, trying to get it going his way. I'm really liking Liking Kodiak's mindset a lot more for today. Sure. That's for looking sure. good. That's boding well for the whole series. Next one here. Are we potentially in Marta's home country? I can't actually be certain Could based be. on the first frame here, but it definitely looks like that part of the world, Mediterranean Europe. So let's find out if Marta can make something happen. As we've said, Kodiak is partially of German descent, has spent quite a bit of time in... It, oh, German and Italian descent has spent quite a bit of time in Italy. Is this Italy though? Does he speak Italian? Oh, it's not Italy. We have we have Spanish style signs. Feels bad for that building that just collapsed as we move one frame forward. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the, oh, the passage of time. <laughs> Destruction <laughs> in between Google recordings. <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, behind uh, like, it's so cool on Google Street View. There's always a story behind True. exactly you know if what happened the chat between for the, the frames. owners of that house there. Yeah. Well, sure. uh, okay, so yeah, definitely Spain here by, based on the sign. But where do the players want to go? Um, Despite the limited info they have to go off of, the info that they do okay, have okay, is we have quite a bit pretty here. good. Yeah, Hasta exactly. la man, man, mancha, I think that's something. Yeah, he's looking, he's trying to remember exactly what that would be. Um, also interesting that Kodiak is actually staying in among the smaller streets where, again, usually you have limited info to go off of. We have Mata out on the bigger streets, but he's just not finding what he wants to see. Yeah, 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 it's interesting. But Kodiak did get some inf interesting information there. I think it's decent. And... Yeah, okay, Marta, yeah. So Kodiak was c considering switching closer. The multis are fairly big. It's 1.3k damage there. With the quality of these two moving players, that is bigger than it seems, because Definitely. I would expect this one to potentially go to 10 rounds. Easily could do, easily could go a thousand points separating them right now as we head into route number seven. Okay, so we have this double concrete road that's very indicative, though not 100% the case, that we would be in Philippines. And Philippines is a place with lots of signs that have these small place names, which the both players have remembered. So let's find out if they both remember the exact place names here, the 70 provinces inside um, 
Philippines, and they're probably going to go and straight and find one of these. Yep, out on the big street, mana goes. Plenty of stores, plenty of info to be gathered. But what info is the useful one, and which one is just showing sales of ice cream? You know, often shop fronts in the Philippines are the most useful, and yeah, that's what we're looking at here. Although, maybe he hasn't found what he wanted yet. Ooh. Okay, it's plenty of time still. Even 15 seconds can be enough to find one of these. And, okay, does he find one here? Okay, uh, yeah, Kagayan. Right Kagayan is, uh, yeah, he found it. Does and he go for the fight? Yeah, he has the time. I mean, 10 more seconds. He does. Might as well try and see if, if you can line it up here. Yeah, if the opponent's locked, why not? And he finds a relatively, ooh, that looks pretty. Oh, no way. <laughs> is it in? Okay. Is it in? No. Yeah, that looked good, but unfortunately, not the 5K. Still enough to do 12 points. A little uh, a little chip of the shoulder there towards Mata as we head on into round number eight. These multipliers are stacking up, so let's see where this next one's going to take us. And, you know, it's always exciting to see a big country once you cross that round seven, round eight mm -hmm. border. Here we have the United States of America. We have these pines indicative of the South, though not always there. Let's find out what exactly is going to go down here. And just to be sure in the start of this round, when we see Kodiak twice now look down into the ground, to the arrow on the ground, yeah. lining up the 5k, is that him lining it up with the compass on the left-hand yeah. side? Looking, That's what I thought. Yeah. Looking down at the road and then pointing the compass north gives you the exact road angle because you can visualize it much more easily on the map. Get your notebook out, chat. Make sure Ooh, to write Texas. these things down because <gasps> they can help you in your game. Texas indicator early on, street locator maybe as well. Yep, 105. It could be a, it could be a, Texas is a huge, a huge place. It's bigger than most countries. So it could be worthwhile to actually work out where the 105 is here. Does he get more info here? It's the second street. Like oh. if, if it's the second street, the rubbish truck. Get out of my way. Get out of my way, garbage <laughs> truck. We need the info. I here. hate when that happens. <laughs> okay. What do we have to hear, Toby? Oh, I, I definitely like the Eastern Texas. That's where you find more mm -hmm. of the pine mm -hmm. trees, more of the green scenery as well. See, oh, what's he that? might actually have it on board. He's got it. Mata has not found it, I don't think. No, he hasn't. He's up near Tyler. It's further away. It's 4.5x, 5,000 uh, 5, health. Might be on the 5K. But it might actually be on point. Let's see. Two seconds left to play. Is he going to get it? He repositions oh, a bit, but no. Man. A bit further off to the west, but still. A decent amount of damage coming he from needed 400 that. At that. He needed it definitely, as you say, with just one or two rounds left to play. He wants to be as even, if not preferably, ahead of Mata coming into round 10. We have a fascinating round number nine here. As we load in, we are seeing definite signs of Indonesia, not least the flag, That's a in, flag yeah, yeah flags. over there uh, ahead, ahead of us. Um, Kodiak, widely known to be a top three Indonesia player in the world. Mada, you know, someone who can use info very well. And Indonesia is another one of these countries where you do see a lot of information, a lot of small place names, which both players have learned by by heart. Is there a bike meta? Like there's a car meta? Because that guy's clearly on a scooter. Uh, the, 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 uh, the bikes and tracks can be very useful in Philippines, not so much in Indonesia. Okay, do they find the Kabupaten? That's the name of the regencies, the tiny provinces all around Indonesia. I feel like Kodiak probably already knows where it is. He's just trying to narrow it down. Yep. Mata probably desperately searching for that place name. But again, for Kodiak as well, I mean, we've seen him very early on. Guess once he gets the region down, just go for the quick pick. Doesn't want to go for the 5k here. He's taking more time to find it or maybe perfectly narrow down what could give him maybe an extra 20 to 100 points. But if that's time allowed for Mata to then lock in the region all of a sudden, yes, you get 10 more points, but you're not necessarily getting Getting, uh, oh, you're, you're, you're giving your opponents a chance to get it too. I, I could be mistaken, but I think Marta just found a sign that said Riau on it. That is one of the bigger provinces, but did this look like Riau to me? I'm not so sure. So seconds. It, it, it may have been lying. Maybe I misread it, um, but I don't think any player found the exact info. Cody has to, to go the for the region off. guest here. Okay, he is in Riau. That's good. He's got the right vibe, assuming that was correct. But Marta. Oh, he's a bit unlucky there. He found the better info, but he's not that much closer. Down towards the coast, we go 1,200 damage again. Kodiak had just kind of gotten close to Mata, and once again, he punches back down under 3,000 health. Now, as we take it in to round number 10, the final one, the decider of the moving round. Can I tell you something, Toby? Tell me, bro. I've driven this exact road. This exact road past this exact sign. Okay, 5k for me right now. Boom. Uh, there's no mini map. This is on Kangaroo Island in the west. What I'm hearing Flinders is case. excuses. Let's uh. get this game going. <laughs> okay, but what I'm saying is we have immediate info. This is probably bad for Kodiak. Let's find out Let's if Marta chokes. Let's see. He's ahead. Again, in this situation, when there's over 2,000 points, or 1,500, sorry, points separating oh, oh, them. Oh, he knows. He, got he knows. Because he instantly swims in. Does he Does have he it? Oh. Oh, Flinders. Oh, no. He thinks he thinks it's Flinders National Park, but it's Flinders Chase National Park. Oh, That's a disaster. You the but you never know. So you never know what Mata knows or what he doesn't. He's going Western Australia. He's this is a disaster. West. It's in South Australia. It's in this the South. This is game. South. This 
is this game? It is definitely gonna be game, but who's oh! gonna come out victorious? Cody and all fire bin, but oh out victorious regardless. 9,999 to give him the win in the first round. Oh my gosh, this is not the first time that Kodiak has gone the wrong national park in South Australia and won. And he does it again. What a ridiculous ending there. I feel like there's a phone call oh. coming. Your, your, your pocket is gonna be busting real soon. Got a stick. It's like, you, you need to get me, you need to get me those national parks for more time, because this is getting too scary. That was fascinating. Both players moving players and Kodiak insta locks, despite the fact that there was lots of info nearby. But again, I mean it's <sighs> it's a situation where yes, he insta locks, yes, he's off, but he also this like mega narrows down the time that Mata now has to find the info, right? Absolutely. So he didn't get it, he went further west, and even though he's off by not a bit, but quite a quite a bit, Mata even further away, Kodiak gets the win. He dares, he goes early, sometimes it costs. But this time around, he came up victorious because of it. And let me say one more thing about that round. Marta's guess makes a lot of sense because the dirt was very brown. But Kangaroo Island, the big island in South Australia, has weirdly brown soil that's reminiscent of where Marta guessed and not of where Kodiak guessed. Kodiak used kind of the name of the explorer, Flinders, mm -hmm. who explored South Australia to get it. Whereas uh, Marta used the soil and didn't come out on top. Fascinating round there. Absolutely amazing. We are being blessed with amazing geoguesses. So why not just head straight on in to the no move round with round number one. Oh my goodness, I'm hoping that Marta can clutch up. You could say he played better in the first one here, but now it's no moving. Anything can happen. Let's get straight into the round. Let's start this one. Let's let them get into it. You can see them getting ready, set up there, looking at their monitors. What do we have to work oh. with? Okay, so we have the Google Clock here. On the ground? I, yeah, the 306 actually could be a mile marker, you know, indicating we are 300 kilometers away from somewhere. Not entirely sure how that works in... Uh, we usually what? are. 306 kilometers away from somewhere. Oh, well, you know what? You may be cooking there, Toby. Uh, <laughs> if you think Toby's cooking, let me know in the chat. But uh, <laughs> next, uh, I mean, uh, we do see mountains there to our south. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, something to line up with, maybe. Kodiak feels like he's on the right road. Neither Ooh. of them were, but close to one another. We were so literally looking there. into Honduras there. Yeah. Those mountains were in Honduras. Oh, beautiful. Fascinating round. Beautiful. Not going to be any points, though. Let's let, them, let's let them get that, get that one over with as fast as can be and move straight on into round number two. Yeah, I'm saying that one was pretty insignificant. Let's go straight in here. 1.5 times damage from second round. The game can end, although this Definitely. looks like Europe. We've seen it before. We saw it in the very first game of the group stages, actually, that I believe it was Finba. Now we've talked so much praise of him being so good at Russia, Finba this, Finba that, but he did also lose a round in round two of movie. Yeah, 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 that's so, true, uh, that's true. We'll praise you, we'll praise you mainly though, Finn, by your great Yeah, guy. yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so a pretty clear Finland here based on the street sign being white and having kind of the Finnish design, if you know, you know, um, and uh, both players are going to be close here, I imagine. Well, it's pretty pretty fun off there, actually. Yeah. Marta makes the better vibe guess. Again, a bit disappointed, though, that he's not able to convert a little bit more. Yep. Uh, but very reasonable there, indeed. Reasonable, indeed. Let's head on into round three. Let's let those multipliers stack up and get this one going. Absolutely. This one would have been a really fun round NMPZ. I, I dare say there's going to be some information as they turn around. Um, but it looks like Mexico to me, so let's find out. Ooh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we have an American truck there. Is that excavator meta? E excavator meta, it could be. I mean, if you knew your stuff about different heavy machinery, it yeah. probably yeah. could. Yeah. It's like people who like build bridges. It's like, well, they don't, you know, they don't use that style of bridge. In, <laughs> exactly. in this That's not the contractor <laughs> for the guy, exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll see. They haven't zoomed in on it yet now, Kodiak, obviously, with limited other info to go by. We'll I have an interesting call about. here. With that fancy American truck, could we be closer to the US border here? It might be a reason. There's a bit more wealth in North Mexico, could be the case. Um, it's fairly generic here, though, so could definitely see all the way down to yeah. the capital. Um, Mana looking further towards the south of Mexico as uh, Kodiak looks. Guadalajara. Join him somewhat okay. center here as well. Just, I mean, exactly on each other on the horizontal right. line, but vertical. Uh, oh, sorry, vertical line, but horizontal. A couple hundred points off, uh, off yeah. of here, I would say. Yeah, yep, yep. Not too much going to happen here. Oh, it was Guadalajara. He actually was there, Kodiak. He was on point. But again, chipping back a little bit, wants to keep them close, and with this damage, he does. I mean, to be fair, um, it was a good guess by Marta as well, so nothing too insane, but... Nothing too insane. Definitely an interesting round. 2.5 times multiplier as we head on into round number four in... Well, I would say it's Mexico. The single yellow line is very indicative of Mexico a lot of the time, and it kind of looks like the US where they don't do that. So Same. I'm interested to see. They haven't looked around, so there could still be other options once they see the Google car. Let's find out. 
Very barren landscape, that's for sure. We're out in the wilderness. Ooh, big cacti. Open roads. Yeah. I just want to start, kind of zoom out as the car drives off in the <laughs> distance, and that's when we end the movie, you know? That would be that's, so that's, cool. That's the territory we're currently in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, big cacti are very indicative of the northwest of Mexico. So, if you're playing at home, definitely keep an eye out for that when you see that in the US slash Mexico. You know, Baja, California, Sonora, and then Arizona and California as well. Heading um, up the road. Yeah, so Baja California can be a, a place where you often see 5Ks because there are relatively few roads available. Uh, oh, but look at that. Marta's a long way away. I may yep. actually enjoy Marta's guest more here. 2.5 times multiplier. Ooh, okay. And fortunately, I guess for both of them, it's yep. in between and not favoring one over the other. 300 damage again. These guys, even when they're off, they're still at the same distance. So we're keeping it close as we move in to round number five. 100%. The multis are running up. Things get exciting. Marta in the lead, but only slightly as we head through to the next round here. Ooh, a desolate one. I love rural rounds. They make for some of the most interesting rounds and some of the most high damage. Triple damage. I feel like Street View has done this location dirty by recording it when they did. I feel like in the summertime, <laughs> all this will be flush, like green, perfect, yeah. with flowers and, and uh, crops all over. Beautiful, very cinematic Ooh. landscape. Now it's more like a lunar landing. Ooh, okay, so Kodiak just saw something interesting. The, the shape of the cobbler... Um, yeah, it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't know too much about it, but the, the shape of the it. car blur here is more Canadian, where they have the double jut on the uh, blur. So I think both players have picked that up. It kind of looked like US to me at first. Um, and I like the region guess from both. We shouldn't see GG unless one player 5Ks. Yeah, they're going to be close to one another. Yeah, it's relatively close. Three actually. times multiplier as well Ooh, yeah. coming in Ooh, as they are. Yeah. Once again, I mean, on each <laughs> their side of the mark. They're just right next to one another all the time. They share the location in between them as we head on in to round number six. Jalotras called it. They're very evenly matched they, players. I mean, as, even There's as been be. barely anything between them in these duels so far. And uh, we're looking at some Europe here, so we shouldn't see the end of the duel unless one player makes a big mistake. Um, yeah, like this, this shouldn't be too much, I think. Both players, uh, I would imagine, get the country. Let's see, there's a single car in the distance, the backside of a semi truck. You've got a sign up there with a bit of a water crossing, a creek going underneath the roadside. Yeah. But other than that, it's foliage, it's open fields. What are you, uh, what are you judging this by? Is it the road signs or the, the the lines in the middle? Yeah. So there's a couple of things here. We got the single white line. Different. European countries have different road marking conventions. Mm -hmm. This one's typical of some countries and not others, of course. It's pretty generic. Uh, but then I'm just looking at the landscape, super flat. I'm looking at the kind of season of the coverage. Um, also kind of being like maybe late summer or something. Not too sure about that. Oh, there's distance on this one. And Kodiak I did not on think. point. 3.5x damage. Is it enough? Oh, yes, enough. it is. Kodiak. Kodiak goes through. He takes out Mada in phenomenal fashion. Cold as can be. And Mada who played a phenomenal games yesterday, taken out by Kodiak. I'm astounded by that one. I, I definitely thought Serbia should be gettable by both players. Marta under the pressure, not able to get there. Huge game, huge Fast game. And for Kodiak as well, again, in a point yesterday where frustration, for, to some extent, got the better of him. Able to right from the start here, keep his composure. As you said too, during the game, he has exact he was a whole different guy today. Very calm, very collected, and he brought it home. Absolutely, and Kodiak actually suffering from a little bit of an illness this morning. I was very impressed with the way he kept his mental. Oh yeah. Even coming from behind in the first game. And you know, a bit of a lucky win in the first one. The second one, making a super guess to close it out. You know, it was just those very difficult rounds that separated these two players. Everything else was neck and neck. Plenty to break down here, but we'll leave that up to the desk as we head on back and hear from Kodiak after that win. Another impressive match, another win. Kodiak 2-0 this time, moving through it pretty quickly. And both rounds so closely matched until you managed to pull away for the win both times. So tell me what it was like when you see yourselves again, again, so close, so close like that. Yeah, I feel like in the moving, I played pretty well. Um, except the last round, I was just like, I insta said I reached Flinders. I know it was wrong when I turned around. I did. I think I played in MPZ in that round even. <laughs> uh, but I was like, yeah, I mean, the uh, time pressure, I think, will get to him. So I just thought I'd try something. Um, yeah, so that worked out. And the rest, I was so calm and collected today. Like, I was like, yeah, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I didn't really have any pressure um, because I am a bit sick right now. I didn't feel so well tonight. Um, and yeah, now I have like a light cold and some fever. 
so I was telling to myself, yeah, okay, um, I, I play how I can play. Maybe it, uh, yeah, it's a bit disadvantageous to be sick, but yeah, it worked out. So, <laughs> wow, even more impressive than to rally over a sickness. But like we heard from Tapadic, being calm, not putting that pressure on yourself, has really served our players well today. Uh, I know we have a couple questions from Jalotris, perhaps. You all set? Yeah, uh, especially on the deciding last round, uh, did you consider any other country where you no. certain? That's why I was surprised that it was over already. Um, mm -hmm. Because I just thought NMPZ has won and I thought it was Serbia. Then I looked around no antenna, I thought Serbia. Then I saw we had like the reflector on the side of the bridge was also like Serbian. So I was a bit surprised that I won on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, under the pressure, I saw uh, Mada was super nervous uh, today. So I guess that helped me um, because I was super calm. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, being um, like putting pressure on yourself uh, is like a disadvantage here so yeah worked out for me <laughs> yeah i have to say despite the sickness you seem like really have a good mentality and you were playing really well i think the games were i think honestly pretty close going through a lot of them until the multipliers came in uh you think you're happy with how you've been playing and looking forward to the rest of the matches so far yeah um also don't get me wrong i think Bada played incredible as well uh, i didn't want to like it just guess him now the last guess i didn't want to guess him there um but yeah like i for myself i'm happy with my performance uh, from now on everything can happen uh, playing against katsu will be also very interesting match. I uh, haven't played too much against him, but uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to play and uh, see where it leads me. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, last note on that, a little bit of an unexpected, you know, matchup in the brackets before that. You're going up against Kraut, so a different preparation for you, a, a relief, I suppose? I don't think, yeah, I wouldn't prepare anyway. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I like Kratu as a guy. He's like incredibly funny. Um, so I, I can't wait to play against him, see his reactions when he makes a good guess, a bad guess, uh, or something happens. Um, but yeah, like whatever happens, happens. I, I don't mind how the result will be now. So <laughs> I'm happy already. Well, that'll be a treat for us to watch as well. Thanks so much for coming on to share your insights into this matchup. Congratulations on the win. Taking a look now at our bracket with all our four quarterfinals decided. Pretty impressive how it's all coming together. I hope you're all set to watch us the distance today because our players are playing it out for you. Stick around, we'll be right back after this break with more GeoGuessr.
You're watching the GeoGuessr World Cup Europe, Middle East, and Africa Regional Finals. We started out with 16 players on Friday and carefully whittled it down until we have just 10 by the end of today that are moving on to the World Cup and just one that'll be hoisting our trophy and taking home $5,000. We've had a bit of a mix up in the brackets, a lot of unexpected matches and a lot of great players coming through against the odds. But taking us through the action and breaking down the games, I am lucky to be joined by ZigZag and by Chicago Geographer. Now, both of you have had some adventures around the studio, uh, doing some casting, hanging out with the players. Anything you can tell me about the current vibes in the building right now? I mean, everyone's kind of in shock. There's a lot of disappointed players sitting there, players who thought they'd make it further, understandably so. I mean, like, look, it's it's been a crazy morning of GeoGuessr where every single group leader, every single one who went undefeated has been defeated. And we go, th we go through with a wide open bracket with tons of players who, you know, all of a sudden believe that they can actually win. Absolutely. And CG, looking at this bracket, when we talk about one unexpected player making it through, they're excited to be there. They've got some monsters ahead of them still. When you've got this much of a mixed up bracket, is there relief or is there fear that they maybe didn't know these quantities as well as they thought they did coming into this? Yeah, you know, that's a really good point that you make. Like now that the bracket is all shaken up like this, yeah, you could be getting some mixed emotions, both the excitement and then, as you said, the fear of not really knowing what to expect now that they're facing uh, these opponents maybe they didn't think would make it through as well. So yeah, everything is wide open here. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this breaks down going forward. Now, one more question I have. When you have somebody like, you know, Blinky or, or Consus, all that knowledge they represent sitting around, nothing to spend it on right now. Are they perhaps picking friends, pulling them aside, sharing some meta, sharing some tips that they were holding on to for themselves? Have you gotten any sense of that? Yeah, I think probably what's going on upstairs is they're they're talking to each other up there, like explaining what went wrong for them and maybe like what they're gonna be grinding for, for next time, I would say so. Fantastic, well, I can't wait to see these players as we move on in the bracket. We've got a banger coming up to Podic and Finbar. Let's check in with them. To win this tournament, it would mean everything for me. I've been playing this game for almost seven years, so it, it would be just a demonstration that like, my hard work has paid off. I think if I won, I would be like huge for me. It's nice to be here, but to win would be just amazing. The uh, World Cup is the main goal, but obviously winning this would be <laughs> crazy as well. Best of luck to our opponent. Let the better man win. Hoping it's a great game. Lock in. Another interesting comparison between these two players. Finbar clearly has his eyes set on the World Cup, but when we talked to Topodic, he got up here on the desk, he said, I've done it. I've, I've done what I needed to do. I've achieved so much. Obviously, he's still working hard for what's ahead. But when you're a player who has already done it, who has already qualified for the World Cup, do you feel like that mentality changes a little bit, your ability to perform the rest of the event? Yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting point for sure. Yeah, once you have this secured spot to go to the World Cup, when you're in this bracket, maybe it's just all the cherry on top, the extra icing. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how these players, you know, really uh, narrow in on their competitiveness, but I'm sure that they're both going to fight their hardest no matter what. Absolutely. Tapotic coming in after a win over Kansas. So we have to expect he's feeling really good about that, very bolstered. Has he given you any indication on anything else he's feeling, Zigzag? Uh, well, last night I talked to him, he's feeling really good about the position he's gotten himself into and then to beat Consus, I can imagine. I can only imagine that it's a lot better since then. I think one thing I highlight about this matchup is that Topotic has had a stronger tournament so far, without a doubt. Like, he's made less mistakes. But then again, when I look at Finbar, I see a play with more of an X factor. Obviously, the Russia, you know, probably accounting for, you know, upwards of 5% of locations. And whenever that comes up, it's immediately like, he might know the road, he might know the exact region where the other player might be in excess of 5,000 kilometers away. It's impressive what these players are able to pull out here, even more so on the eSports stage. Let's welcome now the killer of the reigning champ. Bring him on out, it's Topotic. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined this afternoon by Topotic. Topotic, all I want to know right now is what is your reaction to having beaten Consus? 
yeah, it was just like ecstasy to be honest. Like I couldn't like feel anything else at that point. I never expected to even like beat here today because I haven't practiced that much. But beating consoles is just means everything for me. And 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 would you say that this is kind of the culmination of a long GeoGuessr career right now? Uh, yes, indeed, because I've been playing for so long since like there was like even no tournaments online, and now we see such big stakes here in person in Stockholm and the World Cup being such a success. So yeah, it's a combination. 100%. It's a crazy progression that this sport is taking. But to body, good luck and take your seat. Well, guys, I am joined by Finbar here. Welcome back to the stage. It's fantastic to have you here. Finn, what is your reaction to the bracket being busted wide open like this? Uh, yeah, I mean, most of the uh, wins people are quite surprised at. I am myself. I mean, obviously, Contus and Blinky losing is a big shock as they were the top two in the last one. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the like, sort of underdogs perform. And my next question is, what do you think about Tapotic as an opponent? How are you feeling going into this best of five? He's a very strong player. Uh, I think he's probably the favorite between us two, but I think I might be able to win, so. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> the case. All right, Finbar, thank you very much for the interview and take your seat. Two strong players writing their stories this weekend with some unexpected twists and turns. Can't wait to see which among them will make it all the way to the finals. Their next matchup, of course. Now looking at Tapotic, we've already seen such impressive gameplay. Taking a look at the stats now that's resulted in. Are they the standout stats that you would have expected? I feel like they don't tell the whole story here with that 52% win ratio, CG. Yeah, definitely not. You know, that's not the highest that we've seen among these players here today, but considering how consistent Tapotic has been and of course defeating Consus, we know that he's played well. Uh, the rounds one ratio there doesn't exactly speak for his, his true skills, and I'm really happy to see him at this point in the tournament. And consider the fact that he knocked out Consus in one fell swoop there. Yes. It, it is often the case that in these games, it's, it's a matter of making that one good guess rather than a lot of good smaller guesses. And looking at the, the strengths of Finbar now as well, roughly the same, I think a great matchup here. So when I'm thinking about how we have to stack these players up against each other as far as making predictions, I'm thinking regions and strengths that they've both got. So where does Finbar stand out for you? Well, if we're not going to talk about Russia, which would obviously be the main thing to talk about, then I think Finn has gone and learned a lot of information. For example, he's been learning his Kapupaten in Indonesia, and then a bunch of different area codes and did I not? Did he not? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I think I think I was capping there. Remember, live uh, fact check. <laughs> I got the death there. <laughs> but uh, okay, well, you know, he has been learning quite a bit of info and the different re region codes. I know when I'm when I'm sitting up there watching games with him, he's like, well, that's that area code, and you know, like, you know, I I would expect that there's definitely certain countries which he's hoping for and not others. I think some of our players too are realizing that they know things that they didn't think they know because a lot have listed regions as things that they're weak in and performed exceptionally in them. So if I know one thing to be true, it's that both these players are ready to give us their best and we're ready to hand you over to our best, Paula and Rainbolt. Thank you so much, Rachel. We've got a huge one here. Everybody at home, it's our first semi Final, we've got the Irishman Finbar going up against the Spanish of Tapotic. It's going to be absolutely insane. Are Tapotic's optics going to be on point, or is the nice. finish going to go the way of the bar? That was good. That was good. And you know, that's a good question, too, Paula. Spain versus Ireland here. It honestly comes down to a couple of rounds here. I feel like a lot of the game of Jugesser is you know, you kind of only have to be the best for a couple of games. But being the best for a couple games is a big ask for any player, even the very best of the best, even for two of the top four in the EMEA region. So I do not know which way this one is going to swing. I go. don't have a favorite. It could go either way. This it, is as competitive as it gets. It can and it will go either way. We're going to see. And this is, Paul, this is the first to best of five. And best of five means uh, it's a you know, the game of averages. Yep, the good better point. player will win. Everybody at home, just as Trevor mentioned, uh, we are now in best of five territory. So move, no move, move, no move. And if we get to a fifth, Trevor. In MPZ. But, of course, it's time to kick things off. 
at the beginning with the move. We've got Topodic versus Finbar. This is our first semi-final. And this is where things get exciting. You know, we've seen game after game. Ignore that at the top, guys. This is a semi-final, not a quarter. Just want to make sure we point that out. Um, but Trevor, when you are ready, to let's do it. Let's Pod kick it off. Versus Finbar. Game one, best of five. Moving. Where are we? You may ask. Looks like Slovakia or Czechia. Oh, the classic. Let's see if we see red car. Is a red car. There is. Red car meta is real, real meta for Slovakia. Cope. Finn sees it straight away. The shadow, the ethereal red car underneath and shoots off down the road. This is going to be an insane, an insane couple games here. We have Paula, some of the best moving players, no move players. And honestly, what I'm looking for here, looking for is for Finn to get a Russia. We, we saw him get that random dirt road in Russia yesterday or two days ago. I forget when, but it was quite the guess. You know, memorizing most roads in Russia is not the feat, but not not the hardest thing to do if you're Finn Bar. Topodic there was stopping on a poster. It looked like some sort of music concert. Topodic finding info first. Perhaps gave him an inclination of where he is at. This would be, you know, it is game one, or it is round one, which is the first round without multis, and the only round without multis. And we'll see that Topodic has an advantage on info here, but not the case for Finbar. We'll see who gets a better guess here. It will be Topodic. Topodic. He gets closer. It's a very close round one. However, they kick things off. It won't be much in round two. Also, not be much. Around 1.5x damage. You know, when you get when you get places like this, it's not going to be as very many points because people region guess very well, especially in smaller countries. We have 50 seconds left on the clock. Both players are going to be looking for information here to see where they can get as much as they can. Because you know, what we see in these. You know, 10 rounds. When you when you have a 10 round limit, every single round, every single point does add up. Every point counts. If we swing off the pendulum, adds weight, more weight to one end. Then zooming in first, Apotic obviously knows where we are, but it's less, it's more of, yeah, you could pick up maybe a couple hundred points here, but that's the max you can probably do. That's Max. And we'll see both players getting close to each other here and to get minimal points and almost on the same road, just across from each other. Clock winds down as Trevor guessed. Both players would end up very close to each other. Nonetheless, it is a winning round for Finbar just about. You know, we wise remain man, very close. A wise man once said, those trees look Polish. And Trevor, what do we have on screen right now? Polish trees. Polish trees. I think. We'll see. With double damage, can either player capitalize on what we think are some Polish trees? Topodic finding a sign there. Finbar as well, a different one, however. That shoots Topodic off down the road. Finbar as well, going in different directions here. We can see Finn using this fast move technique going east where you can hold the space bar guess down and when we do see Polish there by Topolik. You know, region guessing Poland is not the easiest thing, but we do see Topolik go north here. You know, there is a couple of clues you can use with the language, language and things like that, but this will be interesting. I oh, think we have those stripe poles there. That's actually interesting. I think the sign that Topolik got turned on a light bulb in his head because he's had two deep zooms after that, looking for a third now. Yeah, when you zoom in that quickly and that close to the map, you have to be confident in what you're seeing. Absolutely, Trevor. And, you know, these green signs that Finn's looking at here is not going to be very much info. This can be a small village that you're never going to be able to find on the map with five seconds left. Five seconds left. How much distance do we have between our two players? Not too much in the marker. Slightly closer to Topodic, but still in between. Nonetheless, a winning round now for Topodic. We're going to be moving into round number four now, ladies and gentlemen, everyone at home. That is the Putnam King. It's not. <laughs> I always like to make a little flag joke, you know. It's a yeah. Little... I mean, lots of flags, of course, similar, flipped around, upside down. Indonesia. Indo. Both players are going to be looking for information, seeing if they can read anything there that gives them. And you that's can see... strong information on uh, I, that post. You have there. to zoom. You have to. Am... And he's locked in. The product is Both locked physically in. Physically and mentally. 
Apparently, Finbar didn't get as much information. He did, but maybe, you know, sometimes you get the same information, but that information but he wants means more. something to someone, and they're both there. Yeah, they're both there. <laughs> Further south for Finbar, and it's to Potic that's closer with a 2.5x. That will that will be the biggest hit yet. Slow and steady. Round 10, or round 5. Slow and steady, but the, that pace is building, Trevor. It's round 5 now. Location. Actual crazy road here. Let's see. You know, Europe, obviously. Spain, Italy. Probably Italy. Let's see. Pole looks more Italian. Yep, should be Italy here. 55 seconds left. Both players going the same direction, which is west. We have some rock walls here. Where do you go in Italy? Is a question. Yeah, you know, Italy is you can get big points in Italy. Big points means the world. You only have six K to your name. And you see Finbar approaching the sign first, but that's gonna be awesome. Let's see him mouthing. Does that mean does does he know where that is? And he's going into Sicily. And we see a Sardinia zoom in here by Topotic. With a three X. We might see a swing here, Trevor. We have 15 seconds left and both players are in separate regions of Italy. Completely separate regions. And they're flies. staying. Both players are staying. Is he going to move to Bari? He moves to Bari. Is he moving to Sardinia? He's staying there. He's water hedging. He's going to Bari. Sardinia, ba Bari. Who is it? Sardinia. Oh, Topodic. You've done it. Triple damage. That's going to be a big one. 4,300. Not quite game, but Finbar now on death's door. Can he do it here? You know, Cambodia, small country, but nothing you can't pick up 600 points in, especially on 3.5x damage. This is a good good sign for Depok where he just needs to hedge away sl slightly here, but Finn needs big countries to pick get big points here and make one good guess. Not the case here. You go non pin, you go north, where do you go? Right now, Tapodic is zooming. Looking for more and more information. It's pretty urban. You pick one of the two cities. Here That's we go, you some road signs. And perhaps help direct to Potic. Both players here obviously know it's Cambodia. But what you're doing here is you're going for as many points as you can. And with 3.5x multi, even if Topotic is to win this round by a small margin, it could be game. Could be if you send different cities. We see a non pin north and east and non pin. We see Finn. I maybe like Finn's guess better here, but we'll see if it's the pike or Finn. It's neither. Could that be enough? That's gonna be it. Wait. Topodic's done it. Trevor, we mentioned it at that point where Finbar is so far behind, even the smallest of margins with those multis, they add up. And Topodic is 1 0 up thanks to it. What a game and what, I mean, I mean, Topotic. What a performance there. I mean, you have to give it to him. It's not making, I mean, he is playing great today. Our first no move of our first best of five. Trevor, whenever you're ready. I'm always ready. I am always ready. Question is, are the players and what we have as the first beautiful location of the day? Would you give either of our players the advantage here in no move, Trevor? You know, South Korea, you maybe just click center. Both players. No information, no signs here. Bad, readable. Do your region guess. And Finn says, I'll try and reach you guys southwest. You know, South Korea, notoriously, maybe not the easiest unless you spend a lot of time practicing, but usually when you have smaller countries, not the best use case for time if you're trying to play. And both players walking in, and Spock's slightly closer there. Minimal points on context though for no move this is a 360 panorama you get and again what a beautiful location this is gonna be iceland here we have the yellow bollards here long antenna and beautiful mountains you know when you're in iceland it's pretty standard that you see both players going for a 5k when you have such coasts and bodies of water that in different landforms that you can line up you can easily scan the map to find a road that makes sense for you. And that's what both players will spend all 60 seconds doing. Both players picked up on the same sign at roughly the same time. Finbar now looking down at the road, trying to line things up, zooming out of his initial choice, going more east. 
Yep, and you can see both players again. This is just a game of scanning. Looking for as much information as you possibly can. 20 seconds left. I'm not sure what player has the advantage here. Both are probably equally skilled at no move scanning. Under 10 seconds left now in round number two of no move to Podic to lock in first. They are on other sides of Iceland, but the marker itself is on the completely other side. And with a 1.5x multi, it's a solid hit from Finbar to Topotic. And we bring it back to another Italy here. Yeah, reason guessing Urban Italy can be fun. We also have trash cans here that could bring out some reason guessing or even the city. Usually on trash cans. Yeah, What's that expression? One man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, trash in GeoGuessr is treasure for pretty much all players because these trash cans have a lot of information on them, Trevor. Isn't that right? Shout out to the trash. Shout out to trash. That's a rare shout out, but it's one that we absolutely stand by here Fact. in GeoGuessr. Facts. All trash is good trash. Absolutely. Already now, approaching 30 seconds. Finbar. They're scanning. Scanning over Italy. You know, usually urban is kind of more difficult to reason guess. You know, you could have some architectural clues, but also sometimes using landscape and things like that maybe is better for players. And we do see Finbar, you know, scanning up here near Milan, seeing what he makes sense. We only have 10 seconds left, and Topak has yet to open his, his map yet. He, he once goes. again looks at the trash, looks at the bins. Five seconds. Don't think we will see either player lock it. No, Topak does do it in the last couple of seconds. But they're close, both players, but Topak. Podic again, closer. Both close, but to Podic again, closer, Trevor. That's the name of the game. How long can you stay closer? In the backseat of my rover. The backseat. <laughs> it is a game where if you stay closer for longer, you end up winning. This one is fun. Both players should get grease here. Looking into the horizon. Potentially... Other islands, coastline. Finbar going straight in. Strong zoom there. Doesn't settle though. He's just placed Skating. his marker. Skating. I mean, he's just outside, outside Athens. And we have a Croatia Quite a difference guess. here. Quite a difference here. Well, he commits to. Is he going Croatia here? Oh, wow. 30 seconds left, Trevor, and there's a big discrepancy between our two players' points. Croatia is an interesting guess here, but you can't hate it because it, you know, it is close to Greece. So even if it. Even if he does stay there, it's not going to be very many points. Will it but not? It's 2.5x, Trevor. It could be if, if Finn is really close. It, you might be right. 10 seconds now. He's going to stay, though. He's staying in Croatia. Locked in by Topodic. Yeah, I mean, Finbar really over here looking at Greek islands. And, and it's right. Finn that's closer. Topodic hates that. Face in the palm, and it's 3.5k damage. It's a huge swing. That's a massive swing. And you know, Finbar's first guess was right outside of Athens. If he stays there, he takes the round four win. But he does not. We moved to round five. And Topodic is visibly frustrated. Mongolia. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Paula, I think you get that black bar on that Mongolia car in Western Mongolia. I will definitely not attempt to correct you if you are wrong. That's up to chat. That's up to our players to show us. Finn going straight in. Podic opening his map a couple of times. On yeah, a road right is... now, perhaps has identified the road. Both players are... And Topodic locks in. They're pretty far away. 3x damage, 10 seconds left. They're pretty far away, and it's Topodic that's closer. Topodic closer, Marcus sort of cuts them in half. Solid damage though, thanks to the multi. You know, we move in. Maybe we keep it going. This is no move, little information. But all information is good information. This, we have a white car here, do you go Peru? Surely, right? Where else do you go? I'm not too sure. Usually when you have a white car like that for the, you know, everyone out there that's trying to get in the game. In South America, the white car can only be Peru. Look Podic's enough. looking at Where's Peru, it? considering which part, which region to go to. Finbar yet to open. And both players will probably get to Peru here. And we do see, we do see Finbar going more south. And, you know, Peru is one of those countries that, it's kind of, you 
can you can easily make a wrong region guess in Peru. So we could see big points, and Tapak can easily lose here. Finbar gets a good guess, and Tapak does not. And the multi's big now, Trevor. It's 3.5. We're in round six. Locked in by Finbar. But, oof, yeah. Finbar does end up closer. And that's a big hit considering Tapodic. His HP before that was probably just twice what it is now. Halved. Under a thousand points on Tapotic. He's back against the wall. Looks like we have a repeat of the like game one moving. Let's see. Repeat as in country, not as in location. Both players. Tapotic shaking his head. I'm not sure what that shake is for. It may be because he can't win here and he can't lose. That's probably how you think about it. You know? It will be hard for Tapak to pick up 4,000 points in Slovakia, but it's very easy for him to lose 900. I think that's a good point to raise, Trevor. A chance here that it could potentially be game, depending on the difference between our players' locations, difference between their markers, and then where the actual location is. They're well, quite close to each other. Oh, moving away further. Potic. Oh, and Tapak stays alive. He's going to inflict some decent damage thanks to the multi. Round 800 points. Hold your horses as we move in to the next round. And this one will be Peru, contrary to the couple rounds ago where both players from Bolivia. They'll both see the white car and then they'll zoom in south and hopefully see that black and white sign there that would indicate that they will be in Peru. And then we have another chance to who can make the best guess here. And we do see Finbart going max north and we do see Tapotic going max north, meaning we might see Around nine. I think it's likely. I think it's likely Trevor to pot it to lock in first. There is a reasonable amount of distance between them, considering we have be. a 4.5x multi. Into the end here. And is that enough? Finn Bar enough. Perhaps has done it. No. No. Halves to Bodic's life once again. However, and we will at least see the penultimate round of this first no move round number nine. To Podic needs Finn Bar to blunder. Will that be the case here? Where are these trees? Are these Italian trees? Let's take a look. Looks like it could be. Could be like a Spain or Portugal too. We'll leave it up to the players here to make that guess for us. One of those countries. Or not reading the sign there. Spain or Portugal, Trevor, is what you're telling me. No, I mean, it's probably Spain or Italy. Spain or Italy. But look, given the fact that you are an extremely vast player as well, Maybe one of these players, or both of our players, go in different directions. Maybe there's a chance here for, for Tapotic, or maybe Finn closes game two out. I can't tell the players don't know the country either. Spain border here. Yep, Spain, Portugal border for Finn Bar. I think it will be Spain. So I think if Tapotic does go Spain, he will lose. 15 seconds, Trevor. Where will Tapotic go? And he is Spanish. And he's going the exact same region, and he needs to be closer here. He needs to be closer, or it could be GG for him. Finbar locks in first. He's oh, and Tapotic is closer. We're going to the final round. And it's solid damage as well. This is, uh, this is insane. Paul, you want to go ahead and set the stakes for us on this round 10 and what it means for this game? Round 10's very special rounds in any competitive GeoGuessr affair. Points are important here. A lead is important. The player in the lead wants to see a smaller country. The player with less points wants to see a bigger country. And Trevor, what do we see on the server? I'll give it one quick span for the everyone in chat to take a look and make their guess before I spoil. But it looks like France? Is it ever a Belgium? I go France. Whoever to potic it needs a blunder by Finbar here. 5.5x multi though. He doesn't. I don't think Tapotic needs a full blunder from Finbar. That's true. He's only 1,300 points down. Like he he can be closer, and you can region guess France presumably wrong, and it's game. Both players will take all 60 seconds here to make sure they have the best guess possible. Let me see. Finbar, a Belgium guess here. And Is he hedging Luxembourg border, or does he really think it's just right there? 30. On the clock. He's going Belgium. 
can see the ladder pull there in the distance, actually, that would indicate either Belgium or France. Topothic with 20 seconds left, yet to open his map, Trevor. I wonder what he's thinking right now. He needs to get... We do see Belgium, and he's region guessing Belgium here for us. 10 seconds, Topothic still yet to open his map. He's he France. finally does it, and he goes France. Is it France? Or is it Belgium? Someone wins. It's either person's game. It's oh, Topothic! Oh, is it enough? It yeah. is, it's gotta be! Surely. Unbelievable! Yeah. And look at that, the fist in the air! Topodic, you go up 2-0! Deep breaths. That was some great calling by you, Trevor. You really helped to sort of mold there that there's, there's a chance um, of confusion, of a, of a wrong pick. And uh, that's what we saw. It allowed it, it allowed to put it to get his foot in the door and then slam it open or slam it closed. Doesn't matter. He slammed the door, Trevor. He slammed the door. <laughs> and he, is he slamming the door of opportunity for Finbar to come back? <laughs> He's two zero up now to put it one win away from the grand finals. We go back into moving. Yay! I'm just kidding. <laughs> we do get a moving game here. Aye, and aye, aye. To take, you know, he did take game one moving. Can you take game? To everybody at home, just to set the the, the, the visual, um, as we, we, we've often done over the cast, you know, sometimes me and Trevor are sitting on our chair, sometimes we're standing. O after that finish, Topodic bouncing back, clutching victory from the draws of deceit, I'm standing on the floor. He is on the floor, I, I can't confirm. It was a knockout blow to Finbar, and I think it's taken a few of my brain cells away as well. Trevor, whenever you're ready, game three, back to move. Run it back, Turbo. Let's keep it going. Keep the pace high. I love it. Yeah, this is gonna be. I mean, best of five. When you get when you get this, it's it's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to see the, <sighs> the maps gameplay at this high level. And thank you to everyone. You know, spending their Sunday afternoon wherever you are in the world, tuning into some freaking maps. Ain't that right, Paula? But this is why the the, the audience uh, and the furore around competitive GeoGuessr has been building. Because when people tune in, they realize, and it's very easy to get. And it's very also easy to see the skill ceiling that these people are operating at. Yes. Yeah, and these players are all the uh, best players, you know, at the highest level gameplay possible. So right now we've got the four best of EMEA left standing. You see some TIE. After this, though, one will be going home. Topodic or Finbar? Topodic is closer to that win. Both players, obviously, in Finland here with so many clues. Steady round one, Finbar closer. Sometimes, like I keep saying, Urban is not the easiest. We move in to round two. That could have been something, but it wasn't. Round two, this is a beautiful location. This is, where'd you go? This looks like a great place to go swimming, I'm not gonna lie. Looks fun. So, this one will be. Peru. We do see, as we see on Finbar's screen there, they, you see those white cinder blocks on the bottom of both players' signs. Those white cinder blocks are found in Peruvian signs. We also switched to Gen 4 coverage here on Topodic's screen. Gen 4 coverage, which means the high camera coverage there is not found in Bolivia, if you want to know the difference between the two. Both players will need to make a good region guess as Finbar has found the road. Now you need to scan. He has more information, and Topolik will find the same road marker here, and it will be off to the races for both players. But Topolik is not able to get there because it keeps getting blurred on him. Oh my God! There, it's actually there. He goes. They kept blurring the, <laughs> the random bollard or the road marker for him. Yep. Both players camera there, standing. working against Topolik. Ten seconds left. Clock potentially gonna wind down all the way here. Oh, and it's a great guess by Topotic. And that's a solid round two score. He brings the game and the momentum back in his favor. 5,000 points away from a 3 0 flawless. What a way to book your ticket to the grand final. Quite literally. And you know, this is an interesting round with the Gen 3 coverage here. We have the snorkel. It's rare that you get Gen 3, Kenya. because it's Gen 4 now. And we do see the Gen 4 coverage there on Finbars where you get that new. And looking for, he's on, he's in the city, so he's looking for addresses on the signs now. 
Nothing there. We do see Tapak just outside Nairobi. They were just in Nairobi there, the scanning. Tapak thinks he knows exactly where he's, they're at. He's got this pump in. He locked that in fast this and hard. And Finbar yet to find information. He's going Western. Oh, now. wow. 2x multi. It this could be big damage. Big if if, if Tapak is right. And he is. And he is. That's got to be a 5k. Give it to us. Oh, no. One point off. 2,000. Wow. Wow. Losing 2,000 points on Kenya in round three is actually three. crazy. 2k points in round three. Do you guess there's a game of ebbs and flows? It's a game of consistency. To probably coming off 2,000 points. And then they give him a Spain? Oh, yeah, yeah. They give the Spaniard a Spain? So show me the car facts. Let's see what we're working with. Where the script writer is at? Where are they at, Trevor? Is it you do? I'm talking to him. Oh, w script writer in chat. W script writer in chat. And was, oh, that's boring. Let's get it trending. Boring. Finbar, Barcelona. It, this trash can said Barcelona. Yeah. And yeah, Barcelona. Okay. Question script is, the body wants to. No, he just sort of chucks it in there. He end, does end up closer. 10. 10 points, the big 10. Keep it up. USA. As we jump in to this location, you'll see Ron's hardware in the distance. Zoom in on the sign. And right here. now, the sign that Topotics Robotics have the hardware. Finbar. This, I just saw a sign that said Kentucky on it. And yeah, Topotic sees the sign that says Kentucky. Finbar did not see the sign that said Kentucky. Topotic, if I'm you, instant send Kentucky. Instant send it. He hit. Finbar has not seen the same sign. He locks it in. It's like he can hear you, Trevor. Finbar. 10 seconds. Maybe Finbar did see it. Th Greensboro. He's going He's going to the wrong. Oh, wow. 3x damage. Surely to put it closer again here. Yes. And he is. How much damage is it going to be? Quick map. It's enough. That's it. Quick map. Everybody, we have our first Blood grand on. finalist. It is Toponic from Spain. This, the S is not silent. Well, the S not silent today, but definitely going to be pain oh for yeah, the Irishman. He's from himself. Let's go. Finbar out. Out of the year at Middle East and Africa regional finals. He will be going to the World Cup. And what a better way to top it off than a handshake. A solid handshake. A solid handshake. We're making progress out here. Topotic just playing with absolute precision, playing with consistency, multiple keys to being at the highest level, the highest flight of competitive GeoGuessr. And he doesn't just make it to the grand final. He wins the best of five in three. Three. And I mean, I mean, he's proven and he's earned that position, you know, and you got to give props for props for due. Shout out to Depotic for being our first player. I think one, one of the cool things about competitive GeoGuessr is that if someone wins in a dominant fashion like that, it's exciting. If it's extremely close, it's exciting. With that being said, let's head back to our exciting desk, Rachel and the boys. Thank you so much. It is a thrilling desk. I'm so excited to have Tapadic back here. Now, you told me what an incredible achievement it was to beat Consus. What does this achievement mean to you? It means even more. Now I'm in the final and everyone is going to be watching me at 9.30. Yeah, everybody's going to be watching because you are bringing gameplay that is so compelling. Three in a row in the best of five to just shut that down and move forward. Your play is incredible. I know Zigzag, Chicago geographer, you guys were locked in. Any questions for Topotic? Absolutely. Well, firstly, Topotic, congratulations on making it to the grand final. That's a huge achievement. You know, in the last World Cup, I actually had Topotic as my underdog winner pick. Um, and this time you're making it all the way, which is super exciting to see. Thank you very much. Um, Topotic, I guess my question for you is, you know, going like going forward to the grand final, um, what is your like kind of outlook on the game? Who do you think you're most likely to face? And uh, like what, what kind of attitude are you going to bring? I'm actually not sure who I will be most likely to face because we've had like so many upsets in the bracket that I have not yet figured out who of them is more likely to win. And also like Kodiak and Kratz, so they're like quite similar players in terms of playstyle. They're both like extremely strong, like in the top 10 for sure in moving. And that will be much harder for me because I've been uh, playing mostly no moving players and the advantage in moving has shown in that case. And against these players, it's going to be much harder. 
Yeah, yeah, speaking of your uh, advantage of moving, it seemed like in these games against Finmar, you were doing pretty strongly. And then in the no-moving game, maybe he was a little bit stronger than you, but then you came back with the Maltese. Uh, was the dynamic of this match what you expected to see, and then ending up going 3-0? Well, I didn't expect anything, but I knew that the no moving would be the hardest mode to win him at because it's the one that he practices a lot. He has played like hundreds of no moving duels and made a lot of videos on them. So he is definitely strong in that sense. And I feel like I got quite lucky in that game because the miss in Greece was quite unfortunate. I made a mistake there and maybe he deserved more, but still really happy to have beaten him. Excellent play, and I gotta ask, with that last Kentucky lock-in, you found it, you locked it, and then the clock kept ticking. So were you still paying attention to see how long it would take Finbar, or were you just relieved at that point? No, I was relieved. I just I didn't even try to find the town because I thought that in the United States, which is a very big country, is the country with most coverage in the whole world, and uh, I expected that if I clicked earlier, like he might be missing the state, while if I wait a bit, I will be in the right city, but he will be close as well, so I thought that was a good strategy. Excellent. The strategy, the knowledge, and the storyline to Podic, you've got it all, and we'll be checking you out in the finals later today. Thank you so much for coming on the desk, for once again sharing your insights, and we'll get to talk to you again in the future. Now, taking a look yeah, at the bracket. It's a pleasure to have you, Tapotic. It is so exciting to hear you break down your plays like that. And I can't wait to talk to you about this grand final when we get into it. Because Zigzag, you've been talking to people before their matches. We've got a lot to get into here. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we've got our next match to decide our next finalist, whether it will be Kotslo or Kodiak. We will find out when we get back.
Hey, GeoGuessr fans, we got another little treat for you in the middle of the break. I've got Macam here. What brings you to the GeoGuessr EMEA Regional Finals? Hi. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, actually doing my thesis uh, at GeoGuessr now. Uh, so um, oh, so you're studying cool. us like Jane Goodall among the apes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm uh, studying uh, civil engineering at university, and uh, then uh, like uh, my master's thesis is uh, at a company, and I did it. I chose the guess there. That's amazing. So, yeah. Well, we're lucky to have you here now as an observer throughout the event, and we're going to put you to work by making you do a little bit of a quiz as well. So we've got some questions that are going to appear on the screen. Yeah. You said you've watched other people do this quiz before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I think we're going to be covered here. My first question to you: In what country? was the final location of the 2023 GeoGuessr World Cup. Ooh, I think I remember this. And I'll, get, I'll let the uh, chat have some time to fill in their answers. You can give them roughly 16 seconds, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I wonder how good their memory is, or do you think they're guessing off the image here? Yeah, uh, that could be either. <laughs> hmm. But um, Your answer, sir. Yeah, I think it's Finland. Is it Finland? Let's check it out. Possibly, maybe. How did you do, Chad? Oh. Finland, you hey. got... Now, Chad, I do want you to put in chat. We want to check it out. Did you guess off the image or did you remember? I don't know. Either way is a good answer. But, Macam, you know, as you're studying, have you have you seen anything stand out at the company that you've been like, that's very impressive? Um, well, uh, sorry, how do you mean? <laughs> at GeoGuessr? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've, been, uh, you've been kind of observing them and all? Yeah. Anything uh, really cool over there? Do they have good snacks so, in, the, in the snack bar? Yeah, it's a very nice office as well. Nice people at that company. Great game that they made. What is the flattest country in flattest Europe? Country in Europe. Ooh. Oh, I think I know this one. That's Minecraft. Not, I don't know if I'm confident here. <laughs> is it the Netherlands? Mm. I think I'm going to go with the uh, Netherlands. Yes, I, I thought I'm that too. Sure. I was I'm absolutely a thousand percent sure it was the Netherlands. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've given you the answer here basically, but Chad, what do you think? Oh, Vatican really? City, are you? I guess that makes sense. That makes it's sense. a very, very small country. It is very small. It's very yeah. flat, mostly cobblestone covered, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, these questions are tricky. Do we have yeah. one more question for Macam? <gasps> we do. Let's find out what it is. No more tricky questions. Straight up, the stop signs in Puerto Rico say what? Hmm. I think this is a bit of a tricky one. Do you know off the uh, top of your head? I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right. Um, Do you think they just say, did they just say stop? I don't think so. <laughs> no, okay. I was like, that'd be yeah. really convenient. They were uh, just like, we'll I, use the one I, English I word here. I think it's para. And the rest of Central America is Alto, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And it ah, is you've nailed it. And only 19% of chat did it. I think that yeah. is the biggest win so far yeah, in our quiz segment. Because uh, the rest of like the Caribbean and uh, Central America uses Alto. Write well, that one down, everybody. All right, thank you so much, Macam, for coming on our quiz show. Good luck with your studies. I hope you enjoy checking out the GeoGuessr team. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll be right back with more of our GeoGuessr regional finals for EMEA.
you're watching the GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals. And I hope you have been watching closely because none of this is turning out as predicted. Unless you're the one guy on a production team who on Friday was like, yo, Topotic's got this whole thing. In which case, you had the script ahead of time. That's not fair. The rest of us are watching in amazement as this plays out. We have had so much fun watching these matches. Both of you taken a turn at the casting desk as well. It's been a long weekend, an exciting week of GeoGuessr. But as we are prepared to kind of head into this second semifinal match, some thoughts from each of you, Zigzag. I mean, we've had a really interesting day, as I mentioned before, where each of the pe people who topped the group ended up going out, and we have everyone who was coming second in their group progressing forward. Uh, now, we just saw a series, in case you missed it, which was Finbar versus Topotic. Topotic uh, really, um, you know, there was one close game, the other two were not close. Topotic definitely won this one convincingly, and uh, I think Topotic definitely has to be the favorite in my eyes going forward. What does being a favorite mean in this tournament, though? That has not really proved to be too too good of an omen for the other people who were the favorites and, and went out early. So anything can happen in GeoGuessr. Best of five does make things a little bit more predictable. Um, and Topotic is, you know, pretty confident on moving uh, formats, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, a bit unpredictable. It's really thrown the other players for a loop, not who they were expecting to play, but CG, as we pull up the bracket here, any opportunities you're seeing in the matchup that lies ahead? We've got, uh, of course, Kratzo versus Kodiak. One of those going on to play to Potic, and we have our last chances. What strikes you? Yeah, this is a really exciting final, or semi-final, I should say, here between two players with their names starting with K, but that's not important here. Uh, these, are guys, these guys are both really strong at moving, and we're going to see a really good fight, I think. Uh, they've both sort of proved themselves to be well-rounded as well throughout this tournament, defeating Blinky and Mata, who have also been playing so well. So two really strong players coming together here, and then, of course, those last chance matches coming up a little bit later. Those are going to be really exciting to see as well. And as we're switching into the best of fives now, we have one for the first semifinal, which, you know, uh, Chapotic just cruised right through with 3-0 easy win here. How do you think that's going to change up how these players are kind of approaching the match overall? They don't even have to, to touch, a, you know, they get two moving rounds. Yeah, it definitely could be seeing uh, if these players go crazy in the moving rounds and it, like, just like Topotic played in those, like it was so dominant from him there. Uh, could be interesting though, these guys are both good at that. So we might be in for a longer game here. I would predict that, but anything can happen again, as Oscar said. Uh, so this game is totally unpredictable. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, we've taken a lot of guesses at what this matchup can mean, but let's check in with the players to see what it means to them. I don't imagine myself winning the tournament actually, so I don't really, I'm not considering it. Like for me, it's just uh, the goal was to go to the World Cup and it's done. Now it's just bonus. It's just fun and yeah, having fun. It would be nice to win, but after the semis, I already like proved myself, I feel like. Um, and then afterwards, everything's just a bonus. Uh, but yeah, I think game to game and not like think what could happen if this happens. Like, yeah, I just look for myself and see what happens. I think it's going to be a great game and uh, whoever wins uh, will win. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Have a great game and let's go. Whoever wins will win. That's the kind of analysis that we're looking for here. I love leaving it up to the mystery of the head-to-head -head here. We haven't seen any fact that's really set one of our players apart going into it. And even when we think we've got one, pff, uh, it's blown up in our faces. So CG, just uh, you know, getting vibes off these players, hanging out with them, chatting a little bit before the match. Do you see in their faces one more ready than the other? Honestly, I don't think so. I think these guys have both been like really calm and collected now. We've seen a really good mentality from both of them. Uh, Kratzer looks pretty, you know, he, he's had some toss-ups behind the camera, but I think he's looking really confident. And Kodiak as well seems really chilled out. So these guys, they've, they've gotten used to the elements here, and I think we're going to see a great match. It hasn't been the case for every player in this tournament, but I feel like Kratsu and Kodiak have both improved as the tournament's gone on, where they both had shaky early games where they could have easily won and then didn't. And now we're coming, now I think both coming into the element. Um, I think this one won't be a 3-0. That's my prediction. I do think it's going to go back and forth a little bit here. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see, you know, which formats uh, each player ends up being actually stronger on. That's a great point, and you know we're always excited for more rounds. Players evolving over the course of the tournament, certainly evolving since the last World Cup, and we can see another evolution right before our eyes. So let's bring out our first player, Kratzo.
Well, 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 Kratz. So a win to get you into the World Cup, then a win against Blinky. It's been a huge EMEA for you so far. Uh, I'm curious, though, how well do you actually know Kodiak? Um, I would say I do not know him personally, but I do know like how strong he is, in, especially in moving games. Um, he's also a very strong player overall, and he showed it with the last games he played, so I'm kind of afraid, but uh, I have to lock in. And on that topic, is there one of the three game modes which you kind of favor yourself most against Kodiak? No. That seems reasonable. All right, so <laughs> Kratzo, thank you very much for the interview, and good luck. Kodiak, welcome back to the big stage. I mean, I heard that you're feeling a little bit sick this morning. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I feel like since the last game, my fever got a bit higher even. <laughs> so I'm not feeling perfectly fine, but uh, I mean, I still think I can lock in for this one game and afterwards hopefully chill a bit. <laughs> that's a shame to hear, but at least you're here and you're well enough to play, so that's fantastic. Uh, Kodiak, my next question is... Um, slipped my mind, uh, but uh, I want to know actually how you're feeling against Kratzo. Do you agree with his analysis that you guys are pretty much even on every game mode? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Like, he's very good at moving. I'm very good at moving and no move NMPZ. I think we're also pretty even, so it should be a nice matchup. Like, it's pretty even, yeah. Definitely seems that way. Well, Kodiak, best of luck and take your seat. Uh, it's a shame to hear that Kodiak not feeling well, even worse than he was before, but there's always the chance that this could be his, like, Jordan flu game. Is this the, the, the fever dream victory of Kodiak, perhaps, all the way? He still has to get through Kratzo to make that possible, and that is not an easy task. Now, we're taking a look at the stats that Kratzo has accumulated over the course of this tournament. I think it's important to remember as we look at these numbers too, who he has achieved these numbers against in the matchups. Now, anything strike you, Chicago geographer, about these impressive numbers? Yeah, you know, as you said, it's impressive to think about who he's defeated with these stats. We have Blinky taken down by Kratzo here. Uh, pretty impressive stats. He's guessing a little bit faster than some of the other players that we've seen as well. So he might try to put the pressure on Kodiak, especially in the uh, no moving. And if we get to it, the NMPZ. Uh, but yeah, Kratzo, we know he's a giant killer here. So will he be able to take down Kodiak? Only time will tell. Yeah, and is this a little bit of a sandbagging event from Kodiak? <laughs> I don't feel so good. Oh, coming out of nowhere to dun dun. I think <laughs> you just never know. You just never know. So there's a lot of things there, a lot of layers in competitive games like this. Um, but yeah, Kodiak, I think, uh, I think, you know, I think from in this matchup, what I see is Kratzo coming in with stronger form. You know, a very convincing a win. Uh, you know, who he defeated this huge. You know, again in that win against Blinky. Uh, but then again, uh, Kodiak more. More experience, definitely so, um, and and more experience playing all three formats as well. So I think, um, yeah, I think I think it's very even one, as I've said, and uh, yeah, I, I just want to say, yeah, I do think it's going to go past three games. I do hope so. I would love to go all the way to an NMPZ in our best of fives right here, but that's entirely up to the players taking us through the action. Of course, we've got Toby and Rainbolt on the mics. Thank you so much, Rachel, CG, and Sixai for breaking down exactly what we are about to witness here. Kratzo versus Kodiak. This is going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. Hey, Kodiak is sick. Maybe his strategy is just make, make all the other players sick with him. He can just, <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. If, if it's something that's contagious that fast, please just never. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere near him. I did hear, though, they were standing talking a bit here before they were going down to play. They had a very heated debate on which music was supposed to be played while they were going on. It was uh, Kratzo wanted no lyrics, Kodiak wanted lyrics, because if the music plays in one's headset, I think it is that the others get is getting the same music. Oh, wow. So they're discussing who gets like who gets music pick, who gets the veto the on the music. Maybe there's a whole new music. Like music land meta. I heard Cody in the making. Play, play, play Cardi on the Ox right now. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe that's what's going on. At least for these two guys, with the format we are playing in this best of five, they will get, as we saw earlier, two guaranteed moving games. And I think for both of these players, this is exactly what they want. Two players that are very, very confident when it comes to moving. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's look at Kratz here for a second. This guy took down Blinky in the moving game, which so, is unheard of. Yeah. So then, if you beat Kratz in moving, then you beat Blinky in the, I'm just kidding. So if, so if Kratzo beats Blinky and Kodiak beats Kratzo, does that mean that Kodiak's better than Blinky? 
Let's find out. Let's find out. Moving. We will see as we head into the first round of this best of five. This will be starting in, looks like the USA, but also looks like Canada. Therefore, okay. probably on the border. Bit of distance, maybe, between these two picks. We can see. With the US one. flag there, you probably go northeast. You probably go. Curious. See. Curious to see how fast Kodiak is going to come out of the gate here because, yes, we've heard he's a bit sick, but even with that, he kicked off the game very, very quickly. We do see a main guest previous match by Kratzu. Not... Yeah. And both players should get there. We'll see. Yeah, this will be, I mean, for those tuning in, these are some of the best moving players in the world. So you almost expect them to get the exact road a lot of the time, or yeah. at least a close region with so much information available. But Kodiak taking his time, pondering around here, he found a garage. And we have Kratzu locking in, confidently. Locking in early on. Kodiak in the very much nearby vicinity and with no multipliers added so far. This should be minimal damage, unless we've They're seen pretty it before. Far, far, and you have to assume Kratzu is closer. Yeah, and he's, and he's continuing to move mate. further away. Continuing to move further away. It is up towards the north. A little bit of damage coming through there. 400 to start things off. Not too crazy. Not too crazy as we move in. We saw it. We saw it yesterday and a bit earlier today as well, where Kodiak gets the initial read on point, like his gut feeling is there, but then second guesses himself and ends up moving away from the favorite location. Kratz, so I feel like he's playing a bit slower, taking a little more time to make sure that his initial guess, like once he puts down the pin, he knows that's where he's staying. Exactly. This will probably be smaller points as those players scan for information. And what looks like to me, Rwanda, but we'll see. Needed of the two. Up thing to go for a quick pick as I say that. Kodiak zooms in quickly. Rwanda is where he's headed. Is he, he found the to city? It? He found this. Wait. Who's. Yeah. Muhanga district. I thought, yeah. Looking for Muhanga. Any Muhangas yeah. in the chat? Wait, did Kodiak just not see that he saw it there? He found it. He scanned it over. Maybe it, there it is. Second. There it is. He's looking for the specific road now. Might as well but fight K if you get the time to. Will be zero points for both players. Yeah, you'd imagine. It's going to be very close. It is a 5k for both of them. A wow. 10k in the club here as they both go head to head. You said it. They're some of the best moving players in the world and they're proving it on the grand stage. And that's exactly what we expected to see here. And we move into what looks like Belgium. Let's see. It could be France. Um, Kretsu is going to make his way east, zooming into Belgium. What we're looking for here is to find yourself a nice little street with more information. Mm -hmm. Out of the industrial area, preferably out some of the main roads. A lot of uh, towns to be seen, to be read the names of once you get out there. But once again, it seems like Kodiak kind of stuck in the in, in, in the production same area. Intersection yep. here and they're the following same each other. Time. It's also it's interesting to see how when there Locked are multiple in. directions they can go, that as two different style moving players, they still end up going down the exact same road. Kodiak going north this time, looking for information. Is he going back to the start to try and 5k and... Alright, got time, 3 seconds, 2, 1, they're nearby one another, didn't get the exact info on it, neither of them completely on point as we're in between Antwerp and Eindhoven. 500 damage towards Kodiak as Kratzo remains untouched. Downtown Netherlands border, let's keep it going. This one looks like Baltic, what do you do here? You go uh, Estonia, maybe? Do. I looked at that flag and thought it was somewhere completely different. Oh, look at those guys, look at those lads on the tree view. We've all been there. Just saying hi to the camera. Correct. Yeah. Me. Not wanting to acknowledge it. it. That's oh, okay. Wow. Okay. 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 See how it is. See how it is. Looking for any sort of information here. There's plenty of it. It's about sorting it out, figuring out which is actually going to be helpful and which is just a ton of names of various shops and street names. And we do see Kodiak zooming into Estonia here, and he's found a city that he's going to lock in. What does that mean? Ooh, Wait, okay. Oh, cross so you can't the, do they this. Found the city. You can't do this. They They're both, both on the point. Are we going back to 5Ks once again? Could potentially be. They're too far away apart. We'll yeah, that's close true. Ah, it's close by. Regardless, again, Zero. look at this. I mean, once again, a tight game. These guys, I mean, the death said it. It's going to be hard to predict. It's going to be hard to call a winner. And these guys are showing us why. They're playing completely head-to-head -head right now. This is a free South Africa for both players, obviously. And South Africa is very easy to 5k for both these players because there's so much really inf like information with signs. The river but there, a lot of open hard spaces problem too. is finding that sign. Who can find it first? And Kodiak is going east. Both players 
Kodiak is doing the little trick here where you can move the mouse or move the game and also open up the map at the same time. As he starts scanning, it's a two for one special there. Is that the one where it's dangerous that you accidentally lock something in if you have your pin down already? Yeah, as we saw that happen last year in the finals. When you release your space bar, right? If you accidentally press, if you place a pin X and press, you make a guess. So if you do want to up to go for this fast moving play style when you're playing moving games, everyone out there, uh, make sure that if you have a pin down already, not committed to, but kind of locked down, that you uh, that you, you you worry a little bit more. Be careful. Yeah, scanning for bridges now. They're going to be east west, seeing if he can make anything that lines up. And Kratzu doesn't. He's there's separate regions of South Africa here. Ooh, well, three separate times multiplier. Regions. Three times Big multiplier. Point. It's, this is going to be huge, and it's going to be Kratzer who is closest. Is it going to be enough to take him all the way yeah. down? Yes, it is. Kodiak loses the first. Kratzu up 1-0. As a flawless victory there for Kratzu. Huge. Absolutely huge. A 5K, a 4997 to tie with Kodiak. Even when Kodiak had phenomenal games, Kratzu was there too. And here in the final one, he beats him to it. And that's an interesting reason you there by Kodiak. Yeah. It's one of those things where maybe sometimes you read something that sends you one direction and you, you hone in on that information yes. and ignore everything else. True. True. Sometimes you do end up getting uh, getting blinded by all the trees in the woods. Well, let's see now if things are going to be any different as we take these players, not out of their comfort zone, but at least out of their favorite play style as we move over to no move. Yes, and we saw, we saw earlier in the interview, both players said they feel like they're equal yeah. along all game modes. Yeah. Let's see if that's the case here. As Kratzu's up 1-0. Without losing any points. Oh, now we can't even move forward to see if that building is going to be finished with the painting as mm. we move further. That's unlucky. Maybe you can save the location afterwards and go find out. <laughs> we'll see. Look at that. It just looks good, good set of paint. This is a beautiful location, though. It is. It really is. There's something magical about being in a valley surrounded by mountains. Like yeah. That. You feel so small, but at the same time, it's just like that. That's where you really feel like I'm seeing the entire Kretsu world. Kretsu so knows, knows it's northern Slovenia here. We have the Great Slovenian hit. signs that Kodiak also saw south or north there. And... He's going northern Slovenia too with the mountains north. Close Makes by. Sense. Close by. Low. Just, well, zero. Multiplier, really. That's what we see here. Oh, the oh. next one, another close. Kodiak actually really close in the correct city. Bro. 4999. 54 damage over towards Kratzo. He said, hey, listen, let me cook. He got this. He got this. Didn't even have to zoom in that far to lock it down either. This is an intriguing. Oh, it looks like Canada. We'll see. Could be something crazy. I'm not sure where I place this one. And Kodak goes to line the road up in Yukon. Ooh, far up towards the northwestern edge, yeah? I give a bit, I give uh Both there, both there. Both players in Yukon. And you can see, when you look at, we look down the road like that, you can tell, and we have a lock-in by Kratzu. Oh, They're both on the Kodak. same road, but different parts of the road here. And Kodak is looking for an Small angle on the road to see what lines up first. And it's actually going to be... Kratzu, that's closer. Kratzu, closer when you're that far in. I mean, there are so many roads that are going to look alike. And Kodiak, just a bit far off to the north, will take the hit down to 5,300 health. Let's keep the pace high. How are we in France? Not going to be the one to tell you that. I mean, the flag in the front shoot, but that's again a pitfall that that's somebody falls into. You see a flag, you, you instantly just go France, and then you go, wait a minute, that was average, the hotel. Uh, yeah, that's, that'll be the average. The average Toby move, is that what you're yeah, about to I say? Was gonna say? Yeah, the average <laughs> player that just started playing. But we're driving left here, and France does not drive left, and we also have... That's a good call. That is a phenomenal read for those of you guys like out there. Make sure not just to go off to initial earlier lunch. before, but this back of the car here that Kodiak is looking at to your uh, west here, you know, that's the electric car that's usually found near Dublin, but I think it's exceeded that now because it not, does not look like Dublin. But it is common in Ireland, maybe near Dublin. Maybe you go north, because I have seen the car north as well. But uh, shout out to Ireland for uh, being proactive and having electrical vehicles for their Yeah, vehicle. true, true. Guinness, Heineken, sponsored up there on the left side as well. We'll see if uh, that leads into any of the judgment by Kodiak. Still has yet to commit to the pick. Crowd so too. As they look for any additional info. It's uh, again an area with plenty of info to be found. But oh, how do they come down to it? They're far on each side, but it's going to be Kratzo once again closest 800 damage as we now, I feel like, move into territory where these distances are going to be, I mean, game-defining. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Act beautiful. Actually gorgeous. This so is this like one of those, if you were to go to a deserted island alone with no internet sort of situation. Kodiak looks this. sad over his performance there, but he's going to still lock in. Fun fact about Kodiak is that he... You know, last year when he uh, lost early in the World Cup, he was kind of very sad uh, after because he played a lot to grind. And he said, yeah. you know what? He took like a couple of weeks vacation before this World Cup. He said, you know what? Less is more. And he's, playing, and yeah. he's playing out of his mind right now. 
So sometimes rely on, you know, your Grinding background knowledge. You can't just keep playing matches. You have to also practice sometimes, you know? It's not all about just grinding, 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 grinding. You have to sit down and study the matches you've played to see where you can improve, to see what you could have done differently as you move into the next games. And these guys, of course, very, very proficient at analyzing every single match they play. Yes. Quite literally. And both players obviously know it's not right here. So you're scanning for something that lines up here. But how Just take an we? island in Norway for a hit. I mean, it's not like there are so many of them. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see who's going to be on point. They are a bit apart, but not that much. And it's Grasso again. The small steps. As Kodiak takes yet another 200 damage. It's not over yet. It's best of five. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Far from over. So many points in both games. We're going to bring ourselves back to the U.S. here. And what looks like we have some Southern Pines here. And presumably just Georgia would be my educated guess here. Shout out to Ray Charles. Mm, shout out to RC. If you know, you know. Both players. Hopefully it is Georgia. That'd be my bet. It could be like a weird, like... Let me zoom on this. What is this? Can't tell actually. That's a Chevrolet in the distance. It could be, it's Definitely something, it's Georgia, something south. It's something south. <laughs> Both players are going to get the US here. And they're both going to go Southern US. Effect, not where that, uh, you got you got street signs you got your your lands but no like no city indicators no nothing of the sort we have no front plates on the cars there no These... front plates usually mean more southern and if we do have an alabama guess here by or at least zoom in here by kodiak and we have a mississippi alabama hedge here by kratzu but i give this guess to kodiak if the foliage here is pretty widespread around all of he's going more west city right yeah exactly so that's gonna They're be gonna be in between him potentially we'll see three times multiplier he's gonna move more they don't know. Oh, they're both going they Alabama. Stick they stick to it. Don't want to risk too much. And it was actually further out towards the east. It was in Georgia, as you correctly said there. Three ball. 300 damage. 300 damage. Kratzo, not immortal after all. Southern US is kind of a toss up. Mm hmm. That's moving around six. And we'll get another opportunity here. Move forward. Focus has to remain full on for these two players. This one is far from decided. We're back in the States. The question is. Where do you go here? You know, it's going to be Southern again, surely. Uh, where? Despair. I just go down to Baumbach Street. True. Yeah. I mean, why not just 5k it if you can, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right next yeah. to Hatterman Road. Just zoom in. Aware. <laughs> That's it. That is exactly it. We'll see if Kratz is going to be able to find it. I like the Oklahoma call out. I feel like it's Oklahoma or Texas. Yeah. I mean, two big states to try and, uh, and narrow down Texas in particular. It's a lot of zooming to be done, Texas, and you only have 25 seconds left to do it. We have an Arkansas guess here. Not sure. Arkansas. Arkansas. Let's see. Barn in the distance. Not could really be. giving could be. the info that he's looking for. Either 10 seconds to go. Down towards Tennessee. Nope. It's going to be over towards Arkansas for Kodiak up on the border. Both players so close again, but it could be big points, especially with these multis. Who's going to get it? It's, it's going to be south. Texas right in between Houston and San Antonio. And the damage is once again going to hit over towards Kodiak. But again, it's these small, small That's hits. And now with the multiplier up to four times coming in the next round. Both players are going to be upset with their guesses there. Exactly. You, you have to, looks like we might even have the Texas pavement there. There has been chances for both of them to really get far ahead here. But now we're going well, somewhat look at Kratzu. Look how dis Why does he look so distraught? Maybe it's again. I mean, he knows he's ahead right now. He could have been ahead by even more, potentially even won the game had he gone Yeah, Texas we have the there, Ghana so. tape here. Both players are going to look for a road that makes sense in Ghana because it's going to be more north with his vegetation and like low dense trees. And Kodak is going to line the road up here, slightly east-west road. With two players that are so exceptionally skilled, you know you're only going to get a certain amount of chances at getting not free wins, but like where the opponent's going to be far off. Kodak looking for the intersection off, east, and he thinks he might have found it. I think Kodak just 5 k oh, He found the intersection see. east. Both players are very similar. Yeah, this it is going to be, be a low point that, again. We'll see. Unless if Kratzo goes far off and away and dislikes the position he's currently in, this should be a low point game. Let's see who's going to get the exact position locked down. It's even more ease for Kodiak. Either, but close ones again. I mean, <laughs> those streets pretty much parallel. So uh, no wonder why Kodiak didn't log in where he did. Quite literally. And we move on to round eight. And this is where multis get high, and you're sure kind of is. aiming for any single point you can here. 4.5 multiplier. Kodiak needs to start trying to 5k, I feel like, if it's one of the more obvious positions. Not that he hasn't been, but if he wants to get Kratzo down, 
either you need one where he's miles off or you need to start chipping in with only two left, two rounds left to play. Yeah, and this is a, I think Kretsu is just 5K'ing right here. I mean, it's, it's just like Northern Pro Terpo though. Surely. Um, not sure. I mean, it's definitely north somewhere. We see both players kind of up here in the same region. Yep. But yeah, zooming in. So is Kratzo. That would bring us. Kodiak is shaking his head a bit, though. Not too sure that he likes what he's seeing. He was in the nearby vicinity for a moment. Now, zooms out once again, goes further down towards the south. This is, again, we've seen it before, where Kodiak second guesses his initial thought. The times he's gone off his initial thought has actually come to cost him. We'll see now if it does so here as well. With 10 seconds left on the clock, no one's locking in their guesses just yet. This could be something. Here it could. Five How seconds. They're holding it all the way till the end. Kratzo, hands on his head, worries it's, that it could go wrong, and it was further south than they though. initially were in. 2,800 points. And he has 800 points in a dream left it's before one. he's down 0-2. Once again, Kodiak, he was up there, didn't like it, went further south, and it comes to cost him. And what better, or what worse way to lose? Yeah. Oh, that is flat. It's flat, and then it's but it's also <laughs> easy. Well, I mean, you say that. What makes it easy? Tell me. It's yellow outer lines, black car, Jordan, both players. There you go. Kodiak can lose 800 points here. He needs to lock in here. Kratzu is going to go for the 5k here to pick up as many points as he possibly he can. To. Toby. Beautiful Jordanian desert. We'll see who comes out victorious here. Kratzu down to just 800 points. If he finds it early, you'd have to or want to lock it in quickly for him. But now it's already too late. Kratzu is looking for the specific street here as well, as we will be most likely making our way into round 10 in just a moment, in which, unless if Kratzu makes a big mistake here, which it doesn't seem like he will, Kodiak is going to be in trouble. They're going to be so close. Who is it going to be enough? Five seconds. Who's going to get it? If you can get just a thousand points off here if you're Kodiak for Kratz, so that would be absolutely huge. But let's see who's going to get it. They oh are God. practically on point. Yet another 10k for these two mastermind moving players. It comes down to this, doesn't it? I'm gonna, I'll set the stage real quick, Toby. Go for it, bro. It's going into round 10. It's the last round mm -hmm. of this game. Mm -hmm. Kodiak down 0 1. Looking to tie it. 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. Going down 0-2. It's not very good. It sure isn't. You'd much rather be 1-1. One, one. Kratzu is hoping for a small country, small points, because if he loses anything more than 40, you know, a couple 4,000 points here, mm -hmm. GG's. True. Kodiak needs a big country. He needs a big one. You what are a big country? Give, give it. The USA. Boom. There we go. Is it an identifiable USA, though? It becomes the question now, because even just with the region correct, Kratzu could be safe, but let's see. Okay, so let's I think who gets it. I... I hope no one looks at yellow plate and goes like New Jersey on this. That would be. Cars can travel, remember. Cars oh, we have an Oregon travel. sign there. We have an Oregon sign. Do they see it? I hope they both know the Oregon sign there. This is so Oregon doesn't use limit on their. Quickly. Maybe he start saw standing it and Oregon. Looked. It's instant lock Oregon. Kodiak looked in the direction and then went further. They both see it. Just aware. the viewers, where is the sign exactly? No, Kratz is throwing. Oh, Kratz not throwing. sure. Not sure. He's not the throwing. info is there. He's going far oh west now. God. There is the hurricane. He's trying to play with us. He's playing with us now, looking towards the bus stop. Maybe there's an indicator. And if he stays the there, exactly. it's not going to be winnable for Kodiak. Kodiak has yet to lock in. He needs a miracle play to happen here in order to be able to make this into a 1-1. He is going to go it. west. He, he is going to go Oregon. Eugene is where he's headed. Winnable. It's not winnable. The distance is simply not big enough, even with the 5.5k. But now let's see who's going to get it. I mean, yeah, that's GG's. And if Kodiak maybe just sent earlier, should have locked it off guard. Yep, he had the time there. As you said too, Kratzo was in doubt for a moment. If he pressured him to only have those 15 seconds, maybe he wouldn't have noticed. Maybe exactly. his mind would have been elsewhere, but didn't commit early enough. And that's going to take Kratzo to 2-0, and moving once again into a moving round. I mean, yeah, this is it. This comes down to moving, and Kratzu has to feel nice it's knowing he's one win away from making the finals, and that one game separating him is a moving game. But honestly, at the same time, this is where we could easily just flip the script completely. We saw how close they were. They both had 5Ks. They both had 4997Ks in the previous moving game. They're both equally capable of taking this one home, but now it's a ride of momentum. They're sat right next to each other in the studio. They have the music popping. They know the entire world is watching. On whose shoulder is the biggest level of pressure and who can cope with it. Let's find out.
Let's find out. Back to moving we go. It's game number three. This could be a winning match for Kratz. So if it brings it home 3-0 over Kodiak, well, if you want to do the reverse sweep, it starts here. It starts now. This will be a moving game for the centuries right here. Iceland instantly zoomed on to by Kratz. So Kodiak still wanting more info as he full speed sends it down the streets. Both players obviously know it's Iceland and Kratz will find the information first here. And he will use that. And you know you're up against another He's amazing moving player. So you want to live in his opportunity to get info. If you find something niche, a small spot, a small sign, don't think your opponent has it. Might as well just send it, hope for the best. Because as you can see here, Kodiak resets once more. Doesn't like what he's seeing. But now, both in the nearby vicinity, they're going to lock it in. And Kratzu. oh, Kratzu. I think that's a 5k. No, close there too, though. And if I know anything about Kodiak, so this man likes Indonesia. Well, let's give it to him. Let's see if he can bring it home. And if he registers it quickly, go for the fast send. We've seen him do it before, and it's actually been on his quick locks. I don't know if he will. But it, I mean, it, it is a pretty dangerous time it's to a pretty start dangerous. quick locking. But as a, but as and a we actually that, see the exact opposite here. And we see Kratzu taking the information in and thinking about it. As looking back at Kodiak's previous duels, it's been the times where he's locked in Kratzu quickly. Kratzu just I actually think he's actually right on it because the islands that he sees over the distance there make so much sense. Well, let's see if it's going to be true or not. It would be insane with a 4999 into a 5k in the first two rounds. Kodiak, Sula. same island, but further towards the east. Yes. And that is going to be Kratzu. Almost 5k, one kilometer off. But once again, he has yet to be under 4,997 in the first rounds. Round three. In, saw in the Blinky game with Kratzu versus Blinky, we saw an impressive performance with him in Kazakhstan. Can he keep it up? Let's see here. If they can uh, get the info they need, plenty of space to maneuver as they sit in the back of that truck, moving their way out towards some of the bigger streets. Both players looking. I'm not sure. You know, Kodiak, I think, has spent a lot of time recently playing with other players, trying to learn what he can for this. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Kazakhstan is one of the things that he took a lot of time learning. And from the games that we saw with Blinky. Katsu is stuck in a kind of rural uh, urban area. Wants to get out of the main streets, but stuck on small dirt roads. These houses, not really a whole lot of science or info to go off of. We'll see if he can make it back out in the open. He resets the game completely. Wants to go back out to the main streets now, but Kodiak is already sending it down the main streets, looking for crucial information. Yeah, he just broke 20 laws and speed limits. <laughs> how fast he was just... He flew through cars. I mean, that's definitely, definitely something wrong with that. As he moves his way further down, but still not the info he wants. Now the stream comes. He's going. He's locking his city, and it's going to be a different city than where Crash is. Times multiplier. This could be huge for Kodiak if he has some info that he wants to go off. Oh, and he does. Perfect position there. Almost five king once more. And look at the amount of damage. Now it's not just reset. It's not just even. Now Kodiak is ahead. With momentum. And that's again it. You only get so many chances to beat a guy like Kratz. So he's been so incredibly good throughout. And now finally, when he's off by if a bit, this, Kodiak finds if it. If you get this moving game under your belt, oh, it, he feels more confident going in to no move. This is beautiful. We have the Philippines here. And Kratz is reading that to see if there's anything provincial in the Philippines. And he's going to lose Ooh, on. Fast. He's locking it in. Doesn't want to give Kodiak any chance to find additional info. He has 12 more seconds. Are insanely good. That's the city as well. Back and they both brutal. got there. They both got there. Using different information. But they both got there. Good read, good read. Can he find the position? Exactly. Kodiak looking towards the mountains on the western side. Nope, it was out towards the east. <coughs> this is going to be minimal damage. But again, I mean, both of them sat at plus 4,900. These guys are playing phenomenal games. Yep, yeah, I'm keeping the pace high. You should. As you should. They're in the zone. Let's keep them there. The auto zone. They are feeling it right now. And for Kodiak, I mean, again, he needs to win this match to not be out of the tournament. He's giving another home. chance here. He could bring it home right here. He could make his way to the grand finals against the party Locked if in. he wins this game. So basically, looks like Luzon. Let's see if he's going to be Kratzu right. He will also go right there. He has yet to zoom in. Five more seconds to work with. You got to start getting the map up and open. Now he goes there, he's zooms in. That's south. far south. Is he going to adjust? It's, he goes even further away. It's and it's actually closer to Kratzu. 2K. We're halfway through. Both of the players around the half HP mark. They have been battling blow for blow as we now find ourselves in round six. Here's the location here. We're, we're going to be in Thailand here, driving left with the Thai script, obviously. 
And we do have a snake trap on this pole mm -hmm. to our left. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Kodak might have seen that. You do get snake traps mainly more in the Southern Peninsula. You also get scattered throughout Isan and other places. Is that a terminology for something else? Or is it actual snake traps? Yeah, uh, we call it snake traps. I think it is just a snake trap. Kodak has found, oh, great information there by Kratzu and his peninsula. And he's in Renong right, right here. Is he he's moving the money. He's, he's moving near right on this time. The north locks it in again. Kodiak, he hasn't been the one to do the quick lock in, in this match, but now they're both up here. Do they both have the info needed in order to find this spot? 3.5 times damage. This could hurt if Kratzu goes further away, which he does. He's going to continue. Points, he's... No, it's not very many points. It's not. <laughs> But wow, oh. what a road guess there. But still, not very many points. Still though, still it's 400. Could have been just 100, but he kept creeping further towards the east, like the National Park there, and you find it in the end. Toby, you know it's a fitting way for Kratzu to get a lot of points and potentially bring himself to the finals? I feel like we're going somewhere towards the west of Germany then. We are. Let's go. Let's see if he can bring it home. He had a loss in France yesterday. Let's see if maybe uh, maybe the Frenchman can get something going here. Maybe the blue sticker on the toughen pole. Good indicator for France. Kodiak, also a very talented moving player in France. Oh. He's interested in <gasps> Okay, Marseille instantly locked in. Kratzo now on the money. 10 seconds left to play with. Let's see what he can find. He has plenty of time to move, but Kodiak barely even moved his camera at all Both before locking it in. We're going to round nine. Round eight. There's simply no time for Kratzo. Can't get it fast enough. They're both going to be evenly close, but that was insanely fast. 12. And as we're looking to round eight here, as we keep the pace high, this will bring us to round nine because this is free. We have Hokkaido cabbage, Hokkaido arrows, the arrow pointing down. You say free, but under pressure in a land environment, in a studio, he said, even the best players can make mistakes. They can, but they won't blunder this. I'll tell you that. Like, this Are is you a, trying to curse them? Is that what we're seeing? If you blunder this, you deserve <laughs> to blunder this, I think. Fair enough. Not only off of the info you were just saying, do you have good info, but now there's a street sign as well with both road names and the numbers indicating both cities and uh, the exact streets to look for. So as you're saying, should be low points in this one. That's but you can't pick up any points and that, those points do matter. Yes, definitely. Definitely do. And you can Even see both players that? will take all 20 seconds here to try yeah. and find the road. When I say Blunder, they, they're going to know where in Hokkaido they are. Aim for the 5k with 4.5 multipliers. I mean, even for the Kaido, they're big kind enough of island that you can be far away. Exactly. More north. exactly. This could be very dangerous. Three, uh, 2,300 health for Kodiak. This could be game if he's too far away. If Kratzo is somehow 5 k it could potentially be game over for Kodiak. Let's see who's going to find it. No one. It's Kodiak is close up, but it's small Kratzo damage. Too. Closer here, actually. Oh, Kratzo, sorry. But it's small damage. Small damage. And I think we'll keep that trend going. And Taiwan. Taiwan? Right? So do we have the antenna? We do. Yeah, this is a crazy Taiwan. NMPZ, I'm not sure you have Taiwan here. But round nine, this is moving. Er, yeah, this is moving. Yes, it is. And, you know, the thing about French players in the community is French players are very good at moving. And they, they know a lot of things. And Kodiak, you can see the reaction on his face. Wait. Oh, he's going Hong Kong. No. Oh. Oh, I like it, actually. I like it. That's why it looks Micro like a Micro Island, just south okay, of Fushan. Yep. Did they both get that? Yeah, they both. They both Seems get, like they, they do. Yep. Seems like they do. A round 10, a final round for Kodiak. He needs to get points. Hopefully some here and then a ton in the next one. It's going to once again be Kratzo to get the win on it. It's only 45 points, but again, keep in mind, Kodiak has to have more health left remaining after this next round is over, or else he is out of the tournament. He's out of the tournament and Kratzu advances to the finals against the Podic. Exactly. There's one round away separating Kratzu in the finals and Kodiak in the lobby. And it's not even that far away that they need a massive country just big enough to not be able to insta 5k it. It just has to have some distance, some region uncertainty. What if I told you Kodiak's? <sighs> give it to us. Kodiak, give let us me, something. Let me tell you, what if I told you that Kodiak's European regional finals here Comes down to the Oibrovs. <sighs> Let's see it. Let's see if he can bring it home. Let's get these players back Yo. on it. See if he can win this one. And I mean, I say win it, but stay alive. If Kratzu takes this one, as long as Kratzu does not lose more than 1,513 HP, possible. he is going to be okay. Kodiak zooming in, Alpha Zoom. 
Is it a quick lock? lock? Is it a quick lock? He's, he's going to the Full gamble. All in. He is, the cards are on the table. He's just waiting for the last one to return. Giving Kratzu 10 seconds advantage here, but is it worth Five, it? Five, four, Similar they're reasons. five hard. Is, is it, it ever enough? enough, though? If he if he's super close. He goes for the way. It was five on five. It's going to be enough. Quick maths, is it? It's no! not! Kodiak loses just a couple of points off, but Kratzo with an impressive 3 0, but takes both the moving games out and he stays in it. He will make the grand finals against Topotic. I mean, what a game! A Kratzo Topotic finals is not anything anyone ever saw coming. That's insane. What the heck has today been? <laughs> I do not know. I am shaking. This is insane. We were both just staring at the multiplier, staring at the score, staring at the health bar as it started chipping down. But in the end, it's going to be Kratzo to take the fight to the grand finals. And what an insane I moment, mean, honestly, to Kodiak as well. Phenomenal, well phenomenal well game. Every time Kratzo made a mistake, he was instantly there to punish. But in the end, Kratzo just too consistent. He was too consistent. He's playing He's playing like he is the best right now. Oh, yeah. And he's only three three games away from from winning. He took out Blinky. He takes out Kodiak now as well. Kratzo is looking scary. So let's get a word from him on the stage before we head in to the grand finals. <laughs> I thought I was excited for this match, but flashing back to the caster cam, I can tell that they're always having the best time over there. And I totally understand why. Kratzo, you gave us three incredible rounds back to back. We talked about how close you were as players when you looked at the stats, but really you have pulled away here. What do you think is the biggest factor in that? Focus and the music also, because uh, there was a little bit of uh, like a debate before the game because uh, Kyojak wanted to have lyrics in the music and uh, we have to both listen to the same music and I didn't want because like he just um, like prevent me from really being focused, especially in moving. And uh, here uh, I got lucky the 10 round limit, uh, yeah, made me going through the grand final. But yeah, that's, that was, uh, yeah, I don't know. Back to the music question though, what did you decide? You decided lyrics, no lyrics? So, oh yeah, we, so why is it no lyrics? It's because we made a rock, paper, scissors and I won. Oh. So he, I, I won, I did not want at the start, but like he insisted, so I accepted. <laughs> and we did, uh, and I won. Wow, one on the music, one on the maps. I mean, what the correlation yeah. is, excellent. If I don't win the paper, scissors, maybe I'm not here, so. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so, well. <laughs> Kratzer, congratulations on making it to the grand final. What an incredible you. achievement. Thank you. I'm sure going in you didn't expect that, but no. I want to know, like, I look, I, I've, I've hopped back to it a few times. The very first game you played against Marta in the tournament it was not a good game. You weren't locked I, in. Many no, I was many, locked in. Mistakes. I was locked in, but the problem is that this is the only game where, I, where there was lyrics in the in the music. So <laughs> that, that makes sense. And like, Maybe we have our I answer. mean, like, this is uh, this is game changer, like, really. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> Well, maybe, yeah. Well, um, yeah. I, I just, I just, I'm just very impressed with the uh, with the progression you've made over the tournament, and uh, I just think, ev like, I think every single time I've seen you go to the stage, you got better. So maybe the grand yeah, finals can also I follow tired. that path. <laughs> now I am very tired. Uh, fortunately, we have a break because the, we have two exciting matches go that are going to be played right now. But uh, yeah, I need to take a good break and uh, be even better for the grand finals. Uh, when you look at the Patik playing, it's very. Scary. Carry, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so learning about this like music strategy for you is that something that's helped you when you're practicing before I mean, this tournament as well? Or no, no, not at all. It's just that I love the fucking music they put <laughs> like on like the the music. Like the focus music is so incredible. Like I'm playing when I'm playing chill at home. I'm just using the lyrics too, but it's because it's chill, you know. It's like yeah, I don't know. Oh, I hope GeoGuessr puts out the playlist for you guys yeah. to find this after. <laughs> yeah, I hope like for the World Cup, like each player can choose uh, his music. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like that's going to be a fair consideration in the future. want to make sure all of you are set up to do your best, but now you are going to take some time off, prepare yeah. for this final against Topotic. Uh, just just relax, kick your feet up. Are you going to yeah. grind anything in particular? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm taking a break like here. Uh, and uh, I just uh, need to get some energy back. So, yeah. All right, we'll stop sapping your energy here on the desk, but big thank you to Potter for coming out, for explaining what goes into such excellent play. Play that has taken him all the way to the grand final now against Topotic. I'm sure it's going to be a banger. But also, he was doing a fantastic job as a desk analyst, talking about the fact that 
he gets a break because we are heading into our two last chance matches. Now, uh, before we head to break, I do want to tease these last chance matches. They're going to be incredible. They're best of fives. Chicago Geographer, you played in and won your last chance match. So I'll give you the final word on this one. Yeah, these last chance matches are insanely... Uh, the pressure is on. This is the last chance. As the name says, it's the last chance to make it to the World Cup. So these players are going to fight their absolute hardest here. Uh, I know that I did, and it's insanely stressful, but we've seen these guys play already in this weekend, and we know they're going to do great. Absolutely, and it's only a short break away, so grab a snack, grab a drink, and come right back because we're getting into those right after this. Last year, history was written, and a champion was crowned. But every story has an end, and every champion must once again rise to the top. In the halls of royalty and where innovation is praised, a new master will ascend the throne. Welcome to the City Hall of Stockholm and the finals of the GeoGuessr World Cup 2024. Secure your tickets now and be part of this historic event. See you in Stockholm.
It's Championship Sunday here at the GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals. And we have certainly seen matches worthy of it throughout. We have now narrowed down our finalist players for the tournament, but we're gonna take a bit of a hard left and head on over into our last chance matches. Because I think the one thing our matches so far was missing today was the danger of elimination. Fortunately, these next two matches have danger in spades as well as skilled players. I'm joined on the desk still, fortunately, by Zigzag and Chicago Geographer. They have not escaped. I've got them shackled now, and we're gonna finish out this day in style. I definitely think that it is a possibility we are gonna see some more shakeups in these last chance qualifiers. Let's pull up the bracket as we discuss it because I wanna throw this over to you, Zigzag. You know these players so well. You've seen the upsets. You've been through the Americas Regional. What knowledge can you bring to bear on these last chance matches, starting with Zalik and Armani? So yes, the Salak Armani match is really interesting. Both players favoring themselves on the no moving formats. Uh, whereas Salak, you know, given that he'd said that about himself, ended up having a really strong performance on moving with, I think he said up to five, five Ks or something like that. It was around that many. Any case, a really, really uh, impressive performance. Armani, on the other hand, sh shone in the NMPZ format, his favorite, whereas he did have struggles in the moving. But that being said, you know, Salak still does have some holes, I think, in the gameplay in moving, so it's not over for Armani on those ones just yet. That's that's the state of the matchup, in my opinion. Also, last chance for Hungary, last chance for the Netherlands to have a representative in the finals. Well, actually, you know, Consus will be there. Debra will be there. Everyone's going to the World Cup. Who am I saying? Somebody gets two representatives. And Chicago Geographer, we've talked a bit about what it's like to be in this position. I've asked you your perspective, having come through the Americas in exactly the same way. A little bit of insight onto what these players might be struggling with or how they can best set themselves up for this. Yeah, I, as I've said, I I was super stressed out about this match. You know, definitely not the position you want to find yourself in in these qualifiers, but it's nice to have that last chance in any case. So these players are going to be just locking in as hard as they can. They're going to play their hardest, and that's up, that's what I did. I think that's all I can do at this point is just one last insane game from them. Oh, man, and they get a full best of five to showcase that insanity. Fortunately, if you've just gotten a taste of GeoGuest over this weekend, well, welcome to the community. And if you're a hardcore fan, well, you should already know this, but we've got the Grand Finals, the Championship, the GeoGuessr World Cup coming to Stockholm in September. And we've got a chance for you to grab tickets at a discount this weekend. So you can head on over to geoguessercom slash world cup and pick those up for 25% off. You know what, I think even if you don't, you're not sure you're gonna be free then, just buy the tickets. Don't even worry about it, just, just keep them on layaway. You know, it could get really popular, maybe, I don't know, scalping, is it possible? Can I, can I endorse that? Zigzag, you looking a little frowny at me. I uh, like to make never. money, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it might be the tactics, I don't know. <laughs> These tickets are only gonna get hotter as our players qualify, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting to see you play there as well when we see you make it through the Asia Championships. I will endeavor to make that a reality, I really will. Yeah, we're gonna be really pushing for that one there, but it's gonna be a banger of an event, whether you are watching from home or hopefully watching from the incredible stands with us. I think it's so electric uh, watching GeoGuessr live. We were at Space last year and it was just full of energy. So you wanna make the effort. But speaking of a room full of energy, the studio right now is about to fill up with our next two players and their huge personalities. Let's get to know them a little better in the pre-match interview. Armani's skill set in NM and NMPZ is definitely very scary. I feel like I should have an advantage in the moving games. I'm assuming that he will send quickly, so I will have to hurry up, so that favors him, I think. He was really strong in his group stage games, especially in the moving games, so that's where I have to really look out for him. I feel like I'm a more experienced player than him, so I think that will definitely help me out, especially in the no moving games, and if we get to it, the uh, NMPZ game as well. Now, I have a question for both of you about these players and about how long it takes to accumulate a workable geo-guesser knowledge pool inside of one skull, because both of them cite themselves as relatively recently come to the game. 20, uh, 2022 was when Salek started playing. Uh, Armani had a bit of experience, but really came back to it in 2022. In only two short years, they find themselves here at the EMEA Regional Finals. 
tell me about what it's like to, to be accumulating this knowledge. Did you think it was possible to do it that fast? And is there some advantage to being that recent? Yeah, you know, I think what's also important to think about is how the community has developed over time. You know, in the last couple of years, we've had so much knowledge come together uh, with different tip websites and different Discord servers that people have gathered together. So I think joining the community more recently gives you a little bit of a leg up, whereas I've been playing since maybe 2017. And back then, the knowledge was just completely different to what it is today. So if you if you join recently, you can really accumulate knowledge quickly. Uh, whereas for someone like myself, it took quite a while to get to the level I'm at today. It that's right, and also with a younger community, it means that you're not that far behind. Maybe in three years, it's actually going to be quite hard to catch up in the way that Armani and Sarlacc have been able to. I think like things like Plonka have really, um, Plonka.net as a website has really helped to improve quickly. The knowledge is all put together in basically one place. There's a couple of places you can look and, and, and basically you can get most of what it takes to become a pro just on those sites. Um, and then also just like if you're willing to put in the grind, it's one of those games where you're not really limited by, you know, you're, you're, you're limited by your time if you can dedicate a whole lot of it to it. We've seen the best players in the world do it in a year and a half, a year, so it is possible. Yeah, and if you're thinking this might be something that you want to try out, we have a link pinned in chat. You can take the challenge, no login or account necessary to see if you like the GeoGuessr feel, if maybe you're going to put in that work to come here next year. But two players really have put in the work, and I think they're ready to start coming out to play. So let's bring out Zalik to start. Are like welcome back to the big stage. Honestly, your performance was fantastic in the group stages. It was a, it was a shame to see you come out in third place. Um, those moving games I emphasized. What do you have to say about the moving games going into today? I want to feel as confident in the moving games as I did yesterday, and I think that will be the key today. Ab absolutely, absolutely. And then heading into your game against Armani, you kind of mentioned that you're going to be watching out for those faster guesses. Do you have anything else tactically that you got in your mind? Uh, not really. I, this will be the, the thing that I will pay most attention to. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, so like, best of luck in the games and take a seat. I'm here with Armani, the representative from the Netherlands. Well, Armani, you know, you've discussed kind of your strengths and weaknesses. Is there any style of round that you're hoping will show up more today? Um, for the style of round I'm hoping for is mostly uh, rural rounds because I feel like I'm most comfortable without like a lot of info. So I'm hoping for like not a, as many urban rounds. Absolutely. And Armin, is there anyone you want to shout out today before you head into your game? Uh, I want to do a shout out to the GeoGuessr Hype House, Music Friends, and Miracle Whips. Absolutely. Well, Armin, thank you very much for the interview and good luck. Thank you. Two great players here that I hate to send one home at the end of this. Both of them telling us they're proficient at US guessing. Both of them a little hesitant about Indonesia. But I would say the separate thing here is Armani identifies as an NMPZ favored player. So knowing that we might potentially have two non-moving rounds and we definitely only have one NMPZ, well, Zalik seems pretty well set up here for just going off confidence. Yeah, it definitely seems that like he's a very confident player right now. Uh, as we've seen, we we know he, he's a great no-moving player as well as a moving player as well. We've seen him uh, establish himself in that way. So depending on how things go, we could definitely see a th um, you see this going to NMPZ. Uh, I think these players are very closely matched, and yeah, Salak has definitely proved himself here at the tournament. I would hope. Yeah, and I mean, Armin is definitely one of these players who's more easy to analyze. It's pretty clear what his strengths and weaknesses are. Unfortunately, the format doesn't really benefit at this stage of the tournament what he's into. So he just has to hope, again, what he said about those urban rounds. You can see he sends most of his guesses in in an average of 30 seconds. So, And he's also losing a lot of rounds. That's what happens when you send in quickly. You go for those big wins and uh, you take many small losses because you know the general region, but you don't know exactly where it is. So yeah, I mean, that, that stat is no surprise to me. It's not a reflection of his quality, although in the moving ones, it somewhat, I guess it somewhat is. But uh, yeah, we're just hoping that this goes to five. I was wrong about my last prediction. You know, I just hope it goes all the way this time.
Oh, that's such an interesting kind of breakdown, though, and I hope as the stats evolve for the World Cup, we do get to see more of that because we see people being a little bit more free with their guesses in NMPZ, even not moving games, because we know a lot of those victories are picked up and the big disparities whenever that comes into play. So it doesn't quite exactly reflect how much people are getting wrong. You know, maybe we look at some point spreads in the future, things like that. But the point is, these players more closely matched than even the stats could indicate. So it's up to the players themselves to differentiate themselves, and we get to watch. Let's hand it on over to the casters and get right into the entertainment. Thank you, Rachel Armani versus Zalek. Uh, Trevor, we're getting in a lot of new viewers. Let's remind everybody at home, this is our first of two last chance qualifiers True. for that World Cup late this year in September. Yeah, these games mean, I don't want to say they, the ga these games have a higher stake than any games that we've seen today, quite literally. If you lose this, you go home. If you win this, you go to Stockholm. Exactly. Um, and, you know, being able to say you are the uh, king of EMEA geo-guessing is important, but really the players are here to secure their spot at the World Cup. And this is the last chance for Zalek and Armani. That it is. And it is a best of five as well. Best of five. So we'll see a move, no move, move, no move, and then PZ. And we if did, we get there, Trevor. If we get there. We've seen a lot of, we've seen a couple of, you know, game or five game series today, and none of those have gone around four yet. Not yet. Perhaps this will be the first one. Okay, everybody at home, get hype. This is the Geo Guest of World Cup Europe, Middle East, and Africa Regional finals and the first of two last chance qualifiers to get to the World Cup. We've got Hungary and Zalek and Netherlands and Armani. Best of five, Trevor, when you're ready, starting off with move. Game one move, Zalek versus Armani. And we're starting in Italy. Looks like it. This looks like a pretty distinct city that if you move, you can find info. You can, and we're going downhill. Usually going downhill is better when you're playing moving. But we'll see, both players are doing the fast technique here to get as fast as they can downhill. We turn around, but Armani, it's not like that. Is going, down, going downhill better? Is Armani. Going downhill better because you're more likely to find roads and signs yes, and stuff? Yes, yes. Okay. More likely to get to big roads. Armani just isn't sitting down south, not giving Salak enough time to find any information, and he has to force to make region guess. And he's water hedging? No, he's going Sicily. Potential <laughs> points here. Zalek closer. Round one, no multi, so damage minimized, but still, it's a solid start for the Hungarian. Solid. We move on to Japan. We'll see both players immediately zoom in into the poles to see like the plates and transformers. Both players looking for anything that they can find, and we move back to there zoom in go. on the plates. There we go. Both at the exact same time, Trevor, you called it. And we do see Armani. And do we see this level of quick gameplay from him again? <sighs> we do. It. He sends it, Trevor. But he saw those plates, and he moved straight away. And Salik right there, right with him. Oof. Just slightly more south. Both players making good guesses here. And this is the kind of fast gameplay we like to see here, Paula. I like it. Round three. Armani with a fashionable send there. We have Brazilian ladder poles here. Both players will obviously know the country is Brazil. Brazil is a big country. Where do you guess in Brazil is the next question. We, we, we all move the same direction here. Zooming on the sign. Chato. Let's see. Presumably, it looks pretty urban. It looks southern. Usually, you get southern on poles in Brazil. In the south, you get more rounded poles. Is that the case here? Maybe. Maybe you go Minas. Maybe you go Sao Paulo. Something like that. North of Sao Paulo. Both players started by looking at the signage. After contemplating it for a bit, they've gone off down the road. Oh, Zalik found his way back to the same sign. He is, and he's going to use that, and he's going to zoom in. He likes it more this time. He is going to zoom in, Trevor. He's scanning for Machado, I'm assuming. Outside Bella Horizonte, or inside. We have 13 seconds, and Armand has not opened his map yet, which is usually the other way around, and he's found something. And he's going max south. I don't agree with this, but it could be the case. He's slightly making it more north, and I think Zalik has an upper hand here. Let's see. There's a big difference. Oh, it's in between the two. But in between the two, they're cut in half. And their four points are minimal in round three. Could have been worse. Round four. This is going to be Argentina. We have the blue gen four. Both players straight away off down the road. Arch poles. Looking for anything. 
with more Vancouver. information. And I think we just see a standing fake as here by Armani. Armani. Pushing the pace, Trevor. I think if Armani wants to win the moving games, that's the kind of thing he has to do. And he just has to hope Salak doesn't find it. And they're both in some regions again. He's slightly more close to BA here, but he is going to be... And it's Armani this time. Let's go back to what we heard from Zalek before the matchup. He knew that Armani would very likely push the pace. And so in that sense, you'd expect he's ready for it. And right now, putting up a strong defense. Let's see if the defense is the same. What's this? Well, obviously it's Turkey, but then you go where in Turkey is this? They're already in round five. We're going quickly. Yeah, and is he going to instant zoom and just go Armenia border? And he's locked in. I like it. I mean, if you're a Salik, you're like, what did he see? 10 seconds. Oh! He's going, he's going Syria border. Quite Someone, a difference oh wait, here. Armani doesn't like his guess. He's shaking his head. 3x damage. No. Oh, but it worked out, Armani. Nothing to shake your head at. Could that be it? No, no. not quite. Close to 5k. Armani second guessing his guess. Goodness gracious. And he has, a, and that's a quick, that's where playing fast plays to his advantage. Absolutely. As we move into another big country where we could see game either way, potentially. We'll see. There's lots of information here. If you know, you know. Looking at the polls, sometimes polls are more valuable. Looks like Sumatra. We'll see. Zalek spending time to copy pot in anywhere. Visible. Properly study that signage. Armani looking for other clues. He's oh, both at the same intersection, both at the same sign. Couldn't quite read in time there to see what they're reading. They're just too fast, Trevor. Too fast. Armani confused. Too smooth. 30 seconds down now in round number six. Another sign there picked up on by Zalek. This is, seconds. yeah, this is, I mean, Armani can get one slightly better guess here and he, he, he looks clueless. Shaking his head, does not like it, Armani. So, I mean, they both know nothing here valuable to any player. It looks like five. Sumatra, zoom in. Oh. You have a water hedge and a Sumatra guess. Different locations. It's oh, Zalek. And Zalek, fantastic job. 3.5x market, it's, it's enough damage. First game goes the way of Zalek and Hungary. Wow. Dude, that was so it. fast. I mean, yeah, these players, you know, when you get these type of players playing together, they wanna, they wanna go fast. You can't, you gotta respect it. Zalek was ready. He was ready for the pace that Armani was pressing. And then when Armani sort of slowed down there, it was Zalek that came out on top. It was. Oh my goodness. And that was Armani, yeah, constantly putting, I would love to see his average round guess. Average time guess, it had to be below 15 seconds on average. Do you think he's gonna keep it up in no move? You would expect so. I think it comes when it comes to NMPZ, you kind of take your time, but he basically played that as if it was no moving. So. <sighs> to, yeah, I guess in a way. But let's see if he can keep it up. Here we are, no more moving. Everyone, we've yet to see a person that has lost game one or round one win a game in the rest of the series so far today. At least in the best of fives, so that is. We're back in Indo. Back in Indo. Both players spinning just a 360. Armani, I think he's going to stick with the strategy, Trevor. Is he going to lock it in? Not quite yet. Zalek now going fast, but Armani is the first to lock. 10 seconds, Trevor. Good points but they're so close, so it won't be. And look how close they are. So they're close. And it's actually Salak that gets closer there in the end. 57. Round two. Keep it going. Keep it up. This is where the multis start. And where things do get interesting. Armani zooming himself as he zooms in game. Do you see anything you like, Mr. Armani? Both players scanning for any sort of info. Neither player yet to open their map. Armani first. Yeah, I'm actually in between Belgium and Netherlands, but it should just be Netherlands here. 20 seconds. Armani starting to place, refine, where he thinks we're at. 
as we approach 10 seconds. Zalek, north in the Netherlands. Can't quite see the distance between them. We're about to find out, though. Not Is he moving much. to Denmark? Oh, he might do. Last minute switch? No. They both stay in, and in fact, the location cuts them almost in half with Armani being a bit closer. That, I mean, yeah, Netherlands, small. What's well, not small? Australia. Double damage, this is Trevor. A movie at 1360 panorama. Sun beating down on both players. Zalek. It looked like it was going to be an AZ. The Southwest it's an Australia. Intriguing location here. It's definitely not South Australia with the poles. So then you have to go Wa. It's like a weird, like something else that I don't see with this red soil. And we can see that it's a pretty close. Like Two X. East West Road. Ten seconds. More north. Armani's closer. I think that'll be a decent hit. Yes, it will. Almost 700 points of damage. Those add up very, very quickly. Into round number four. Kenya, we have the Kenya. Don't think that's Kenya fall card. Could be, but we just have the massive Kenya car itself. And he's going max west, and he's the type to instant in this. So we might Is see he? a lock in in the next couple seconds. Yep, he water hedges it, then sends it. Looks like Zalik's in a relatively similar location. How much distance is between them? Armani, Armani closer. 2.5x. This is... I mean, it Almost 1k. Up. It definitely does add up. It adds up and it adds up quick. Let's keep it up. Let me look into next round. This is a beautiful... beautiful what a beautiful mountain range here. The question is, what mountain range is it? Let's see if the players are in the copyright here. Rainbow and Rhodes in between mountains. Name a more iconic duo. I will wait. You can't. I'm just kidding, you probably can. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> pretty iconic duo. Pretty. Yeah. Talking about pretty, yes, very pretty location. Beautiful location. Both players just scanning right now. I, I don't see any signage. Is there any hidden signage that I've missed, Trevor? It doesn't we matter. Have Austria and the France. Because Armani's locked in. There's a big difference here. Three times multi now, and Trevor. Austria and the France, and he wants to move to the Alps. In France, he, he doesn't. It's Spain. Armani's done it. Pyrenees. That's a nice bit of damage. 3K. And this is the second time in a row he's had Salik at like 1K health. But can he do it this time? Can he hold on to that lead? Not going to be possible here, I don't think, to eliminate him. And what looks like just like a pretty standard lift or Baltic, that is, at least. If these pulls might be an instant send here. Well, he is AZing. And he is inst descending. He's going to Estonia. Zonic's going Estonia. Wait, he could lose here. 3.5x. He oh, he's closer. That's going to be game, Trevor. That's game. 1-1. One, one, we're tied up. We will go in, or sorry, wow. I should say, go back to moving and with that, both players, even Stevens. And that would bring us to a guaranteed another another moving game, or no move game. Yep. Which would be, I mean, if it's anything like that, if Armani can pull off just another win here, we'll probably see the same strategy that he's implemented time and time before. Quick, guessing. Let's keep it up. This will be moving, so we're back into game three, which is moving. You have 10 rounds. It's a good 6,000 points off the other player. <sighs> game three, back to move. Context for those just now tuning in. If you lose this series here, you're eliminated from the, the chance to, to get to Stockholm to, to compete in the World Cup. This is the last chance, the first of two last chance qualifiers to get to that World Cup in Stockholm later this year. If you win the series, you advance. You lose, you go ho home empty handed. It's like German. Germany here. You want to remember their German street signs. We have an instant sent here by Armani once again playing and keeping up with that fast pace. Zalek does not let it phase him though. He's going to run down the time he has left. Different location, further south. The round one. Berlin. It's closer to Armani. Maybe all the sand on the road was a good hit. Let's keep it going. 
Round two. Looks like Russia. Yeah, Russia. it does. Paula acting like... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, man, I felt that one. Yeah. This would be a... Uh... Wouldn't have said it after if I didn't mean it, brother. That's facts. Well, okay, this will be interesting. And we do see Jin for winter coverage, which is the kind of region that Armani is instantly guessing in here. Sonic was ready for this. This pace that he thought Armani would He's moving set. slow. He's not using fast pace moving here. He's, Five seconds. And he's going in the same exact region as Armani. The composure like of Zalek when under pressure being tested, and right now he's passing the tests. Keep it up. It's a close game. Good round win for him there. Round three, moving to Mexico. This looks like US border or something of the like. We'll see. How can you tell straight away that this know. is potentially it on the border? Like, it looked like California, you know, I don't know. Mm. It, it could easily not be. Hotel Alamo. Not time for sleep though, Armani. He'll be more awake and prepared than ever. Out. The sign there, another... Area codes, ever. Business. I feel like in the next 10 seconds we see Armani zoom in and guess. This is uncharacteristic to make it to the 30 second mark. Well, we're in the 20 second mark now. And he's uh, at this point, Monterey. you admit, Did it say Monterey? Yeah. It does, yeah, and we're going to be right there. Send is locked in. That's a great guess. Wait! Oh, Zalek! Oh, no. Oh, this is a big difference. Four seconds. Is he going more south? 2x damage. Trevor. It's Oh, is that a 5k? Quite literally close. Oh, three points off. What a guess. And you are rewarded greatly, Armani. Huge damage going the way of Zalek. He's locked in. He is locked in. Zalek, though, it's not over. And he knows it. Let's move on. It's round four. France. Belgium. Both players. Oh, Armani's gonna send it. He's he's gonna lock this in in the next ten, next five even. Uh, yeah, right, literally. No. Yeah, yeah. Trevor, I mean, not even you can five. See it coming. You can see it coming. Oh my! He wants to take this game, but the scruff of its neck. And we see a, we see a slightly southern, more southern guess here by Salik. But we'll, you know, either player could be closer here. It comes to Salik. And it's Salik. Yep. With 2.5x, that will be some decent damage. Close to 900. Yes. Yes, it will be. And something we have not seen today, or at least in this in their games, I don't think yet, is a Peru. We have the new Gen 4 Peru here. Beautiful coverage. This is, yeah, you know, when Gen 4, when Peru got updated, it's like, wow, I actually really want to visit here. You should. And yeah, one day. Both players obviously get no Peru. We have the Tuk Tuks, we have the black and white stripe poles, we have the Arj, we have the Peru poles here too as well, with the white painted brick. Not much information here, Trevor. Armani's going on a jog. Yeah. Sprint at the speed of light, in fact. And you can notice we're also going different directions. In these moving games, sometimes it does, like, as I keep saying, it comes down to who goes the right way sometimes. Absolutely. Oh, and Armani has found some signage. Is it enough, though? Some handwritten, some government printed. Another poster on the wall. No, does not yet want to zoom in on his map. 20 seconds left. Zalek, he's looking at the north there. Of Peru, I think Armani are in a slightly similar location. No, but tracking south. Both tracking south. 10 seconds, Trevor. This could be big points. Zalik needs. I, I, I'm not actually sure who's. Are they close? They're close again. They're close again. They're close again. They are. They are. They are. Oh! Wait. No. No, no. No, no, no. Did they just they were on top right on each top other? of each other. Share 54 points. Are they. Look at that. We, me and you both thought, like, did someone yeah. move to the 5k last second? That's that's hilarious. Ay, 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 Zalek and Armani, keeping us on our toes. What a beautiful leaf. Looks like Indo. Let's find out. And you can see the frustration in Armani as he previously lost a lot of points in Indo, and we have an instant by Zalek, and but they're still close. Yeah, they are close. It's still actually going to be a, a non insignificant amount of points down 500 almost. Yeah, when Zalik is behind, those little bits of damage. Like, look, let's say this ends up going to a, a tenth round. Those, those rounds are crucial where you claw back it's some points. It's so important. And you make that margin smaller. It's so important, especially 
In rounds like this, though, that could mean nothing. And what looks like, well, it will be a Northeast Peru. We have those ladder pulls there. It's super dry, which is very common Northeast. A great little ad there. Both players are going to be looking for area codes or, you know, province names, state names. Anything that they can grasp to make a good guess here. I think you commit pretty max Northeast, low key, like on the lowest of keys. Area code. Instant lock in. Armani. It took a bit longer than normal, but there he dived in. Zalek, will you follow? And then will you rise or drown with five seconds left? Both close to each other, Trevor. Close. And it, wait. Oh! Zalek on the money. Holy. And with quadruple damage, it's a strong hit. And not enough to take the lead, but brings them very close it, to each other. Like he just like clicked their last second unsuringly, but like also kind of like he did know. You have to give props where props are due. Absolutely. And this is where those points might not mean much. Round eight. You can see the visible frustration in Armani's face. Maybe he's not the best player. These two players, this is their last chance to get to the World Cup. And this is probably gonna be big points, Paul. We're at we're at 200 point difference between each players. But these both of these players, I presume, can read, read the relic. And we'll see Armani scan. Armani looking outside of Moscow to the northeast. Does he recognize this location, this area? Ah, he's struggling, he's in pain. He's not sure. A rare late commit from Armani. Zalek yet to open his map. And with 15 seconds left on the clock, it's anybody's game. Armani does eventually lock in just northeast of Moscow. Can Zalek respond? Look how close they are. No, he's going slightly more north. With 4.5 Is he moving back Trevor. south? He's even more north. Is he? Oh my god. Armani ends up being closer. No, Zalek's closer. Oh, sorry. Apology. Yeah, Zalek closer. And now he takes the lead back going into the penultimate round, round nine. And then I look at round nine, and I think no one wins here either in Cambodia. Right? Car? Yeah, Cambodian car. I mean, what is this, though? Is this Southeast Pocket? What is this? Non pin? North? We'll see. 5x damage. This, you're not going to be able to. Yeah, I mean, like, this is pretty much a. Can you find the main road here? Okay, we did find the main road. And Armani's at dead end. He has to turn around. He said, what? 48 seconds. Both players will know it's Cambodia, but Salek getting the information first, and he's going to use that. Salek has found a roundabout. Armani's made him zoom deep, deep onto the map, and he's going to send that. He's going to lock it in. Actually, he could pick up. Oh, is that ever enough? Oh, Armani, you had a bit more time, and yes. Salek so close to the 5K, ending up in game two to one. The Hungarian does it, and he's one game away from securing his spot at the GeoGuessr World Cup. One game away, but that one game is a no-move game where Armani, Armani, <sighs> Armani did take it. It was close. Calm, Every time calm. he does that, I think he's doing like the LeBron stomp. No, the calm. It's, it's like a calm, calm. Yeah, I, just, I just imagine it. I think some, um, you know, like top flight footballers, it's a common celebration oh. after a goal. Oh, I see. If I remember correctly. I see. And Hungary, a huge footballing nation, big mm, culture. Soccer? Of <clears throat> sorry, say that again. Sorry, sorry. Try, try one more time, Trevor. Football. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so perhaps echoing one or some of his heroes. But uh, right now, yeah, he's close to being a hero for himself. He needs one more game to get his ticket to paradise. The paradise of the World Cup. Game four, back in no move. You get one panorama. Both players will know this. It's quite free Ghana tape. This is, yeah, this is where things will get interesting. And, you know, and when you get in these no-move games, blunders are more likely to happen. So many signs here, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, it's like almost an over information. information overload. Yeah, that's, that's what happens. It is what happens. And you don't know what to digest. You don't know what's valuable and what's not. So, like, what's he zooming in? The Ghana tape there he's zooming in on? Yeah, sometimes the Ghana tape there can give you different regions because of the tape changes in different yep. regions of, of Ghana. But that's kind of not sure, you know? It's round one, no multi. 
It is no move. This is a... Uh, 10 seconds remaining be, now. We have a north guess here. I think it is north, like northwest. And we have a tamale guess here. He moves back down. He moves south. He, he, he burns all over the place. It's south. Acro. Are you in capital? 352 points. You can't be mad at it. Can't. For Armani to score the first round win. Sorry, yeah, uh, round win of game four. We have Poland's bollards here. On the, the number on those bollards will give you information, but nothing that's really like usable. One, one oh, wait, he's, I, I didn't even see what Armani did there. He just, uh, Poland, not really region guess what country. You click middle and hope for the best, I think, is the plan here. And kind of a, both players doing the same kind of strategy there. This is our fastest pace, at least from the ones that I've been involved in casting. Like, this is the fastest 100%. pace. Maybe the, the new gen players, you know, it's uh, maybe the, the no move Andes. But it's so, good though. It pushes everyone forward. It does. It does. This looks like uh, what you go Peru, northern Peru, Tierpoto, something like that. Anything else? Yep. Look at Salak just calling out the Tierpoto too. I'm not sure where else you go here. Looking at the rocks, the vegetation. Armani kind of confuzzled. He's wondering where should I go. Zoom in. I will say, out of I like his guess. The entire field that we've had here, the Europe, Middle East, and Africa regional finals. Zalik is definitely one of the players with the least amount of expression change. He's, at least to me, he appears so calm and yeah. collected at all times. 100%. And we see that in the next last last uh, chance game too. And there's. Is he moving to Colo? No, he's, they're both staying in Terrapoto, kind of that region of northern Peru. And if that is the case, we'll see minimal points. Unless he moves last second. Is he going to move last second? <laughs> wow. Bolivia. Oh, I mean, Armani was looking very frustrated, but if I'm not mistaken, he was looking more, more north than his current pin, and the location was further south. I wonder what the frustration is there, Trevor. Well, the frustration is they didn't get the country right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're like, uh. Fair play, fair play. I don't know. Maybe, uh. Just disappointment. General disappointment. Bolivia is low key the forgotten country sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next round. This will not be forgotten. And this is about as free as an Ecuador as you can get with all the bollards, double guardrails, signposts. Aerial zoom. But you, stand, you can still pick up points. And we do see Armani going northeast. Armani, you think you got the road, buddy? See a north guess here by Zalek, too. It's locked in. They're so close. Two roads that are pretty close to each other. And it's actually sort of on a road south that both of their roads end up connecting too. That's funny. Round four. Armani doing a small bit of damage to Zalek. Let's move in. Next round, 3x damage. This is where points mean so much. Oh, baby, a triple. This is Spain. You go southern Spain. What do you do here? What do you do here? Armani, looking at the lens, it's mainly just landscape guessing here. And we do see a Madrid. We do see a north of Madrid guess here, which will bring us to around six, presuming it's close to both players. Armani to lock in first. Zalek second, and it's Armani closer with the triple multi. Even then, not that much damage. A very tight game here of no move. And I'm looking at this next round. As we move into round six, I'm thinking, what an interesting location here. And also, what a base location. This is the only 360 panorama the players will be getting, to guess. And it should just be Russia. Not sure where else you go here. Maybe East Russia by Mongolia. Where? Armani. Confused. This is... Southern Russia makes sense, actually. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. How dry it is. And that's... Yeah, I think Armani oh. right on the dot. Could he be on the dot? Yeah, I think that. I think that. I mean, that's super. Then both players will get there, though. Both Can players will get there. Find yep. it as well. More north. The 3.5. There could still be massive points. Yeah, though. there could be big points here. And oh, Armani. Armani! That is incredible. So close to the 5K. Huge damage as well, thanks to the multi. Armani, you've got to keep yourself alive if you want to see NMPZ.
he's 2,000 points away from bringing this. That Two. was such a sick guess, bro. Such, and that's where he thrives. He thrives in those no-move locations like that. And he's just he's just a couple guesses away from bringing it to NNPZ. But those multis are building now, but Trevor. Even building. though Zalik is behind, he could make it happen. But Armani, that's a big AZ. It is. Not Here, yet ascend. Where, so this should be Colo. Wait, I didn't see where Armani is. Did. Is he in Colo? He is. Okay. Yes. Western. I, I love the Western Colo call. Western Colo call out here. Salik has yet to open his map yet. Where's he going? He's going Ecuador. Oh, he's going this Ecuador. Massive points. Nope, he's going nope. Colo. And they're somewhat close again. Somewhat close. Oh, oh, the multi. Oh. Zalik, what a brilliant late guess under the gun. 1,700 points. Last second. How many times is Zalik just going to last second plonk on the 5K? Bro, I'm telling you, this kid is so cool and calm. He, he was ready. He said it before, like, in our video before the match where we were speaking to him. Like, he was like, I think Armadi's going to be pushing the pace, and I'm ready. And he's proving that. It wasn't just words. He talks the talk. And walks. Talks the walk. The walk, yes, Trevor. Armani also doing the same with how quick he's guessing. We have a Philly here. Water east. He's trying to read the new compass. You go south, you go mid now. What do you do here? You click Cebu. You go Luzon. It's for them to find out. And we see a Cebu. Zoom in here by Salik, and we see a minute out. And he's hedging, he's looking the coast, skating the coast here to figure out where he wants to go. And Salik is zooming in confidently on this island. You're looking for the land, I think, on the east. So many islands. And this is massive points. If someone goes off the side of Philly here with 20 seconds left, you have to commit something. And Armani looks at the road here to line up something that's going his direction, which is slightly east west with water east. And he cannot find a road that lines up. And he's circling Mindanao, saying it could be here. Zalik locks in. This is massive points. Someone comes away. Is he moving? Where's he going to stay? Five. Who three. is it? Does Zalik advance? No, oh, Armani. Armani, what a guess. It's sort of in between, but Armani's closer. And we will see NMPZ two to two. Zalik and Armani putting on a show. Action back and forth. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone at home, this is Competitive GeoGuessr. What a better way for last chance to end than in the last chance. Or oh, in the, in the PC for man. The last chance. I mean, talk about W script writers. <laughs> like, actually. Well, earlier, you told me you're writing the script. Yeah, that's why it's W script writer. Because I'm, I'm just giving yourself a dub, yeah? Yeah, I wouldn't not bring it to, bring it to NMPZ. Fair, fair. All right. All right, let's set the scene one more time for everybody at home. This is our first of two last chance qualifiers. Four players. Only two can still go to the World Cup in September. And right now, this is the final game of five between Zalek and Armani. One will be going to Stockholm in September for that World Cup, and one will be going home with nothing. Round one, game five, NMPZ. NMPZ stands for no move, pan, or zoom, meaning you get one photo. And this is that one photo that you do get. And who can guess the states better? Let's find out. Yeah, you're right, Trevor. We should tell people at home, if there are new people that have never seen GeoGuessr before, NMPZ is no move, no pan, no zoom. So all they get this is, is this image ahead of them. Lock, Nebraska. Lock, Iowa. Close. Iowa. Slow and steady. And, but the thing we've seen consistently in these NPC games, do those 400 points really mean much? They can. They absolutely can. They can. They can. And this will be interesting to see in India. Presumably driving left, yeah. Armani said he wants to punch his... Okay. He doesn't? Okay. See, you can hear the sigh through the southern southern guest here by Zalik. Northern guest here, and it's in between the two. But still, I think that favors Zalik just by a couple hundred points. It does. It does. Zalek, after two rounds, has achieved almost a 1,000-point lead. This is where things get interesting. A steady lead. Can he build it more? It's round three of ten. And if you see, you get one screenshot. One photo to make a guess. 
And this will be... Oh, man. No Ar points. Armani looked at the screen for, like, barely Both a second. Both players will get Taiwan here with this concrete and these roads and the overall vegetation. Yes. It is Taiwan, so... The point, minimal. Let me move on to the next round very quickly here. We have a single yellow road line indicating Canada. We can also see the transformer in the t in the in the left side of the screen here that isn't facing the road. And we also have corn. <laughs> Armani. And so this guess by Armani is the most logical guess there under these guess under these circumstances. Armani looked at the image for about six seconds, eight seconds before he locked it in. Zalek now has about eight seconds left for him to lock in as well. Quite close to each other. Oh, but Armani is just better at the end of round four. And a 2.5x multi means that that is 3,580 points of damage. Wow. That's a big lead. 3,000 point difference going into round five where every single guest counts. Armani, can he do it? And this next location is easily the location to end it all. Trevor, where are we at? Urban USA. Let's think about this for a second. It's a lot north. of the US, <laughs> urban US can look very similar. Yeah, it looks north. How north do you go? How north do you go? You go Minnesota, you go Wisconsin, you go Michigan, you go Ohio. I think you go, can we see the plates actually at all? Trevor, I think what you're trying to spell out is that there's a, a vast range. He's locked here. in Chicago. Armani locks in first. We have an Ohio. I think it's more north, but Armani could win here if he's closer and it's actually more west. If he stays in Kentucky, Lexington, don't think so. One second, who is it? Armani! Is that enough? Surely that's enough. He's clapping. That's going to be gonna enough. It's going to be enough. Armani, you've done it. It took all five games. It took an unbelievable NMPZ performance. Shout out to Zalik, but the man of the moment is on screen now, and he will be coming back to Stockholm for the World Cup in September. Oh my, that was absolutely sick. That's how you do it right there. That is how you do it. I mean, when you get to NMPZ games like that, that's that's where, you know, the good guesses rise, and that's, that's you have to earn every single guess there, and that's that's awesome. That's that what was, we like to see right there. Shout out to Google Maps. That's my guy. That's my guy. That was a uh, a hotly uh, contested last chance qualifier. We know Armani has now made it. Commiserations to Zalik. With that being said, let's head back to Rachel and the desk. Oh, I can't believe Christmas came. What is it, April? This is fantastic. We finally got to see an NMPZ in a best of five. And the winner of it, perfectly suiting our narrative, the only person in the entire tournament who actually claims to prefer an MPZ. And we saw exactly why with those pickups there. Were you happy seeing you were heading into that fifth round? Yeah, for sure. Um, I um, was uh, kind of expecting to lose the moving games. So um, when I was able to win the second no move game, I was really happy to be able to get to play some NMPZ for sure. All according to plan then. Yeah, Fantastic. Exactly. Massive congratulations on making it to the World Cup, Armani. I want to take you back to the moving games, though, because I feel like you had an above average performance in those ones, considering your weakness in that format. Could you take us through your thoughts on those two moving games? Yeah, um, I felt like pretty good with, um, especially the Turkey rounds. I saw it and I instantly just recognized like the mountain mountains there. So I just sent it as quick as possible. But then um, at the last round, we got Indonesia, which, as you may know, I'm pretty bad at. So I had no clue what to guess there. And um, for my second moving game, it was quite unfortunate that I got the Mexico round on low multis because I felt like I had like such a better guess there than him. But yeah, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, and thinking of that second moving game again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seemed like you were starting to guess fast and then uh, later on as it progressed, you moved around a bit more looking for information. Yeah, uh, um, I was trying to look for more information on the rounds where I wasn't sure at all, especially on the high multis, because mm -hmm. I don't want to send something like really quickly and then be like very wrong about it. Right. So that's why I wanted to kind of look for some info to make sure. We've seen so many matches today among players that are already qualified for the World Cup. This was one of the few matches that we get to see today where if you had lost, that would have been the end of your run. So how is that hanging over you and how does it feel to be over that hump? I'm, I'm very happy with um, the win for sure. Um, like I um, really expected to like, um, um, how do you say it? Like um, I was just really happy with the win, I'll say.
I'm so sorry. happy for I, you. I have no words, sorry. <laughs> if you have just a few more words, you have lots of people excited to see this victory for you at home. Anything you want to say to all them? Um, no, not really. All right, you want to be serious, out of words. Well, I'll let you rest, marinate in this victory. Make sure to give him some props on social media and his GeoGuessr accounts, of course, because he is moving on to the World Cup. Hopefully you all are too. You grabbed your tickets at geoguessercom slash world-cup because Armani has punched his ticket, but we have one more last chance match coming up, and then we're on to the grand finals. It just gets better and better, folks. So if you have friends or family not currently watching, use this break, drag them on in here. We'll see you on the other side.
The GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals continues, but with only two matches left, we have one player still to send home and two to throw in our grand final contest, where the one will be taking home $5,000. But of the four players that you're about to see knock out the rest of our games, only three of them will make it to the World Cup. Fortunately, if you want to make it to the World Cup, you've got a much easier path. Geoguessr.com slash World Dash Cup. Grab your tickets. They're on a discount right now. And if you ever wanted to be here and compete, there's a link pinned at the top of the chat where you can face our Geoguessr challenge with a bunch of places put together by your lovely broadcast team here. Now, speaking of lovely broadcast team, I'm joined once again by ZigZag and Chicago Geographer, my two genius brains who have been taking us through the action. And action it has been. Let's pull up the bracket as we talk about this, guys, because Chicago Geographer, we have been talking a lot about the mix-ups, the unexpected progressions, but now it is the tragedy of saying goodbye to either Crooks or Lenly, both of them really lauded coming into this tournament, a bit of an unexpected place to find them now. Yeah, absolutely it is. These were two of the favorites heading into these, and especially among the fans watching. Uh, Crooks, of course, has such a reputation from the Minecraft community, so he's got all that support rallying behind him here. Lenly has all of the support of Germany as well, and both of these players really strong at Geogister, so we're going to be watching this match. It's going to be insanely close, I think. And again, with these last chance matches, these guys have to go all out. Absolutely. Looking at our qualified players for the World Cup here, what do you think of your future competition shaping up there, ZigZag? Extremely strong. Most of the people we expected to get through Europe have managed to do so here, uh, including a few surprises. For example, Marta, who had an extremely strong performance in the group stage. That was really cool to see. Uh, but uh, if I'm looking at the, pe <laughs> the people who made it through, I I'm scared. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say that. Yeah, looking at a purely on avatar, Mata Armani, love the drip. Now, if you're trying to drip out your avatar, of course, you got to make a geoguesser.com account and start plugging away. These two players have plugged a lot of hours into the game. Who would you say between the two zigzag you would estimate has spent more time playing GeoGuessr? Oh, that is a great question. I, I think it has to be Lenly still. Uh, Lenly has been playing for years longer than Crooks, as far as I'm aware. Crooks really, uh, maybe Crooks started playing earlier, but really has only been on the grind for a bit over a year, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I know. Um, so surely it's Lenly, although. <laughs> Crooks is a grinder, so it is possible that it's closer than I think. Uh, do either of you have competitive experience against either of them? Any history? Oh, well, actually, Lenly in, in most tournaments is my teammate, so we actually play a lot together. And uh, no I, I... bias, zigzag. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, but uh, Crooks, I've definitely played against in tournaments. For example, uh, I can recall a tournament we played against a couple of months ago: Australia versus Sweden. That was a good game. Um, definitely, definitely, he pops up in tournaments quite a lot at the moment. Uh, both of them do. So, yeah. Absolutely. Gavin? Yeah, I honestly, I'm not sure how much experience I have dueling them myself, but I've definitely seen them play in tournaments, Zigzag has mentioned, uh, and just in the community as well. They've really made names for themselves in recent years. Well, two seasoned competitors about to throw it down for our entertainment and one ticket to the World Cup. Let's get to know these players a little bit better. Yeah, I think Crooks is a super strong opponent, especially on no move. Um, in the big countries, he is one of the best players in the world. I think he can play very, very well, and if he is on his A game, then I might struggle. Lenly, I, I know he has a lot of skill, and uh, I don't want to underestimate him in our game. It would be an enormous relief to qualify. Playing in front of a home crowd in Sweden, it would, it would be fantastic. It would feel absolutely amazing. You know, not that many of our EMEA traveler, uh, players had to travel very far to get to this event, but Crooks, uh, the, the least furthest of all, perhaps. I wonder what the home team advantage will spell out for him here. But as we consider Crooks, any other advantages he might be bringing to this matchup in particular against Lenly? I feel like Crooks, just with that all that recent grinding he's done, has built up a real reputation for himself in big countries. For example, he's done a lot in Brazil, holding the record for the most states in a row. Also, feared as one of the best Russia players in the world. A little bit behind Finbar, perhaps, but actually near that level. So it's really impressive stuff. I think uh, Crooks has definitely certain countries that he wants to show up, whereas Len has that more balanced and kind of years of experience, kind of wealth of knowledge kind of approach to the game. 
Absolutely. Gavin, anything to add? Yeah, I think that really sums it up well. Like, these players have slightly different backgrounds from where they came from in the game, but I think their skills sort of level each other out here. We're going to be in for a really fiery match, I'm sure. I'm pretty excited. Let's start by bringing out our players then. First up, we've got Crookst. Well, everyone, I'm here with the local Swede, Crooks. Good to have you here, man. It was really unfortunate circumstances in which you were knocked out of the group stage and sent down to the final playoffs. What's been your attitude since you've um, got knocked out? Like, how you, how you've been, how have you been preparing for this last chance? Yeah, I've been on the grind, just uh, trying to be as locked in as I can for this game. Absolutely. And my second question for you, for you is, what would it mean for you to represent Sweden in Sweden at the City Hall? Uh, it's, it's less about representing Sweden, more about just the relief of qualifying for the World Cup, because, yeah, I really want to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Crooks, best of luck in this match. Go take a seat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am joined here by Len. Welcome back to the studio and welcome to a best of five match. How are you feeling going into this match against Crooks? I mean, honestly, I'm just going to focus on the rounds as they come. I don't really know what to expect, but I think we, we're going to try to make this one as, exi as exciting as the finals. Let's see. Absolutely. And is there any particular format that we should look out for as viewers in this best of five? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I mean, definitely big countries versus small countries uh, might favor one or the other. But um, I don't know. I might, I don't know. Maybe moving m works more for me, actually, because I don't think Crooks has a moving background. So that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Len, best of luck in the game and take your seat. Lenley brings up a great point in how advantageous it is to be well-rounded here, especially moving into something like our best of fives. Now, it was really special for Armani to make it all the way to NMPZ, which is his favorite way to play. But Crooks here, strong across the board. Lenley trying to identify a little bit of a weakness. He doesn't have these numbers, though. So with these extra facts we've got on the screen, perhaps we can do what Lenley might not. Anything stand out to you right here for Crooks? Um, well, it's interesting that he has a 47% win ratio there. I might, may have thought that was a bit higher, but as we said, a focus on big countries does sometimes lead to a slightly lower ratio where you are doing your big damage and getting your wins um, in those bigger countries and therefore letting smaller countries kind of pass and they may, may, may end up being that your opponent's closer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it does make sense to me. The stats are pretty much about, about in line with what I'd expect. And I think it's interesting too, you said Lenley's a bit of a teammate of yours. Uh, it seems like the players who have talked about playing in groups, playing uh, you know, with a dedicated study team have really been able to kind of separate themselves as far as ground covered. So strategy wise, especially considering the preparations you've brought to tournaments like this, uh, CG, you think Lenley might have a bit of a well-rounded shot here? Yeah, you know, I think he has a pretty, uh a strong foundation of skills here. Uh, he's a really strong player. We've seen him go to the top eight in the World Cup last year. And uh, one thing I do want to mention, though, is that on his player card here, he's mentioned Crookst as one of the biggest challenges. Oh, no. So he knows he's up against good competition, but Crooks knows this as well. So these two guys, they're strong players, and I can't wait to see what happens. I love the respect here among the players, especially between these two. You know it's going to be a great game, and you know it's going to have a nice little, what is that, a uh, whipped cream cherry on top, because we're giving you Rainbolt and Toby to take you through it. There is one spot for these EMEA players left to take in the World Cup in September here in Stockholm. Will it be the dancing German and ever so smiling Lindy, or will it be Crooks, the Minecraft extraordinaire, the enigma of what has been the entire tournament? That's a great question that we'll know within like an hour. We Hopefully. sure will. Hopefully we'll Hopefully. take us all the way to game number five. I'm Toby joined by Jarrod Rainbolt here. And we are in, I believe, for an absolutely phenomenal match. If any of the games we've seen today are anything to go by, it should go right down to the wire. Yeah, I mean, I told you coming into the, the room here, I was like, Toby, bro, this is a game I've been waiting for all day. I, this is one. the reason I woke up this morning right here. 
Sure is. It's got me on the bench. Versus small countries. Lindley said it too. This one might be more even, even more exciting than the finals. They want to put on a show. They want to do it as best as they can. The pressure is on. There is just one spot left alive for these two players to fight for. One would go. One will go away with the World Cup seat. The other one, empty handed. Yep. And just context. If if uh, actually like like just mentioned, yeah, the loser of this does you know is eliminated. Yeah. But you know I've been walking around the you know the office here all day. It's like, oh, where's Crooks? Let's see what Crooks up. This guy has been grinding. He's been in there. He's been grinding games. I, I don't even think, uh, nothing against not watching the games. He's been solely focused on grinding and like coming into this game the best version of himself possible. For sure. And that's just his personality and that's just who he is. And we'll see if that pays off. Both wanting to play as well as possible, of course, but also because he has a mad respect for Lenly knows the fierce yep. competition that he's up against. This is going to be a tough battle, one that is going to be incredibly hard to predict. So what better, Rainbow, than getting straight in to round number one of game number one. We're playing move. These guys can maneuver everywhere they want to get as much info as they possibly can. Game one, round one, move. Crooks versus Lindley. Let's this start big. round. Take a big, big Deep breath, breath, everyone, because you might not be able to throughout the Why remain are we of down this series. This is we have to. We're gonna need to stand up eventually for this game. We will. This is gonna be. We're starting sitting, and then we'll, yeah, we'll true, probably true. be up. So we'll, we'll be standing up in probably ten seconds. True. Something like that. True. I we'll, think the under. We'll start low. We'll start low. It's these guys back here. make their way down the street. It's very urban, but it's limited. What signs? What info they have to go off of? Unless if Michelle there. We have Mexico poles here, and we do see Crooks immediately yeah. zooming in north, and he's gonna. Oh, he has information. Oh, he's on the highway already. He's locked in. Quick lock coming in. We know Crooks likes to go off of early info and just full speed. Lindley does it. not have the same info. And he's going. He he's far next. south. Mexico it's City. Crooks. It's normally a good guess, but this is border territory. A ton of damage coming through right from the bat. That is one of the highest round one we've damages seen in we've the seen in the entire tournament. Actually, it probably is the highest. I'm not sure anyone has ever. 3,200 straight on the money. I mean, you said it before. If you're unsure, go Mexico City. But not when you're up against Crooks. He was on point. And we saw we saw yesterday too that Lindley is one of his disadvantages in moving is not finding information. Exactly. Round two, USA. Out in the open we go. It's probably mainly going to be landscape and foliage knowledge that's going to grant you a win in this round, but let's see what they we find. We see Lindley, both players going uphill here. Let's see what they see. This will be interesting. That sign means nothing. And we do see Crooks zooming in, see if there's ballers or anything like that that he can get out, get out of this. This is interesting. It feels almost, let me see if we can read the sign. He knows the National Forest, New Mexico. It is New Mexico, and he's there. He's going to log it. He That's the right speed. forest. He's in the right can. forest. Where is Lindley going to go? Could Lindley ever get two rounded here? Because oh, you could easily insane. not go New Mexico. This is a sleeper New Mexico. That would be insane. Let's he's see in where Mexico. he goes. He's all the way up to Albuquerque. But it's still, he says, give me the old compass. He's got the time. He's got the time. Let's just change it, but it's crooks, crooks again. Right on point. He is coming in hot as can be. 1,100 1, damage. Lindley only three rounds in down to almost 1,700 health. Something just made me like proud that Crooks just knew National Force in America as an American. Insane, man. And is oh insane. my He's goodness in. gracious, Toby. We're Tell going to Brazil? Brazil. We're keeping the big countries in I mean, play throughout the beginning of this one. We said earlier, or Crook said yesterday, or two days ago, that he wants Brazil, and by golly, give it to him. Well, you know what? Lindley you might, not out of it yet, though. You might be able to three-round Lindley here, Crooks, but then you got to let Did Lindley just in. send a GG emote? There's no way. He just sent a GG he emote. Did. There's no way, Lindley. Keep, keep your mind in it, bro. There's still plenty to play for. It's not over until it's over, and we I see a Manalski is here, and he's locked in. Uh, is this... He's in. Lindley's going slightly more south. Further off. Again, Multiplier still haven't gotten to stack too much just it's yet. Closer. So even if he's off, it should not be GG just it yet. It could be. It would be if, if Crooks is on there. It's actually Lindley this time. Lindley to find it. So GG maybe for himself there. Good 3, game. 000. Good damage. 3,000 what looked to be potential downfall for Lindley. Now all of a sudden he's right back in it. And just like that, that's how easy it is when you get Huge. into these multis. Huge. It's moving around five. This looks like one of those standard southern Chilean roads here. Rule once more. Both players know this. Who lines up the road near good. the seven? Maybe we'll see. We're getting a really good variety here of urban and rural areas. Yes. Playing to both players' favors here, yeah, not not wanting to pick any sides from the seat they're given. And we do see Crooks going south, Lindley going north, which means they'll get separate information. But you'll eventually see that I think in the next couple of seconds, someone might just kind of give up and just region guess. Yeah. Because this is going to be a long road until you find something of value. Maybe a cow is going to give you the info. Oh, and ask it nicely. I spoke too soon as Crooks found Ooh. information. Crucial info as well. 
Can he apply it? He's gonna be able to find the exact position. He knows he has Lindley the time right now. Road. He's but going. He's going more north. Oh, he's going south now. Okay. He's Brooks taking his time here, both the of them, yeah? Both of them taking their time. They know they have the river right next to it, so that's what they're looking for. Road's so small that you have to zoom in really, really far yes, in fine. order to even have them rendered. A white road around the seven. Five seconds left remaining. I would imagine these guys take it all the way till the end. Let's see who's going to be closer. Lendley down to 1,700 health. He wants to hit it, and he will hit it just like that. Two rounds in, and we're getting back closer to even. Still, almost a hundred, like 1,000 health higher is Crooks, but... Shipping away twice now, Lindley fighting his way back into it. Round five. Let's. We're in the UK. Which player will be okay? See what you did there. I appreciate it. I do my best. We all enjoy it. Let's see. Plenty of info to be found on these signs, but is it enough for them to go by? Plenty of street info there, so they're both seeing the exact same place. Both this might just wells. be a this might just be a, a skip it and move on. Lindley quickly locked in. Let's see if Crooks wants to go for the 5k. Every point does matter, so having these extra yeah, seconds definitely. getting down to the exact city here will add up. I mean, we saw it in the previous game. What did he lose by? Is that like 200 points? I mean, it's and over the cost of 10 rounds, that really can stack up quite easily. Crooks does there. find it. Had a little extra time, able to lock it in. 300 damage done, sending Lindley down to under 1400. Round six of ten as we move in to back to Europe, Europe here. This looks like it's going to be, let's see, Czechia. Text on the walls of the buildings. You have the C set that down in the bottom as well. That's a quick, quick info gather up that it is going to be Czechia. And it's just going to be a matter of where do you just plunk it into Prague or do you go for something more specific? Um, I think you, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like Lindley's guess here, going more east, because it looks like Slovakia, Loki. Where will Crooks go is a question. He's going to check it as well. Sending up the road here, Obviously. taking his time. It's interesting to see them trying to utilize the strategies differently. Lindley feels like he has enough info on that board to try and specifically find it on the map. So right. Crooks this, wants to fly up Crooks the map on the bridge and context for checking in bridges. Cool. Their bridge has numbers on it that tells you where the bridge is. Let's but Crook's not using that. Nope, 10 seconds to play. He's still looking for more crucial info. Hasn't quite found exactly what he wanted yet here. We could see marginal points. But we'll see. I, we do see difference, and it's actually going to go to Lindley. Lindley again, fighting back blow after blow here. It's going to even out eventually 900 damage as he now sits just 300 ahead. 300 point difference going in to 4x damage, and this is... This could be game. This could be because this is where, this is where Lindley lost like 3,200 points in round one. True. Hopefully he learned from then. It's not been too long. There hasn't been a whole I mean, lot of time to go back and analyze your Lindley's place. Lindley's generally known for being good at Mexico, and that information that he's found that sign will probably get him enough. It was Crooks to instantly find the needed info earlier. Lindley this time round though has a little more time to work with, as Crooks has still yet to lock in his answer. Both players. Scanning the same street signs there, looking for anything to give give them the edge in Mexico. Taxi. And Crooks is going Yucatan. Ooh. Both players going Yucatan. Might be looking at a zero pointer here, making a way to round eight, but now the lock in comes. 15 seconds for Crooks left to work with. Does he have the info he needed? He will go out on the peninsula, but he's on the western side of it in Merida. Who's right? East or west? It's gonna stay be a big point for God. This four times multiplier. Yucatan. It's not going to go for Lindley. Is that a 5k? Almost. Almost a 5k. Is that the damage going through, and it will be enough. Lendley, despite going down 3,200 on the very first round, claws back it's into it and takes game number one. Game one. Huge. Any other player, many other people would be devastated after taking such a big blow right out of the gates. But Lendley. Kept his cool, played it smart, gives the camera the death stare, never was he in doubt, and he brings it home 1-0 in favor of the German. What a comeback. What a comeback, and that's, you know, he he, he mentioned in the pre-broadcast there that he thinks he has the moving advantage, it showed. And what but, better to win the round on Mexico, the same exact place you saw, and you said as well, that he lost all those yeah. points on in the beginning. Lindley's had these constant stories of comebacks. Don't count them out. Insane. But it's also best of five and play these games for a reason. Definitely is. We headed into no move. Lindley said that might be where he has the upper hand. We'll see. We'll see how things are going to fare here. This 1360 panorama that should get us in Borneo, Malaysia. Surely not mainland. Oh, cope. Let's see. 
Let's see where the players get. Semi truck, a cement truck there in the background. Probably not giving you the info that you were hoping for. Crooks, though, instantly down towards Brunei. We'll see if he's going to commit to that or not. Maybe just the early luck. They're going for, yeah, going yeah, for the road yeah, specific both now. Players. We have a Serac guest here by Lindley looking for a road that's slightly north. Is that a 10k in the making since they're both taking their time? No, they're they're pretty separate actually regions right now. Yeah, they are now. They are true, true, true. For those of you guys who don't know, when you do lock in your guests, if it's not under 30, uh, 15 seconds left on the clock already, the opponent only has 15 seconds. That's why you oftentimes see if someone gets info very early on, he'll just instantly um, pin it so that the player, instead of having a minute left to work with, only gets 15 seconds. That can sometimes mean make or break, but this time around, neither two players finding the info they need to kind of make them dare to go for the early pick here. Yep, both players. And again, I think Crooks made his way down to Sarawak here. And assuming that Lindley stayed, he has, we'll see minimal points. Even if they're both right or wrong. Yep, it's gonna be close. They're both Crooks a bit off. They were both hovering up there, like <laughs> each of their own. They were both looking yep. up and nah, it's not that far. Go back. Ah, it's not that far. Go back. Classic. There was some second guessing. They stuck down towards the west and they, well, I mean, again, not too much damage off it. And this history repeats itself, Toby. Mm hmm. Round two. It looks like we're back in mechs. Let's see. Let's see if they can find. Let's see if they can locate exactly where in Mexico we are positioned. A few commercials here and there. Some big semi trucks blocking off what could potentially be crucial information, but also, of course, information to be found on set trucks themselves. Always dangerous to semi trucks, so they do tend to drive pretty far. So even if they have like a region name on it or yeah, a phone code or something, it becomes dangerous because they could have been uh, driving all night from the opposite side of the country. Corona, they actually get indicated from Mexico. Corona and uh... <laughs> true. Now we just need a sombrero kind of flying across the street, <laughs> and uh, are we all good. Crooks locked Crooks it in locked early, it. just south of Merida. We'll see if he's going to be right about it. Lenly goes towards Mexico as well. He's up going towards in. Merida proper. He's I mean, moving slightly more south than you can. He's scanning all over the place looking for something that lines up here. Is he going One second further? left, he's closer. It's going to be Crooks. Crooks finds it. He's on the correct road as well, just a bit further off towards the east. So double hit towards Lenny, but still the damage small enough that it's nowhere near what we saw in the beginning of the previous round. That's small, that's small enough damage as we move into a big enough country. This will be Australia. Both players zoom in looking around. Plenty of info to be found here on the street, but you can't move. You can't get that better angle around See the tree. A yellow plate there, yellow plate there on a crook screen. Usually yellow plates would indicate a NSW, and so that's where he's zooming in. Crooks down towards Sydney, down towards the southeastern tip of Australia. Lindy has still yet to open the map. Still 30 seconds to go, though, so plenty of time to work with. Looking for flags, looking for cars, looking for license plates, anything that can hint them to the exact location they're supposed to go to. Maybe the wooden man in there behind the window. The wagon is going to give him the info needed. If he has some old info on this particular town. But given that he's not pulled up the map yet, I highly doubt it. And he's going slightly more north of Crooks. Hedging slightly more west as well. Just west of Sydney. Crooks is more south on the Vic border. He's we have five seconds to go left. further north. Five more is seconds. Is he looking even more inland? It could be. We'll see. Two times multiplier. It's not going to be huge, but it's wow. still going to be oh, there. Oh. Lin Lee misses it by a bit. Damage gonna come through and hit him hard. 1,000 health almost chipped off of him as he goes down to 4,300. Crooks taking the 1,700 point advantage going in. He has yet to lose any points in this number of game. It's big, but again, I mean, he was looking very solid in the previous one too until all of a sudden Lenny started punching back. So we'll see if Crooks can make this a flawless victory. We staying have this the part. Nigeria follow car here with Hills. Ever Abuja Hills is what you ponder. Well, a lot of uh, copyrights there to read. I can give you the info on exactly when and where these photos are taken. But uh, Lenny, looking towards the map, going into Nigeria. Crooks is trusting too. the Abuja, Abuja hills. Yeah. And Lindley going slightly more east. Ooh, He's in between a couple of locations. Lindley's bouncing He's back pondering. and forth. Bro's Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Where are we going, Lindley? Nigeria spot by the toe. <laughs> true, so true. Oh, he was looking to go even further away and all. Oh, the Eni was right, the Mo was not. Crooks is going to take it. Once again, plenty of damage coming through. 1,800, just under 2,500 for Lindy now. But he's been down here before and clawed his way back. And now whew, he's going to have to try to do that again. This is almost where Lindley thrives the most. True. Up against the wall. If you fall, you are out of the World Cup. We're on 3x damage now, and we're going to be in Cambodia with this poop camp. We do have the house on stilts. Both players will get Cambo. 
And we just have a non-pin guess, probably presumably by both players, and we move into a quick round six. Quick plonk here from Lin Lee, just throwing the market down, clicking out instantly, not even trying to find the 5k. They both do it. They're going to be a bit off because of it, but it's not going to matter too much. Minimal damage coming through, just 50 Still the flawless. Double digit damage, not going to hurt. Round six. Beautiful territory. Beautiful. Looks like color fencing. Could also be... Where are we going to see? We can turn to the back of the car here and see Black Car and Tana with these Colo fences. This will be Colo. By Colo, I mean Colombia. Not Colorado. For those who should be confused. Facts. Let's see. Here we are headed up towards Colombia. Crooks to instantly zooming in. Lenny still yet to look at his map. He's looking down towards the road itself. As we said earlier, sometimes when they get the even the specific roads down correctly, they'll look into the ground itself and they'll look at the compass on the bottom left side of their screen. So you can see it spinning around as they do. They'll put the indicator straight north so that they can figure, is this road going north to west? Is it going a little slanted off towards me, perhaps the southwest? And then try and figure out, can I see this specific road and the layout? based on uh, which directions I'm looking in. And when you're not allowed to move at all, that can really be crucial information to obtain. Quite literally. And look, how close are they right now? See, five more seconds. Neither one too interested They're in They're pretty far away. In. Lindley's, or not that far, but enough to get points. It's 3.5 multiplied. It's it could be huge. Again. It's Crooks to his closest once it's more. Lindley. Math, someone. It's going to take some big damage it's here. Big. It's going to be enough. And Lindley will fall. We have game four guaranteed as we're headed in to move once again. 1-1 one, one is the scoreline. And Crooks winning that game without taking any damage. Huge. Flawless games at this level of play are so few and far between, especially when we have this many rounds in. Normally, if it's a gate round one, round two, round three, it's more common, but we were way down the line in this one for that to be our, like something we see too often. Oh my goodness. You said it's it was going to be a big game, bro. You said it was going to be a big game. It's a big game. It is. It really it's is. It's a big game. It's, it's mounting to everything I expected. Headed into round three, three of five here. We are playing a best of five. First to three wins, wins this match. And we headed back into move. They were here just before Lindy took it home, but now let's see if Crooks can strike again. We're back to moving. This is the best of five. First of three wins. Back on the moving in Japan. Here we go. What you'll see when we spawn it is exactly this. By both All players. the info. All the info on those electricity poles. These plates hold the truth. And then they both spun away. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're like, <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you go. Got there closer, got closer. 141 info obtained as they continue further. Because one thing is you might have the region down, but you want to get the road specifics. You want to try and see if you can find that 5K. These plates give regional clues in Japan. It's one of the most, one of the more unlocked things in the, in the coming, in the past years. And we do see crooks zooming in confidently. You say that, but he kind of helped us back out again now. Ooh, nice sign there. Plenty of info. That being, of course, if you can read Japanese. I can um, speak Japanese. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Nice image there of... Was that that? Oh, no, I can't remember the name of the movie, but that's a really good movie. With the dog. Siberian husky mm. thing. Yeah, in any case. Let's, uh, let's stay in it. Lindley up towards the northern side of Japan here. Crooks slightly more south of where Lindley is. He might... Or around where Lindley is. We'll see where he ends up plonking the last second here. And it's going to be right next to Lindley. They're yep. hugging. Right on top of one another. No multipliers here in the first round. This is going to be maybe even single digit damage. As they're right on each their side of it itself. Nine, Nine damage, single digit. Not going to hurt anyone. Nine. <laughs> Nine indeed. It's the German who got hit by it, so it's fine. True. Round two. Ooh. Speaking Wait. Of... It, can, the, can the Google car even continue? It seems like it's completely surrounded by foliage here. Do whatever you want to do. The next pixel forward is just going to be a branch. So usually when you see hedgerows like this on the side, you go like UK or Ireland, but you're definitely going to have to move around and figure out like, where the heck are we? Yep. Got to get yourself France. out of this maze. Actually, more. it looks more... Maybe it... Like, yeah, that makes sense. We've seen games Italian. being lost because you get trapped in this area where Lindy is going for the foliage info. You see Crooks instantly finding a, uh, a street sign there, maybe indicating the city specifics that he's looking for to try and see if he can get down the mark quickly. Yep. This is, uh, and you know, Italy, you can't pick up points in Italy, but also like slow and steady. You know, you get yeah. a couple yeah. hundred points here and there. And then before you know it, round 10. It's you're... almost as if there's quite a bit on the line here. So it makes sense that the players are more hesitant to go for the very, very quick guesses on this if there's something that jumps straight to their eyes. Ex exactly. And once you give enough time, you almost have to like, uh, you're like I've already given this them enough time. I might as well just commit the rest. Exactly. Five seconds left to play with. Both Let's near see. Lindley going near Naples. Splitting a little Crooks bit. Staying north. 
Then he goes further south. Crooks goes further north. Let's see where it's going to be. It's going to be further south than both of them. So Lenly, the closest one on this one, will strike back after that initial nine damage. We'll hit a solid 500 on Crooks. And this is what we wanted to see. Looks like we're moving to round three here with the Russia. Which is fun. Sure is. Always uh, hard to reach in like Russia. Unless if you have Finbar on your team. Yes, you but you both these team. players also zoom in on the antenna immediately. Meaning they know what that means. Area nope. codes, reading crooks can definitely read Cyrillic at this level. Plenty of text to go by. And he's going north of Moscow. Makes sense. And he's locking it in. I think bro just read the town on that sign, if I'm going to be honest. Plenty of text. We'll see. Does Lendy Posh like camp. what he sees? Has still yet to open the map. Not as confident as Crooks is. He has a say that though now he starts zooming and he's further towards the western side. Two times multiplier. It's not going to be much, but it's still going to be wow. quite. Hit as Crooks. Does he 5k that? No, but almost. Wow. Learned That's the relic. It is a moral of that story. Absolutely huge damage coming through. It's round three. And now Lendy, just like that, down to under half health. That. Clap. Clap indeed. Clap, indeed, respect to people that go out of their way to find niche knowledge. And uh, while Russian lettering isn't niche per se, it's something that you only really get use of sometimes. And this right here we is have, a crucial situation. We have Nigeria here, obviously, with the follow car with this camera. You know, do you ever go in southeast with the, the red soil, palms? Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. 2.5 multiply in Nigeria, a big enough country that if they go opposite regions, it could be very, very painful, yeah, potentially even a loss for Lindy. Yeah, I mean, with Lindy, it's 25 points, 2,500 points to his name. Like, you can see he's not liking it here. Flaking his hand, kind of shaking his head from side to side, not too satisfied with what he's seeing. They're probably both aware that it is, in fact, Nigeria, you'd imagine. But outside of that, not liking what he's found so far. Not quite. This will be interesting. Sure will. Crooks moves on to more signs. Church of God on the opposite side. Does it have a city name on it too? And then it could just have. He's going straight in towards the center there. I like to guess here. Let's see if Lindley follows suit. And he's going in Benin City as well. Go there. Oh, Lindley was about to go off. Does he go off? He does go off. And he's going further seconds. away. It's Benin City. Then he was hovering all the way down to Kalabar. But fortunately, he didn't click the button. He takes 400. But he'll gladly take the 400 rather than the probably 2,000 he would have taken had he gone further away. It's always a good sign. Round five. Let's keep the pace high. Good. We have Jin for coverage here. It looked immediately like Malay to me. It could be Indo, but if it is Malay, it would have to be mainly Malay. And then where do you go in mainly Malay? Good question, Toby. Don't know. Do you commit off of rule info here? Or do you keep on moving until you get you find something info. urban, some signs that you can go by? We do have signs here by Lindley. And we do have Black Sticker here, and we do see Lindley committing Fast Axe pick, out, maybe? where you do get these yellow signs in Johor. We will see both players getting Johor, Johor presumably. Have to imagine, but yep, here you go, just on the southern side of uh, Kuala Lumpur itself. As these guys, very close to one another, the knee just in micro adjusting a bit, goes a bit further uh, away. and about as north as you can get for those signs. True. That's 75 damage gone the other way. Not too much, but again, I mean, even though Lindley is far down in the first round of move, he was in this exact situation and found a win regardless. So don't count him out just yet. Round six coming up. And this will be a small country. Small countries equal what, Toby? Insta skip. Insta skip. Just dip. go to Qatar, plunk it in, get going, stack the multiplier. UE, but close. 50-50. 50-50. And it even said to buy there. I just didn't take my time to read the sign. Yeah, it's kind of basic. Good thing the players do that instead of me. That's good. Yep. There you go. Get somewhere into Dubai. Regardless of how this goes down, you're maybe looking to lose 50 to 100 points. So it's not going to be the end of the world, even if you get it, get, uh, get damage done. You want to... <laughs> I mean, there's only so much brain power in people, and you want to focus your attention Look on the map. Look at on top of each other. 11. There you go. 11 damage. They'll take that in at the end of the week. But because of us moving further forward, we are now increasing these modifiers once more. Round seven, four times multiplier. Spawn in immediately, looking at the yellow post with the red soil. Both players will go wa. And by wa, you mean? Western Australia. There you go. The Lango fans in there, they appreciate the wa for the people that say, what is wa? Every time I say wa, all the Australians are like, we don't call it wa. We don't call, call it w, wa. We call it wa. Okay, I call it like, <laughs> sorry, bro. I'm <laughs> We're creating our own languages here in the GeoGuessr community. That's what we do. 
while Western Australia will see they're both over on that vicinity, but even in, even in Western Australia, I mean, that's a pretty that's big space. That I think gave him the city. Is Crooks going further south here? Again, four times multiplier, letting it down to 2,000 health. This could be huge if it goes even further. Is it going to click it? more south? Let's <laughs> stay. And it's literally in the city. Oh, almost 5 king as well. 1.2 kilometers off. Huge round there. Good for Crooks that he didn't go further away because that could have potentially taken him out. You know what also is good for Crooks? Tell me. Presumably this. Let's see. Let's see if and a smile comes Brazil. on his face as he sees this map. I mean, yeah, literally also very talented. And it will... And, okay, bro. Nice market there. Ooh, yeah, bro. A quick pick in from Brooks. He saw the entire shoreline. He had the complete outline of the city. There? Is this just an insta pick from him? I think both it might have there. been. Okay. Both players there. Marcelo, they're both and there. Crooks hoping he could he could get away there. Yeah. He could not. Nope, not gonna have him 14 damage. It's not gonna be too much, but again, we're just gonna stack the multipliers. Two rounds left to play here before we head into round number 10. And should neither player be dead by the time round 10 concludes, it's the one that has the least health left that will be taken out. So right now, with Lindy's at 2,000 points behind Crooks, he needs to start chopping away in this next round, and this round in particular, if we are to see a close round 10. He needs to get somewhat even with Crooks here now. He needs, yeah, he needs to slow and steady. He needs to pick up at least a couple thousand points here. Exactly, exactly. You don't We're want a round ten. We have the pulls. I mean, what do you do? You go Queensland here. What do you do here? Oh, Queensland, big area as well. Oh, that's a yellow plate in SW. North in SW ever. What's the vibes? Can't read the trash can. Tries to go further down the street again. Get out of the. Uh the housing area, get into the main streets, find the signs, find the shops, find the info needed in order to lock down the exact position. There are some restaurants up the road. Ooh, nice, nice road sign there. Plenty of info to be found with the street names too. And Crooks is also scanning. He's scanning for something on a different sign here that he has. Both players looking in an NSW. Gonna be nearby, which could take us into round 10, which also, I mean, for Lindley, he needs to win this one. Even if it's not gonna be big, just Locked find in. six, 700 damage. That Did he find the it? last round much Oh, easier. they're both there. Might they're both have, there. We're going into round there. 10. <sighs> it's gonna be round 10, but it's gonna Lindley's be round praying. 10. That's He's gonna praying Crooks. that Crooks didn't find it. Yeah. New slash he did. He did. He found it. Lenny was hoping, but it wasn't meant to be. Both of them on point. Five Solid ten. 5k from Crooks trying to cement this win now. Lindley needs at least 2,400 damage onto Crooks in order to bring this one home. <sighs> Toby. Let's go. We're on round 10. We are. One round to rule for them all. either player to bring this home. This would be huge. In going, in, going into a 2-1 lead, potentially out there to win it on the next no move would be huge. So let's see where, oh, where. Dear Rainbow, are we going? Pack your bags. We're going to Peru. Peru is where we are headed. Big enough country that Lindy could bring this one home. But it's anyone's game. Is Toby. it enough info? Just off of what you see here, Trevor. Is it enough info for them to instantly lock it in? No, no, no. I mean, Ooh. is, is he, his goal then is to lock he's in? He's going for it. He's Lindy said, is gambling. Said, we ball. I'm not giving Crooks any information. I'm going to force him to make a region guess. We have 10 seconds and we know who wins. Lindley just said, Crooks, you are not given any time here. He has to pick it. Pick. He's also going south. They're close. Will it be south enough? Oh, he's going further Lima, north. Lima he's going Lima. far further north. He did it. And he gets it. He plunks straight into the win, and that is going to be two rounds in a row for Crooks. Lenley down once more as we head into round number four. We're one game away from Crooks earning the position at Stockholm in that, September. That final adjustment, he was at the same distance on the south side of Lenley as he was to the marker, like to the, to the point. But he jumps up about, what, two, three hundred kilometers north of Lindy there to bring it home in the end. Huge. A last Lima second head. move from Crooks gives him the win in round three. Yeah, I think any good guess there. Huge. He just had to be close. He could have just been right on Lindley. He still would have won. True. But True. Now we're back into no move. Lindley said that he is more comfortable here. Let's see if it's going to ring true once again. Crooks with a chance of taking it home, with a chance of eliminating Lindley from the tournament, from the qualification to the World Cup with a win in this match. If not, we're headed into an NPC for the final fifth round, but let's game, not get there yet. Game four, no move. <sighs> Starting in. Turkey. Turkey is where it's at. We've seen some big plays coming out both, of Turkey. Both players are going to know Turkey here. Definitely will be. But you see some of the urban city to our north. And, um, yeah. And while they're trying to find this, just to go back to Lindy's last play there, 
immense props. He, Crooks didn't mean the Ankara. He saw what Crooks could do with all the info, like all the time he was given here. He says, I have a pretty good estimate. I'm just going to force me sent it early yep. on. You have to respect that. Play. You have to respect it. Yes, really, really impressive. But now, new round, new game. Lindley is fighting from behind this time around. That's because you're here, zoom in here by Lindley. And when you zoom in that close, he might know something. I mean, it is going to be Western Turkey, I think. 27 seconds left. Neither one locking in so far, wanting a little extra info. And again, they're looking at buildings in the they're distance. They're pretty they're far apart to, here. They're trying to kind of figure the, the, the ridge line there over the hillsides in the background. Maybe they can line up the mountains, figure out exactly what value they're finding themselves in. We'll see. I'm not sure who's closest here. Somewhat of a distance in between them. Two seconds left, one second. Any adjustments, it has to be They've now. They've got to come up close again. And it was right where Crooks was, but he moved away. If he kept his plonk within one second, he 5Ks. That would have been insane. East of Ankara is where it was. Lindley to take damage early on. But again, it's not the first time he's been the one to uh, feel the hurt in the early rounds. So let's see if he can make his way back from this one. Round two, let's keep, it, keep the pace high. What is this, Norway? It's beautiful. That's what I'm going to say. So then very, probably. Very beautiful. Lindley, or Crook zooms into Norway, and he type of zoom that looks like he's going to send within the next 10 seconds. He might we'll just. He might just. He does live right on the border. So, uh, or the neighboring country, at least. I'm not actually exactly sure where Crooks lived, but close there, too. So, might have a little bit of an advantage against Lenly going up towards Scandinavia here. We'll see Lenly going up towards Norway, too, but much further towards north now, starting to send it back towards the south once more. Foliage, mountains. Can you line up any of these hills, the mountain faces that are right towards more the north sun? Tron time. Oh, he's looking far north. The thing about Norway, Toby, is, is that sometimes you click north, it's south. Sometimes you click south, it's north. Yeah. It's not the easiest it, thing. It's nope. anyone's game in this, in this type of country. And it's foliage and it's landscape exclusive. No signs, no nothing else to go by. Not even a single electricity pole. One goes south. Lenly down towards the south here as well. It's not going to be a big game. But as I say, that actually crooks much further north than I initially thought. And then he's picking up 1,000 points as we hold for a second here. Take a deep breath, Toby. <sighs> We'll hold here for a second. Pause, champ. As they get ready for the next match. Get a little bit of time to think through what's the play going to be. Am I going to start? Again, going back into the quick picks. We haven't seen too many quick picks, but the few times we have seen where they just instantly plonk it, it's been in very, very important rounds. Yeah. And then there's no moving, though. It's, it's you know, it, you can look at Crook's score and you'd be like, ah, down 700. Mm. Make a couple good guesses, but it's only... Once these multis get higher, the guesses have higher stakes. And this is where, in terms of mental fortitude, while Crooks might not have the same amount of land experience as Lindy does, simply the fact that he's a world record holding Minecraft speedrunner, he knows, and I talked to him about it too, do you feel like this, like Minecraft past, gives you any advantages in a competitive setting like this? And he said, Toby, I'm just, like, when, 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 type, like, when push comes to shove, when I have to, I can just zone in. I can isolate everything else that's happening around me and I can just fully focus on what's going on in front of me. I think being able to do that and just ignore the pressure, yeah. ignore the people looking at you, ignore this camera that's currently in the face of Lindley is, I mean, you have to be able to do that in order to play to the top of your ability oh, in these games. Sure. For sure. I wonder what they're listening to. With the way that he's bobbing his head back and forth. I don't go for like a solid uh, 1, 138 BPM, maybe 140, something like that. A little, little fast pace ish music you don't want to be too lo-fi you know when they're playing a i think you do though no? what, what what's your playlist like I mean, if you're if you're if you're playing to you guys you gotta listen to like something like low music all right let's just keep it going i thought okay. it was just all just a high-speed drum and bass that'd be keep crazy. the blood pumping round three no move looks like we're in canada who has advantage here in canada let's find out crooks versus lindley big country big country potentially a lot of points only two times multiply but that could be enough to this is an interesting location fate. because usually oh, it's already looking at roads here crooks Brooks is not playing no hand. Yeah. Don't worry, it yeah. is a frozen webcam. That would be quite... <laughs> guess where I'm on he, Google Maps, but not his, using my hands. He has his feet on the mouse right now. We just can't see it. No, it's definitely just a frozen camera, so do not, uh, Crooks do is not worry. Both players in Nufi. He went road-specific very quickly. Yeah, Looked, yeah both Trying player, to line it up. Yep, both Lining up down. the road here. As we said before, look at the compass, trying to line north. It's crazy how impressive up. Crooks is that he can do this without any hands at all, Toby. And, and, and he doesn't blink either. I mean, he's full uh full Look focus. at this movement. Full focus. This is uh, this is going to be uh, but they're actually moving away. Lindley moves slightly more east. Crooks still or Crooks locked in. Lindley moving. 
Scanning for anything that could line up here. Nearby for Sinity. But they're still so close. So yeah. be minimal points. Only two times multiplier. And he finds it. A fact. no handed almost 5k. Not quite there though. And we will take a little bit of a break. Is Crooks the first person the to get the 5k without using his hands? The no hand 5k? I mean, it's uh, definitely not something. Uh, maybe, maybe that's a video in the making. <laughs> I'll pass. Playing 0 0.1 second uh, NMP set, no hands. You just use your nose onto your mouse. There's definitely a strat in there. Something. Somewhere, somewhere for difficult game mode. Not that this game isn't difficult enough already, especially We're at this level of play. That's the guys that really said. looks cool, calm, and composed he's, here. He's vibing. He's vibing. He's always, I mean, he's one of the guys where I feel like as soon as he enters a room, the room just gets a little bit happier. You know? Yeah, he comes in, he, he's, 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 he's such a good vibe around him. And everyone seems to always be smiling. He gives people hugs. You know, it's just all around a phenomenal guy. Bex, say the same for Crooks. I mean, definitely can. I mean, can say the same for most, if not all, of most. the players in Call this tournament. Out. Who's not? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the most, except for two except people. Except for this guy. All right. We are going to go back into it. Let's not wait any longer. Let's not have these guys have more pressure on their shoulders than they already do. Round four, 2.5 times multiplier as we head over towards Japan. Japan is where we're at. Zooming in Transformers, zooming in. There's no plates visible on the poles here, so this may be more of a region guess thing, unless you see Crooks trying to take anything he can in here. And you know, Crooks has made some insanely good guesses in Japan this year, but also, so is Lindley. And just to refresh your memory, this is a best of five. If Crooks takes this game, that is GG, that is game over for Lindley. Crooks would make it through to the World Cup, representing Sweden. That's the only Swede in the World Cup that is going to be taking place here in Stockholm in September. So for Lindley, it's do or die he time. He in. cannot slip here. He's just west of Tokyo here, going up near Sendai. Both going to Japan, but and Lindley is Lindley much further Osaka. towards Osaka. This could be huge. Again, it might only be 2.5 times multiply, but Japan he, can fool you. It's a very, very long, right. long country. Both players in separate regions. You could see a case where neither player is closer. And we do see Crooks committing, and we see Lindley committing. Who is it? Lindley slowly going closer and closer towards where Crooks is. Crooks last minute Crooks. adjusts as well. He was all the way up there initially, but went further towards the main, like the center of the island. And therefore, it's only, I say only in quotation marks, going points. to be a thousand damage for Lindley. We're moving around five here. I'm. I just want to keep them. I just want to keep them playing. Of course, here. of course, of course. We're gonna be in Nigeria here. We have the follow car here, or the police follow car behind us. Super, super dry. Let's see who can make it. And we see Lindley going immediately. To so just quick blocks, potentially. Both going in the same exact city here. Kombe is where the first one is headed. Second one now. Crooks reconsidering. Looking for, for a, a grid second. lines up in the city with east-west roads. Crooks is reconsidering this. He went there initially, but he went back off, and Lindley. he should have stopped. He should have stuck with his initial idea because this is gonna be Lindley hitting 2,400 points, 2,400 damage. Wow, just like that, gone. Big that. for Lindley, big for Lindley to try and bring this into the final fifth game, the NMPC. Oh, I mean, Crooks, he's been there before here. As you look into the next round here, what are we looking at? Let's see. This is interesting. We're on the graveyard. This could be where one of these guys will indeed fall. It does not get any more morbid than this. This could be the downfall for Lindley if he doesn't get this one correct. If Crooks somehow, we've seen it before, out of nowhere, pulls off a 5k, Lindley could definitely be in trouble. But on the other hand, Lindley could also start digging the grave of Crooks, or digging the grave of Crooks, as he could potentially take it into round five. Yeah. Toby, I don't know. I think it's Baltic. It looks like it. Estonia is Estonia, the choice. Well, I like this. Estonia Crooks. lock in. I think he's right. Oh, then he's shaking his it's head. He's not liking Baltic it. Countries. He's Lindley not doesn't liking know. it. What's, well, he, I think Crooks will be close enough to where he can win. Three, two, he's, he's winning America. Rest. This is going oh, to be no. game. That'll be it. And he gets it. Crooks takes it. Lindley down and out. And that is him out of the run Crooks for the World Cup. The Stockholm. The Swede is going to represent Sweden at the World Cup in Stockholm in September. What a game. What a finish to a phenomenal last chance brawl between these two players. Wow. My, thankfully we have one more game left because my voice <laughs> it's not. That's all, all I have left in me. You saw it on Lindy that even with five, seven seconds to go, his mind just couldn't fathom. If I, I simply can't figure out what it is. Yeah. He went for Hail Mary America. Sure, let's go for it. I mean, Crooks getting, getting Estonia there, which is one of the more impressive no move guesses I've seen today. Yeah, the pressure, man. And he, cool, calm, collected throughout, through and through, and earning his spot. Insane. Congrats to Crooks. Congrats for being able to bring this one home and make it to the World Cup. But now, let's head back to the desk and break this one down before we head in to the Grand Finals.
Not quite all the way, but he didn't need every round to cinch it. We've got Crooks here picking up two non-moving rounds, one moving round. Tell me your feelings on locking down that second move round. Did you feel like things are in your favor from then on? Yeah, I after the after losing the first moving game, I feel like I I wasn't expecting to win the second one. So yeah, that that felt great. Locking them down, stacking them up. What else he got going in his favor? Yeah, Crooks, I have to say, I think you were playing so well. You started each match just like sort of dominating. Honestly, you flawless in that no moving game. Are you happy with how you've played here? And do you think that's going to carry on into the World Cup later on? Yeah, I feel like uh, I, I played a lot better than I, than I did uh, yesterday. So yeah, I'm very happy with my performance. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of grinding for uh, the World Cup. So yeah. Specifically talking about the World Cup and talking about your grind, what countries, what game modes do you think need the most work? Where were you less comfortable in this campaign? Um, I really want to work on Asia a lot. Uh, specifically Philippines and Indonesia. I, I feel like are two of my weak points. That's where I want to put a lot of focus. Absolutely. Well, you played super nicely there. Picked out the rounds that were good for you. Crazy Russia guess, etc. You played really well. Congratulations. Okay. With your knowledge, with your level head in this tournament, do you feel like there's one feature that has served you best to pick up these wins? Um, I just just my no move skill, to be honest. I mean, yeah, that that's it. It's phenomenal to watch you play. It is very exciting to congratulate you to head on to our world championship. That is, of course, going to be in Stockholm, Sweden. Not a far journey for you, but thank you so much for your insights into your play. I'll offer you again. Anything else you want to say? Nope. That's all said, it's in the games, folks. And those are our two last chance winners, Armani and Crooks, joining the rest of this bracket in Stockholm. But who now will be leaving our EMEA regional finals as our champion here this weekend? We'll find that out in our next match. Don't go anywhere.
You're watching the GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals. And if you've just tuned in, you picked the perfect moment for the hypest match. But if you've been with us all weekend long, well, an extended fist bump or perhaps an awkward handshake to you for sticking with us. You've been rewarded with lots of great games. And if you feel like you missed any, you can always go back and check out the VODs and the highlights because there are a ton of them from this weekend. I'm joined on my desk by ZigZag and Chicago Geographer, and we have seen some stuff this weekend. But it all came down to this. This next matchup, absolutely huge. No one predicted it except for, I think, one of the uh, Black Molly Entertainment staff, which I do have to give a shout out to, called it that it would be Tapotic and Kratzo in the finals. But tell me, Chicago Geographer, you've seen a lot of GeoGuessr. Tell me what it means to see these two here. Yeah, this is an absolutely amazing finale here. Probably two players that people weren't really expecting to see, as you said. So this is really an exciting matchup. Uh, I think these guys are pretty evenly matched in their own rights. You know, they have their own strengths. They also come from sort of different sides of the community. Tapotic, a more, bit more of a veteran. Uh, Kratzo, uh, more on the French side of the community, a little bit newer to the game. So these are two really great success stories that we're going to see culminate here in this grand final. Yeah, we've been trying to pick apart differences here to see who can measure up against the other zigzag. But I do see something with France there and Crasso. France has been the home to a number of GeoGuessr tournaments in the lead up. He's been a participant in them, but Tapotic, no stranger to competition himself. Oh yeah, absolutely. Tapotic has been, well, you really could hardly think of someone who's more experienced because it has been seven years of consistent play for him, including the making of a rural world, one of the most popular GeoGuessr maps. That's why I think if we get like a very, very strange round, I definitely favor Tapotic because he's just seen it all. It, there comes a point in your GeoGuessr career when you, you've just really seen most things and it's really hard to fool you. Um, that being said, there are several Several types of rounds that favor Kratzo, uh, those rounds having a lot of information on particular countries where he's worked out systems, memorized certain things. So that's probably like the major difference. In other ways, they're quite similar players. Absolutely. All I'm finding is Canada. Tapotic don't like it. Kratzo does. But all of them here, you know, self-estimating your weaknesses. We found that these players, well, what they call a weakness is just a strength with a slightly less flex. Now these two players have put in a lot of work to get here. And so I am very excited to introduce you to our two finalists in their head to head. To win this tournament, it would mean everything for me. It, it would be just a demonstration that like, my hard work has paid off. The goal was to go to the World Cup and it's done. Now it's just bonus. It's just fun and yeah, having fun. Good luck. Hoping it's a great game. Let's go. Just a bonus versus this means everything to me. Well, if I didn't have a winner picked before, I've got to cheer a little bit for Tapotic for how much this has been impactful for him. He was so excited just to beat Blinky. So excited to pick up that next round and head to the grand finals. I can't imagine what kind of win would change his life here. But, you know, Kratzo, we know this is important to him as well. So I'll let one of you argue on his behalf because I'm Team Tapotic. I mean, Kratzo, like, it's just, I think we've seen that he's like a real big personality. He's a friendly guy. And I just really, I've just really enjoyed his style of play where he's really like confident in himself. He's going for big guesses. He's not afraid to lock in. He's also not afraid to play the time as well. I don't know, like, uh, look, I, I think I think it's like, a, it's really easy to cheer for both players here. But I definitely don't think you should uh, count out Kratzo or that you should uh, dismiss him in terms of a, a, of a fan favorite. Absolutely. Anything to add, Gavin? Yeah, definitely. I think Kratzu has a lot of French support rallying behind him now, especially as Blinky was knocked out of the tournament. So he's got that community on his side, absolutely. And like Oscar said, he has the skills here. He has what it takes. He's made it this far. So uh, we're going to see a great fight, absolutely. Oh, fan energy is an X factor. So if one of these two players is who you're hoping to see, take home that $5,000 for first place. Let's hear it in chat. And if you're excited to meet him, let's bring out our first player for a little bit of an interview. It's Tapotic. Well, 
I am here with Topodic, ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour, making it all the way past the World Cup champion reigning to the grand finals here against Kratzo. How are you feeling right now, Topodic? Well, I'm quite tired, to be honest, but looking forward to uh, playing the final. Uh, it's going to be a different experience because Kratzo is really good at moving and most of the players I've played before were more no moving or an MPZ main, so we'll see how it turns out and let the best player win. Absolutely. And to Bodega, are there any final shout outs you'd like to do before you head into the game? Shouts out to Javi, Monty, Mary, Dani, Bernal and Garcia. Absolutely. Well, Tapotic, good luck in the games and take your seat. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Kratzo, the Frenchman. It is amazing to see you going to the grand final. How are you feeling going into this match? Super excited, actually. Like Topotic is a very, very great player, and I hope we will be. It will be a super, super Bo5. Um, I'm expecting like maybe five games or something. Though, so I'm very excited to see uh, how the guests go. Absolutely. Let's hope it goes all the way. Uh, anything in your pre-game routine? Did you make a decision on the music? Anything like that? Um, we agreed on the music, which is the good music, so I am very happy about this. Maybe that's a good <laughs> omen for you. <laughs> All right, Kratzar, thank you for the interview and good luck. There we go to our last players, the last men standing here today. Only one of them will be taking home that $5,000 check. Only one of them will be going in to the World Cup with the title of champion already on their shoulders. To Podic, we know how much it means to him. We know how important that is. Do you think this is what will take him there? I honestly believe Topotic has what it takes. I've seen him play so well throughout this tournament. And, you know, just knowing him personally as a friend, I think he's feeling a little bit nervous right now, but I think that shouldn't let him stand, in the, shouldn't stand in his way here. He is going to play fantastically, I feel. Uh, as Oscar said, he has that map making experience as well. So he's seen all kinds of amazing locations and he is going to really power through this, I feel. And he's got a posse. I heard that long shout out there. A lot of people <laughs> backing him, a lot of effort went into this. But same with Kratzo, so many behind him, so many helping him study and himself alight. Absolutely. I mean, guys, get some hype in the chat. We got thousands of dollars on the line in this last game. Kratzo making it through despite everyone's predictions uh, being against him. And he's here in the grand final. He keeps getting better and better the more we watch this tourney. He started off so weak. He's finishing so strong. Honestly, this is such an exciting matchup. If he can do it, this is one of the all-time great GeoGuessr performances. Absolutely. Toppler of Blinky, Kratzo, Toppler of Kansas, Topotic, both of them now standing here with the potential to be champion after one quick best of five. We've got our two casters ready to take us through it, so I'm going to hand it over for the last time today to Rainbolt and Paula. Thank you, Rachel. Kratzo versus Topotic. Rainbolt, here we are after three days of hard-fought competition. If I, if anyone predicted this finals matchup here, I'd call you a liar. The fact that we have Kratzu versus Topotic in the finals here, both well-deserved and well-earned, but who saw this coming? Both players have fought so hard. They fought against the odds, just as you suggested. Trevor, and now they are here. $5,000 on the line, but not just that. Also, the bragging rights to be able to say, I am the king, I am the champion of Europe, Middle East and Africa regional finals. And you get your name engraved on that great little plate. So. These two players, they're already coming back to Stockholm in September for the World Cup. They know they're there, they secured that. So now the focus is to finish being able to say, I'm the best of the best from my region. Trevor is the best of five. Everybody at home, this is the grand finals. We start with move, then we've got no move. Move again, no move. And if we get there, NMPZ. 
deep breath. Everyone lock in. This is about to be a show. Topodic versus Kratzu. Game one moving. Starting now. Mexico. We have short plates. Gen 4 blue car. Looks interesting. Will a lot of the players move around, find information. Both players going the same direction off the start here. Nope. Spinning around. And we're off to the races. Off to the races. Indeed, if you are new here, everybody watch. Anybody watching from home, get ready for some electric action. Quite literally. This is going to be... I, I think it could be, like, it's really anyone's game. It really, really is. Both players really... Oh, we have Topog finding information. Kratzu also finding information. Kratzu, one of the best moving players in the world. Who can use this information to their advantage quicker and better? We have a Sonora zoom in here, and he's scanning. Topodic is locked in. Topodic locks in first. And Kratzu is going to get there right after him, and we will see zero points unless he moves down south last second. No Maltese he's right big. now. They're neighbors. They're hugging over here. In Los Mochis. Look, they're on the Literally. Literally. <laughs> Great first guesses by both players, and neither loses a drop of blood. Round two. Japan. We've had a lot of Japan today. Question is who knows their plates? Who knows their transformers? Who can region guess Japan better? We see Kratzu immediately zooming into the plate to get a region. Topak doing that just on a different pole there. Taking in all the information we can. Transformer here, about to pause, seeing if anything, uh, reading the plates. Everyone, hold your breath. This is going to be fun. Kratzu looking at the Transformer. Sometimes these Transformers hold more value than anything else in Japan. For a moving game, not much movement has been had by Kratzo. Topodic, on the other hand, shuffling down the alley right now. Looking around feverishly to find any information he can. 15 seconds left on the clock. Both players yet to open their maps. Kretsu's going back to the beginning. Yeah, this will be a last second plan for both players, but they both have information that they will be using. We have an Osaka guess here, and we have a Tokyo guess here. Who's right? Who's wrong? It's Tokyo. Kratzo, great guess. And with a 1.5x, that is solid damage in round two. France is looking to bring it home. Round three. In the break, when our last elimination match, our last chance elimination match was being played, I was sitting on the sofas. Kratzo was there, and you wouldn't believe who came by. Topodic himself. They sat on different sofas, shared a little bit of conversation, and the scene began to be set. And here we are watching it start to play out. This is going to be northern Chile with how deserty and obviously we have a Dutch seal, but also we have a white car. And um, it's a matter of who can, you know, Chile is pretty long. It's deceivingly long. And you can pick up big points if you don't region guess accurately here and the other player does. Let's see though. Who will be closer? Topodic is scanning. He has a sign that he's locking it in. They're on the same road. They're on the same road. Different Waving road. at each other. But again, it'll be a zilch, just about. Yep, round three. Let's see if he moves away last second again. And he's moving slightly more north. And he'll stay there. Points will be minimal. Both plays so close. The skill ceiling being reached, Trevor. Who's going to punch through it and reach new heights? Great podcast. Round four of ten. Kratzu has yet to lose any damage. We're in Australia. Looks like Queensland. Is that Queensland sticker? Or isn't the blue dot? Is that Queensland? Both players moving west. And Kratzu finding signs. Both players we scanning see. Kratzu now with a strong zoom, suggesting he's got a good idea. Can't quite read what he sees there. Is it Howard? He's scanning for Howard here in Australia and Queensland. He's looking for Howard. And he found Howard. He's found it. That's and we, gonna oh, be no. a strong guess. We have guess. a big guess here. By Topodic. Topodic with a lack of information going in Kratzu a completely 5K. different area. This Kratzu 5K and, and Topodic's in Vic. 
And it's a 2.5x. Trevor. Oh my. Crashu, what have you done? Is that game? Yes, sir. It is. It's 7,000 points of damage. And the Frenchman flies. Wow. That is a perfect example of even if these players are at the highest level, they are at that skill ceiling. If one of them gets that key information before the other, or when the other doesn't at all, they run away with it. They take it and they run. They take it and they run. And it's, and that's where, you know, again, you have to give credit to Kratzu because, I mean, it, it's moving. And that was just an excellent performance on display from moving right there. And Topotic is back where he probably feels a little more you know, at home here in the no move category. For all you get, it's 1360 Panorama. 1360 Panorama. No move. Game two. Lock in, deep breaths to Kratzu, looking to take a 2 0 advantage. He's just two wins away from being the EMEA champion. Let's see what we have here. Trevor, where are we at? Looks like Peru. New, new, is this new Gen 4 Peru? We have had a lot of Peru over the course of this tournament. Kratzu feels the same. And Kratzu just going north of Lima there. Topak has yet to zoom in. He'll get there in the end. He's kind of taking everything you can. The reason you guess here is you definitely go west, obviously. But how far north and south do you go? Is he... Wait a second, Trevor. Wait he, a second. Think, Look at Topodic's zoom. I when, he, when, I, he, when he does his next one, let's see where he goes. I... Yeah, okay, we're good. There we're we good. go. Got me nervous there. I thought it was coming out Colo or something. That would be... We're in the finals for a reason. These players are getting Peru. And we do have a north guess here. A more north guess, I should say, by Topodic and slightly more south guess here by Kretsu. Then again, not too many points regardless, but Topodic. Great guess by Topotic, and it's a strong round one. That's what you want to do after you've lost the previous game. Get off to a solid start. Round two, back in no move. You went through 60 panorama. This looks like it's Southern Chile, this road. Turn around, we should see white car. We do see white car. And we do see Kretsu zooming in. It should just be somewhere in between Santiago and maybe within 100, 200 kilometers. So it'll be interesting though. So it'll be interesting. Obviously both players here are gonna get Chile. It's just how far south do you go? And region guessing Chile is not always the easiest. Topodic looking to the skies. Seems to be attached to a specific road right now. Locked both in. players relatively close. 1.5x. We have one, we have Kretsu closer to Porto Mont. He's moving up north near Topodic here. So even if they are both accurate, it's Topodic. Topodic. Once again, a great guess. And that's 800 points. Healthy 800. Very, very healthy. As we move in to the next round. And this will be another very, very fun round. Round three. We have Gen 4 coverage, double white road lines, black stickers on the pole, driving left. Both players understand this is mainly Malaysia. Then the question you ask is, where? There is some newfound meta within the black stickers. Not sure if that's readable there by either player. Sometimes the letters or something like that could interesting. Topodic is trying to remember if he that yellow sign on that sticker on that pole means anything to him. He nods his head as if it doesn't. Approaching 30 seconds gone by now in round number three of our first no move. Topak just zooming into KL here. Going more east. Kretsu scanning slightly more north. Looks like Topak is following suit. Perhaps not too many points in this round, Trevor. We see the process. We see both players looking for Something to place their guesses on, looking for stability. We do see a north and a central, and it is just outside KL. Kratzu now, first round win for him in round three, here in game two. Slow and steady. Solid points, minimizing mistakes. He's what it's all about. Head. Shaking his head in disappointment. Not sure why, he had a good guess there. Could be relief, Trevor. Could be. Doesn't really look too relieving, but we'll see. This next round here, we're going to zoom in and see the bollards here. Those are Polish bollards. 
Poland notoriously known for not being very region guessable. So we might see two people just click center here. Stuck in a traffic jam right now, Trevor. Oh, I like those people just having a picnic out there. That's kind of wholesome. Or Which one of our players is going to swerve, find the right direction? This is oddly a lot of traffic for Poland. We were like, are we like a border or something? Bodic moving now. Lands on the really road. Perhaps who with quick looks at his map. Just like that, we've only got 20 seconds left. Deep zoom by Kratzu. Not sure what he's zooming in onto there. We do have a topic locking in. And again, we, I mean, this is about as standard as you get when you watch high level players play P Poland. Sometimes clicking center is the best thing you can do. It was just more south there. Podic just a bit closer. That was an odd southern Poland. I don't think we saw really many hills. And this will be free. Iceland. Both players getting this. Question is, do you just go Reykjavik? Where else do you go? Round five. The Podic looks towards building there. It's signage. I think it said Lands Banken. Banking on a victory here to Podic in Ireland. Sorry, Iceland. It's one letter off. And to Podic's committing north. And he's zooming in. And they're both zooming into the same exact region here. Yeah, this is going to be a low point affair as we approach the halfway point. They're both they in the same city. Shoulder to shoulder. Crash is locked in, knowing he has it, but little does he know, Tupac also has it. Fancy seeing you here, Kratz, who just a slight bit closer. Both on the doorstep of a zero. 5k, zero points in either direction. Barely anything separates the skill level of our field, and it's especially shown here between our two best of EMEA. Kratz, who's looking to take it home in France. For France and France here. Eyes widen. Topotic smirks. We're in round six now, and it's just over a 1k difference between Topotic and Kratzu with Topotic in the lead. The multis are building. Trevor. Yeah, this is. This is close. It's close. It's. It's. We have to see one swing in one direction or the other. And look how fast he's committing max North Belgian border here. 28 seconds left. Kratzu, the Frenchman, does he know his country? And how well does he know it? To Podic, going southeast of Paris. Kratzu committing max north. Approaching the 10 second mark. To Podic moves fast. With the mentioned multi, we could see some points here. Oh, not if the mark is like that. 600. 600. That being said, no, for Kratzu, that is much needed. Yeah, especially as we get into round seven. Or and at especially... the very least, it just brings them closer and it's a solid round win. Those multis. They, add they up. sneak up on everybody. Round seven will bring us back down to Southeast Asia here. Both players will recognize this as Cambodia with Poop Cam driving right. The question is. I mean, we saw a player earlier today, forget who, losing on Cambodia. That won't be the case here with 4,700 points, or 4,000 points to each player's name here. But who tries to find the bridge here? And it's going to be Kratzu that tries to find tries to find the bridge here. Yep, Kratzu zooming deep. He's looking for a north-south bridge. And we, we have, have Tupac zooming into non pin, and he's locking it in, and we have Kratzu north. 4x. 10 seconds left. Will he stay north? I'm not sure, like... Does Bit he think he's going to find here. a random bridge here? That would be crazy. He's staying max north Cambo. He's locking it in. It's just pin on pin. And that is such a guess by Topodic. How much damage exactly? 1,900. Holds on to the lead. Wow. He has 2,200 points left to his name. We're moving around it, and that's exactly the swing we were looking for. If you're looking to make a difference here. Going into round eight, Trevor. Yep. Where are we at? Looks like Florida, you would presume. Or like Southern US, like Southern, like Alabama or Georgia. No front plates on that car, interesting. No specific signage here. Doesn't matter though, Kratzu. 
You might not go Florida. You could go Alabama, like, or like Pensacola, maybe. But we'll see. Can't, that no front plate looks like it. I can't remember. I don't think. Florida, I don't remember. This could be a lot of points, though, if someone makes one good guess here. These these trees with, like, this uh, moss is super common, obviously, in Florida. The Close is, in a similar area in Florida You also right get now, them Trevor. in Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, things like that in the southern belt here. Ten seconds Ten remain. Seconds left. He's going more north. He's kind of scared. Both players super close there. They're both hedging the same Florida region here. Pot goes more south. <laughs> it's just way more south. Solid guess. 4.5x. It's 800. Big damage when you had just over 2k HP as Kratzo did. Down now to 1500. It's a solid lead for Topodic as we head into the penultimate round. Kretzu coming from behind in round nine. Not what you want. We're gonna be... In Kratzo's spot, you wanna see a bigger country. Yes. This is Italy. We see Z's, double Z's. Shot to pizza. We have a Milan guess here, or hover. Maybe Kratzo should try to push the pace. Maybe put some pressure onto Potter. He locks in. in. He, he does move a bit here. faster. And this is going to be, an, they're so close. They are close. Kratzu cannot win in this round. No. Topotic, does he ever. And Topotic's guess is even better, Trevor. 1200. Kratzu needs 4,000. 500 points in round 10 here. Kratzu alive, but just about. We will see the 10th round of our first no move. And now more than ever, Kratzo needs a big country. Trevor, what do we have up next? Paula, if I was to list countries from best to worst for Kratzu, unironically, this would be last. So the likelihood that Kratzo Watch his reaction. Watch back. his reaction right here in one second. Is low. Watch his reaction. As there we see it. Smile, a pain he loss. Knows. He's just guessing Antarctica. He's giving up. It's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible to win here. We're in Uganda. Uganda has one city coverage. It's Kampala. It's impossible to win here, Paula. Yeah. Okay. Well with that said. Yeah. <laughs> Kratzo letting it go, knowing that he cannot achieve the impossible. And Topotic bounces back. We're drawn up now one to one, and we'll be heading back to move. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, Topotic is, you know, definitely does favor the no moving. And it shows he put on quite the clinic there. We're back to moving. We're Kratzu. is playing at, as best as anyone in the world right now. We want grand finals like this, down to the wire. We want both players playing at their best. Kratzo took game one, Topotic bounced back in game two, and so now we are one apiece. Let's get right into it. Game three, back to move, one, one. We at least get another moving, another no move game out of this. That's always fun. And I mean, if it follows the pattern that we've just seen, we'll end up seeing an NMPC. But who knows if that will be Will it the wait case. to end it? Let's just get started. Let's do it, Trevor. Round one. Get the ball rolling here. Back in EU. Kratz two. Versus Topotic. One. One. What direction will they go? This is interesting. What is this? Like, very, very interesting. Oh, we have signs here. Looks Baltic. Let's see. Probably going in a different direction than his opponent here. Getting to a highway quicker. Oh, he just passed it. Bollard, both players. Finding a great sign here. That great we'll get sign. Him. A lot of information there. I mean, yep, this will be, you know, Lithuania, small country. Small country, small points. Backs. Both following each other around the map right now. Yeah, they're both, look how close they are. I mean, Topolik is lining up at the intersection as we speak. He can see... This bridge. Is it the right bridge? This maybe not look like it because there's no river there. But maybe it's... We'll see. Yeah. 
Rats so closer in round one. 24. Good guess by both players in a smaller country. Round two. Back where we just were, we're both players in round nine. Guess Northern Italy. We're back in Italy. Question is where? Looks more central. And we do see Kratzu immediately zoom in, not making a guess. Podic just got some signage and then turned around because of it. Now shooting off down the road, perhaps trying to find where the sign was pointing that towards. That is lots of information for this man right here. And he's going to use that to his advantage. Scanning the northern, clicking Milan. Looking for anything. Podic has yet to find anything of value here. I don't believe that Topolic has got as much information right now. I do believe Kratso has the information advantage. He's very north, close to Switzerland even. Super close guess here by Topolic as well, without any information. And it's actually Kratso closer once again. It's a good guess by Topolic under pressure, but Kratso did successfully use the information he had at hand. Taking this guy out on moving is going to be quite the task. He's a mover and a shaker. He's a midnight... Is that the... Nope. Okay. I don't know, Trevor. Round three. I was thinking, thinking of a different song. 2x damage. 2x. Double. This is Kenya. We got this Kenya snorkel here. Welcome to Members Hotel. I want to be a member. Is that a hotel you've seen before, Crash? Wait. That's an AZ into a lock. Wait. That's why it's called that. That makes sense. Does the pod know that, though? He's seen the same hotel sign now. Does he know where it is? He doesn't. He's going to Nairobi. I mean, beating this guy and moving is actually insane. Oh my! Kratzo! So close to the 5k! And a 2x in round 3 means that is over 3k damage! Wow. We said mover and shaker. When it comes to move, is there anybody better right now? It's hard to say. I mean, today there's not. That's for dang sure. I mean, he's proven that time and time again. But can he do it here in Russia? Looks like we have white car Russia here. Big country, big points. Even in a round four, Russia yep. can be a crazy situation. Different color cars in Russia do give you different regions where you are in Russia. Usually Russia white car you get usually near Chelyabinsk or more east. But this is uh, interesting to see where the players end up here. Look at those lads. And he's going just where that white car is, outside oh. Southwest Chilabinks there. You what? see that white car right there. Trevor, what is that? We will see Topolik going there too. This is common knowledge for both Gigaster players here. Oh, look at that. Shoulder to shoulder once just... again. Crap, you saw those lads and just instant he knew bomb. Where they were from. He knew. And Topolik was just shortly on his heels. <sighs> Round five. This guy is directing the bus. In Colo. Question is, where in Colo are we? We have black car, antenna, yellow plates, Spanish. 6k on Kratzo. Flawless right now. Topodic under 2k HP. 3x damage. As we enter round five. Kratzo just. It looks, looks pretty dry. looks pretty coastal. We also have a mountain, massive mountain range here south, which is interesting. Very, very interesting. Kratzu now opening his map. Strong zoom. I think, I think a lock is going to shortly follow here. Yeah, Topolik has found a sign of reading. Not yet, actually. It closes he, he his wants map. To. He'll stay there, I think. I think he'll stay there. This looks like somewhat... I would like to... Yeah, this looks like a cool place to go. Ten seconds. Looks coastal. And we see Topolik... He's going near his capital. There, there's a quite, there's a, quite a difference here, there. Trevor. Big there's points. Massive points here. But who will He's they go to? He moves more north. Oh! And Kratzu 5k. That is going to be game. Kratzu's going to go up 2-1. Goodness gracious, Paula. This guy is playing out of his actual mind right now. Like, actually out of, out of, out of his mind. He's got the moves, but can he, can he do it in no move? Or are we going to see now to put it come back into this and take us to an NMPZ. Everybody at home, Kratzo is one game away from calling him, calling himself the best of the best of this region. Topodic has to win here in this game 
to have a chance of doing the same. He did it in round he number two, round two, but can he do it again? If he wins this, you know what that means, right, Paula? What's Paula? it mean? It means we're going to NMPZ. He has to, he has to get there first. But what better way would it be for the W script writers than to get the final of the EMEA and NMPZ? Well, we'll see, Kratzu, the way he's playing right now. It's going to be a hard feat for Depotic in round one, as we see. Looks like a Portuguese pull there with the holes in the ladder pull. Let's see. No move, just one 360 panorama. How far north do you commit here, these trees to our north, is a question. Let's see. Both players will take their time. Or will they, Trevor? Kratzo. Nope. Kratzo zooming in. Zooming in. As 20 seconds passes. And we do see Topolik moving max north. I think those trees, I think that like that. You know, Topolik very good at Spain. Maybe inherently, like, it makes him good at Portugal. We'll see. And it's max north. To put it closer. Only 166 points as we move into round two. Where it's going to be a lot harder to only lose 166 points here in Indo. We have a pulls all around us. Pulls usually in Indonesia give you tons of clues. And we do see this, like, triangle on the underneath the insulators here on the pull. That means something to me, like last week. I forgot what it meant, I think. We'll see though. I mean, it looks like geographically, it looks like maybe you go like Sumatra or Kali, but like, I don't know. We'll see. 20 seconds down, Kratzo and Topodic opening Sula. their maps at pretty much the same time. Two Sula guesses here. That's probably what that means then. I trust. I don't think that your trust is misplaced. We've got two of the best. Two of the best here, Trevor. Yep. I mean, you can still lose a lot of points in Sula. Kratzu is going north, and we have a lock-in. It's him. Oof. Kratz, though. 1.5x damage. Swings the match back in his favor. Both players, though, are close to each other. It's only round three now. Those multis are not built. Japan again. We can see Kratzo zooming in to the plates here. These plates, like I've said before, give you regional clues. Transformers, things like that on the top of the poles also do help. And then, oh, we do see Kratzo zooming in on that transformer, and that gave, he's felt, zoomed in constantly after he saw that. And he locked it. In. Very south. To put it with under 10 seconds. Will he go in the same direction? Slightly. Slightly, but not quite. There could be points here, Trevor. Oh, Kratzo. Unbelievable. And with double damage, that's a healthy 1,454 points of damage going the way of Topotic. He's 4,000 points away from being the champion. 4,000 points. When you put it like that, you realize just once again how high these stakes are. We're in Malaysia, we have oil palms. And you probably go Borneo. We're zooming in on this sign. I mean, it just looks like Borneo to me. We'll see. Tons of oil palms here. I guess you get mainland. Road fills Malaysian. And we, oh, he's been in between the two. And we, and Kratz is zo zooming into that po that pocket right there in, in Borneo and Saba. That I actually think I like a lot. Topotic is Topotic gonna go mainland here. If he goes mainland, he will lose. Or the other way around. Crap, he's locked. locks. He he's going the mainland. Pressure. He's going mainland. It's someone wins. Trevor, could this be it? It's Topotic! Topotic! What a guess! And that's gonna be game! We're going to NMPZ! Our grand final matchup. It could only ever be decided one way. W script writers. And it's the game mode that all of us love. It's the game mode with the highest potential for unpredictability, for the craziest situations and craziest results. What better way to end our grand final best of five than with the fifth game, NMPZ. Hold your horses. This is content. We have 10 rounds left to decide a winner.
even playing field, 6K, 6K, giving both players one image of somewhere in the world to guess where they are to crown your EMEA Finals champion. If you are new here, let's quickly recap. You just saw no move. You get a 360 panorama. That's different to the first game mode move where you can move around on the map. NMPZ is the level up from no move. It's no move, no pan, no zoom. You get a still image and it's all you've got. It's our oh decider. God. This is it. The final game of our Geo gets a World Cup, Europe, Middle East and Africa regional finals. Whoever wins this wins it all. Depolic versus Kratz 2 and then PZ. Game 5 starts here in Australia. I think, should be. Looks like we have a, should be, should be. This one, we'll see where players, this is a noggin user. You can see we have a slight pull, no. Oh wow. No. Oh crap, why, so did he just, why did he just in Brazil? Wait, Ten why did he just in Brazil? Not like this. Topolic, make a good guess here. You can pick up points. There's oh. a sign in the background that is an Australian sign in the distance. There's no one seeing it. What is happening here? There's an Australian sign. Oh my word. I have not seen anything like this before! There was an Australian sign in the distance no one saw underneath the tree. Trevor! You would have been our grand finals champion! No, no you can't win on, on one round. So, on round one. Let's keep it going. I've never seen... We've done how many of these tournaments now? Two qualifiers, a World Cup, and we did our original thing together. And I've never seen something like that before. Not even in NMPZ. Let's just say Kratzu's... If he kept that same guess in this round, he'd be very close. Hopefully. If you're gonna guess wrong, you want your opponent to guess wrong too, and we just saw that. Three what points. a round one. We have Piranha Pines here, free Piranha. You get these Pines here, these Piranha Pines here from Piranha to Santa Catarina in Brazil. And both players will get this because they know their trees. This is content. Locked in, both in Piranha. Man, okay, RGDS. You don't ever send that with Prompt Pines, unless you're risky. As we keep going, round three. Round two, our players stabilized. Trevor, I need a moment there to catch my breath. Yeah, same. I can, I'm losing my voice. <sighs> this is Peru. We have a Peruvian pole there in the distance. Both players will get this. We're using us in Peru. It's a different feat. Desolate road, surrounded by bushes, trees. Cement wall on the left. Lima. They're going straight in. Both at the same time. We've seen over the course of our game so far, sometimes these guys end up shoulder to shoulder in the same location. Are we going to see that now? Perhaps. Peru is deceivingly hard to reach and guess in. Both players know it's west. Then the question is how far north or south do you go? Both players right now are close to each other. But then the question is how far close should I just get to Lima? In the center, just hedge my bet, hedge my guess. 2x We're damage. Staying. We are staying close to each other here. Still could be something. Still could be something as we see. Kratzu's moving. Will he stay? He moves slightly around. But he's staying right there. And it's going to be just max south. No player committing that. 700 points down goes Kratzo. 700 points, Trevor, is 700 points. That's not bad, especially for a round three. To start building a slight lead here, it's good for Topotic. If you're not standing up right now, what are you doing? What are you doing? We are on our feet in the studio. You should be on your feet at home. This is a free Argentina. We have a black car, dirt roads, vegetation. Reason guessing this is a different beast. I thought Kratzo was going for the Alpha zoom there, but he stopped halfway. I like the southern. I, I. Does Bro know the road? Does Bro know the road? Why did he just zoom in on this one white road right here? Maybe because you're right. Maybe Bro does know the road. Maybe Topotic's optics are clearer than ever. If he does, Topotic or Kratzu is also right there with him. He is. I mean, 25 seconds left. So we can tell that the road is going east-west based off the compass. So that's what he's looking for. He's looking for something that lines up with that slight curve, that east. 
and both players are right next to each other, hand in hand. Yup. Once again, meeting on a road, shaking hands, saying, good job. See you on the next map. See you in the next round. Because we will be going. Road does not know the road. To round number five. That's, how's it that far south? I actually don't know. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Both players are very close. As we move into round five, one photo right here. What a beautiful location. This will be NZ, New Zealand. You can pick a big points in New Zealand here. You definitely can. Some hills in the distance. No signage. The Potic lent into his screen. Kratsu just chilling. Hand on his face. We have zooming in now though. A vineyard or something. They're going north by Nelson, it looks like. Or, or did you get vineyard vineyards and things like that? This is, uh, yeah, they're committing. Well, at least Kratzu is staying there. And... Under 30 oh, seconds right left. Them. Both players reasonably close to each other. 3x damage, however, does mean we could see some points. Approaching under 10 seconds now. Both players still so close to each other. Polis will be no points if they both stay. You have to assume they're both right. I think they're waiting it out, Trevor. They are. Neither player wanting to lock it in. The location north. ends up being a slight bit more north. And even with a 3x damage multi, barely any points of damage. Keep it going. This will be no points either, Paula, as we move our way into South Korea. Beautiful. This is just building the rounds up. Beautiful location. Yes. Location. This is just building the rounds up to get us closer to that round 10, where it's so much harder for someone to come back. Oh, look at that. Both going... In relatively similar areas. Every single point matters here, Paula. I don't care if you're a foot closer. It absolutely does. Black and yellow stripe pulls there in this winter coverage. That winter coverage could tell you something. A lot of Korea is in winter coverage. Round six of ten. The pace has considerably slowed. Everything has. on the line here for Topotic and Kratzo. Topotic locks in first. Kratzo currently north of him with 10 seconds to commit. Potentially lining up a road here, looking at the water, looking at the river on his map. And now, oh, yep, going a bit closer and it ends up being in the middle. No points. No points. <sighs> this is getting... Round seven, Look round this, eight. 5,200 to 5,000. Round seven, round eight, round nine, round 10. At a max, we have four more rounds of this EMEA finals. If I'm being honest. You don't think it's going to 10? I think it is. Oh, have you, have you, you have a, a, we have a free. You've got a bit of background info there. No, I just look at round seven here. We're at least getting to round eight. Because this is, everyone's gonna get Taiwan. And Trevor, you are sure? Okay, so we're in Taiwan. Small country means. Small points. It's something that about as basic as you can get. You can region guess and maybe get one good like guess somewhere, but like you're not gonna win. But like you get one good guess here in Taiwan that could mean the difference between the game. And we do see to probably going more north. This 30 is, seconds left. I mean, look how close. I'm I'm just holding my breath here, standing up with my my heads above my head, my hands above my head right now. Both Twenty seconds taking their now. Time here. Both do you want to maximize points, even in a smaller location like Taiwan. It's smart. It's efficient. It's the notion that we've constantly talked about of minimizing mistakes. Every foot counts, like you said, Trevor. Taipei and that's massive points for Kratzu. Actually, massive points. 1,000 points in Taiwan. Or for Topotic, I should say. For Topotic, yeah. Quadruple damage paying dividends there. And we go into round number eight. And we saw Kretsu make an amazing guess. And Kenya before. But Kenya, do it again.
Trevor, let's find out. Topotic in the lead. Kratzo. Both players. He's safe. back against the wall. 4.5x multi. You can see the bottom left of your screen there. You can see the Google the Google Street U car. That's all you need to know to make this guess. Kratzo to act first. And he's going to guess He's, he's going to lock Kenya. it in. He's locking in Western Kenya. An AZ of sorts. We have two Western Kenyas. Oh, yeah. They're, they're right on each other's tails again. Topotic ending up being a it's bit a closer, RG. but it won't be. Click capital. You win. It won't be game. Sorry, match, I should say. Game and match. Oh, my goodness. Are we going to round nine right now? We are going to round nine. The penultimate oh. round of the tournament. Oh, it comes down to two rounds. Topotic has a 2,000-point lead. Let's see what we have next, And again, we? for any of our audience that are new... Do not be fooled. Yes, both players start with 6k HP. And right now, Topodic, it looks like he has a healthy lead. He does, but this is NMPZ. Kratso is still in this with two rounds remaining. Boss is Dustin. 5x damage, Trevor. Okay, let's talk through this round here, Paula. Get close to your monitors, shall we? Okay, two answers here, I think. Let me look at the bigger monitors here. Colo, Brazil. Kratzu disagrees. He's in Brazil. He says Brazil. Topodic, what do you say? I like Brazil, I like Brazil. 10 seconds left, Trevor. What does Topodic like? What does Topodic like? For the win, Topodic, what do you like? He's going Mexico. Three I seconds. I like Mexico too, someone. Who is it? It's oh, gonna no. be. Wait. It's enough, surely. Is it? Does he win there? No. You would not believe it, but we're going to a round ten. Topodic is closer. He needs but a Kratzo round ten. But was one. close enough to where oh. he survived with 171 points of life. At this point, Topodic wants a small country. He wants to just I'm get an vomit. easy sail to the finish line. Kratzu needs an opportunity here. He needs a chance. Trevor, does he have one? He has a chance. I'll say that right now. He has a chance. What is it, Trevor? Where are we going in round number 10? Our 10th and final I, round like, of like, our EMEA finals. Kratzu needs to pack the blunder here. To pack needs to just not choke one round to be claimed the winner. Round 10. I think we're back. He's getting his redemption here. Another chance to get Columbia. It's not free by any means. It could be Brazil again, actually, now that I look at it. The final 50 actually, seconds. Actually, it might be Brazil. Paul, I don't know what this is. The final 50 seconds of the tournament. Topodic with a huge lead. The, the, Paula, I don't know what this is, actually. I take it back. Kratzo with one chance, I, and our expert in the building isn't even sure. It might be Mexico, actually. So does that mean our players are, could definitely. be unsure as well? He's in between Mexico and Colo. I agree. These fences on the left are so weird. I mean, what do you do here? 26 seconds. What is this, Paula? Forget 26 seconds. We're under 20 now, what Trevor. What is this? He's going Colo. To put it going Colo. Kratzo yet to choose. Colo. Also Colo. Surely Topotic has if, done it! If, it's, if they both stay here, Topotic is your winner! Three seconds now! It's time to crown a champion! It's Topotic! It's Topotic! He's done it for himself! Topotic, robotic skills! An absolute beastly performance across the three days. Shout out to Kratzo, but he just did not have enough. What an insane game. And what better way to end it off than a firm little handshake right there. I mean, Topodic won both no-move games. Kretsu won both moving games in NPZ. An Topodic. unbelievable finish. We have Michael from GeoGuessr handing Topodic his prize. Everybody at home, give it up for your champion of the GeoGuessr World Cup EMEA Regional Finals. It is... Topodic!
Exotic. Yes. Congratulations. Way to go. Dude. We made a little bit of noise down here for you, but I know this whole building was shaking with all of the GeoGuessr fans and your fellow players upstairs celebrating. But Tapotic, I think of all the happiness in this building, you hold the lion's share. Tell us what you're feeling right now with your $5,000 check and your plate that you were the first to put your name upon. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, I feel great, although I think that I didn't play well in that final, so uh, uh, there's a bit of a mixed emotion in that, but I still feel like really over the moon for winning this championship. Amazing. Topodic, today you were the greatest player in all of Europe, Middle East and Africa. How does that feel? It feels great. Yeah, I was never expecting this. and. To be honest, like I was expecting to get a blinky or someone like Constance and not be able to compete, but apparently I managed to do so even without practicing too much, which is quite impressive. I still can't believe it myself, to be honest. Amazing. Topotic, thinking about how long you've been playing Geogus through your career up to this point, you're one of the veteran players out there. What does it mean to be able to call yourself the champion of Europe, and how do you see yourself going forward into the World Cup? It, it means everything for me. Uh, the World Cup is still quite some time away, so I'm not thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about resting and celebrating my victory with my friends and so on in the next few days when I go back to Spain. So that's the first thing I'm thinking about. And then like, I, I will try to focus on the World Cup more, maybe. With all those friends and fans and family waiting to cheer you on, waiting to celebrate with you, what would you like to say to them at home? Uh, thank you very much for supporting me. Muchas gracias por apoyarme. Sois muy grandes. All right, well, I'm going to invite you to join the middle of the studio. That was where the rest of the GeoGuessr competitors will join you and celebrate <laughs> the solidarity, the friendship in this community, the positivity. We love to see it, and it has been on show this weekend here. I've had ZigZag and I've had Chicago Geographer on the desk with me. And I invite each of you, Chicago Geographer, what would you like to say at this moment? Yeah, guys, it's been an absolutely incredible final. Watching all these players compete over the last three days, I mean, culminating into Podic's victory. This is truly something special for the history of this community. And it just represents so much about where the game is going in the future. So I can't wait to see what happens next. 100% Gavin's spot on there. This was a historical day. So many great guesses. The number of 5 KOs was incredible. The amount of talent standing right here before me is probably more than's ever stood together before. So it's an incredible tournament. Congratulations to Topodic. Well done to Kratzo as well. Amazing tournament. Well said. Thank you so much for your analysis throughout the weekend. Thank you to our GeoGuessers for an incredible series of games, a wild bracket, and an excellent weekend. Thank you so much for watching at home. Shout out to Rainbow, Paula, and Toby, our casters. To everyone who came together to put this together, we'll see you in June for the Asia Regional Finals. Until then, we'll see you on GeoGuessr.com. Last year, history was written, and a champion was crowned. Oh my goodness! It's a win! Wow! But every story has an end, and every champion must once again rise to the top. In the halls of royalty and where innovation is praised, a new master will ascend the throne. Welcome to the City Hall of Stockholm and the finals of the GeoGuessr World Cup 2024. Secure your tickets now and be part of this historic event. See you in Stockholm.